520 years ago, the world fell into chaos. The power scale suddenly changed. The original natural resources, technology, and civilization collapsed. All sorts of monsters forced humans to the verge of extinction. Luckily, energy was reborn as heaven and earth Yuan Kai. An ancient civilization and martial arts became humanity's hope for life. At the Starshine Martial Arts Academy, a martial arts master is teaching his students. He said martial arts start with a foundation. Every one of you can become a martial artist if you put in enough effort and practice. You can break through your limits. Now I will explain 18 forging styles. Let's start with the first style, watch me attentively. One student started complaining, why is he teaching us from the basics? My dad taught me these when I was 4 years old. Now it's just a waste of time. The teacher overheard it and thought, what a bunch of brats. Then he looked at a student named Feng Yun, who was paying full attention. Feng Yun, an orphan who has never taught martial arts before, intrigued him. Why is he being so serious? Such a pity that being serious is useless. He then scolded the students and told them to pay attention to the lesson or else he would punish them by making them do 180 push-ups. They all apologized and started practicing. The teacher looked at Feng Yun again, who was practicing really hard. He thought, Feng Yun, you have no resources or any foundations. You won't become a martial artist even if you train to death. He then resumed the class. After some time, he told the students to rest for a while and self-study for an hour. If you have any questions, you can vote and ask me and then you will be dismissed from the class. Feng Yun thought to himself, I have enough to quickly revise. The teacher taught too fast, so I can't even remember everything. And this skill's effect is way too weak. Where is my cheat? The one that's given to people who are Sky Ed. He was a student on Earth in the 21st century, who got Sky Ed to this world. He was an adult and then became a 14-year-old young boy. One day while walking on the road, his necklace's mirror suddenly shone, and he got Sky Ed. Even though he was a martial art lover in the past, in this world, he can't even gather you and Kai. Martial arts are useless. He thought, even if I entered this martial arts academy, I can only learn the forging styles that all kids already learned when they were young. Practicing martial peak. Even with 800 years, he is not able to do it. Suddenly he heard some noise. Some students are shouting excitedly as a high rank class student entered the hall. His name is Lin Kang, and he is the academy's number one genius. Two days ago, he passed the martial artist exam, and he was admitted to Starshine Academy in the inner city. He is just 19 years old and belongs to a rich family. From a very young age, he soaked in a medicine bath, and he has a good foundation. Even many 30-year-olds can't reach this standard and get kicked out of the academy when they are older. Suddenly the mirror in his necklace started shining, and a status board popped up. It showed that the mirror space is crafted. The endless projection function activated. The projection target has been selected as Lin Kuang. He is confused by this situation when suddenly a giant mirror appeared in front of him. He saw a reflection of someone looking similar to Lin Kuang in it. He wondered if this is his Ice Kai Ed cheat he was talking about earlier. When he was about to touch the mirror, a hand popped out of it and hit his hand and told him not to touch it. Then a pretty girl came out of the mirror and said, Don't touch the mirror with your dirty hands. It's just common sense. He is taken aback by her beauty. She said, Feng Yun, welcome to the mirror space. I am an endless projectionist incarnation, and you can call me Miss Mirror. He replied, I will call you Lady Mirror then, but can you first explain what is happening to me? She started explaining, saying, This is the endless projection mirror world, which is created inside your consciousness. She said you can see your current stats in the mirror. He is quite disappointed to see his current stats as they're basically powerless. The mirror showed him that he has no talent, technique, weapon, and even item. Miss Mirror then proceeded to explain Lin Kang's stats, who is his first projection target. His stats are pretty impressive and much higher than his own stats. He is already at the beginner rank of a martial artist, and he also collected many items, including a sword, armor, and energy pill. She told him that he can fight his projection target, and if he wins, he will get all these items, just like a game where you kill monsters and get rewards. But it has a chance rate. The game began, and the projection image got ready to fight. Feng said, I have one more question. You said this place is my consciousness, then what happened to my body in the real world? She told him that he is probably dating around, and he looks stupid anyways, so it's fine. You will get used to it after you learn multitasking. The second question he asked, what will happen if I lose? Will I die in my real body? She said, of course not. It's a battle in your mind. Even though the death experience is similar to the pain you feel when dying, it's much more painful than death. She said, actually, you have the option to lower the difficulty by changing the projection cultivation to your rank. A normal human 
and it also fits the rules, but the item drop rate will also be lowered. He said, I don't want to experience death, so let's lower his cultivation and play it on easy mode. When suddenly he saw a past memory projection where his father told him that a man can't pick easy modes. If you pick easy modes in a game, you will miss many interesting and joyful moments. She thought, yeah, easy mode is boring. Miss Mirror motivated him, imitating his father's voice, saying, Go boy, ditch your past self. Walk on a thorny path. Use your heart and spirit to cover this land. He hit her on the head and said, Don't project people's memories so randomly. Change Lin Kuang's cultivation to normal people's standards. She warned him that even if his cultivation is similar, he is still much stronger than you. She then teased him, saying, Why don't we make a bet for how many times you will die before this class ends? He thought, I don't even want to die once, this is ridiculous, then he got shocked to see that the projection still has its sword. The projection initiated the attack and attacked Fen using his sword ability, sword slash proficient stage. He dodged narrowly, saying, This is cheating. Miss Mirror said, I forgot to tell you before that the mirror image's battleground can also be changed. Seeing that he was busy fighting, she chose the forest for this fight. Surprised by this sudden change, Feng bumped into a tree and hit his head. He saw the mirror image coming from behind to attack him. He started running fast to save himself, trying to dodge the attacks, and then hid behind an already cut tree. He thought, this isn't working, if I keep going like this, I will exhaust my stamina and die sooner or later. I need to think of a way to counterattack. I have been running away, so my body's instinct is also slowly being activated. I can still fight for half an hour without any problem. Looking at his armor, he thought it's a heavy alloy armor, so he might get more tired than me. But then he denied his own thoughts and said his stamina might be better than mine. I need to think of some other way. He thought of destroying his armor first, but then decided not to, as his power is not enough to destroy that heavy armor. He tried his luck and attempted to hit his weak spot, but the mirror image swiftly dodged. He then noticed something important and thought even though he jumped and dodged my attack, he also lost the chance to counterattack. The best way is to turn your body towards the direction of the attack. He saw that the image is using his inertia and swinging his sword to attack his body or head, so this guy's weakness is his lack of combat experience. He thought about his previous life and said in my previous life I spent more time in combat compared to this brat. He spent more time using resources to force the body's foundation. He managed to grab his leg and smash him on the ground, saying, even though you are stronger than me, I have lived more than you. He grabbed a big boulder and hit him, claiming his first victory. Miss Mirror, who was easily watching the fight, congratulated him and said, Not bad, you have won unexpectedly. Looking at your starting performance, I thought you would die for sure. He inquired about where the items that dropped are. She said, Of course, the first kill always has a 100% drop rate. The reward for defeating the opponent in this round is my kiss. Seeing Feng puzzled she said this, she is just joking. She then showed him his reward, which is rank 1 turtle snake forging. He doesn't look very impressed with this reward as it's just slightly higher in rank than the basic Forging 18 style. She said, just be satisfied with it. This skill's market price is $30,000. How can you compare it to the free skills? You only have to say the word extract, and you will be able to learn this ability. He gave it a try and said, extract. Unconsciously, his breathing became very long, and he could even hear the air current between his breaths. He thought this sound is very ancient, as if there is really an old tortoise dormant. It's like the breathing sound of a snake that has been contaminated for a thousand years. He could feel the energy flowing in his body and noticed that even his Kai blood also increased. So that must mean he became stronger. Miss Mirror said, that's just your imagination. You just learned this skill not long ago, so there is no way you are stronger now. Now relax yourself and distract yourself so you can return back to the real world. After you go back, practice hard and cultivate so you can take advantage of this newly learned skill. He opened his eyes and saw his teacher staring at him. His teacher asked, Why aren't you going for lunch and just sitting here daydreaming? He replied that, I was just revising what you taught today in class. The teacher told him not to worry about it, as the afternoon teacher will hold an emergency meeting, so he should go home now. He thanked his teacher and went away. The teacher thought, What's the point of working this hard now? You lost at the starting line, just like when the front line loses in battle. We have to change our strategy and try to conserve resources. The afternoon meeting will decide the exam time and date. If Feng fails the exam, he will be kicked out of the academy for sure. Feng is riding on a bus that is fully crowded with passengers. Half an hour later, he reached a place called Shu Guang Welfare Institute. He thought this place is where the original owner of this body used to live. 
He knocked on the door, and a young girl opened the door and asked him why he is back in the afternoon. Did he get kicked out of the school for causing trouble? He said, why would I cause any trouble? The teacher had to attend an emergency meeting in the afternoon, so they told all the students to go home for today. Then he asked her why she's back so early. She said, our class's head teacher's son died in war, so he told us to go home. Miss Mirror, watching all this, thought, so he also has a childhood friend. Even though she looks good, I am still prettier than her. Feng asked Zio if there are still food leftovers at home, as he hasn't eaten anything today. She said, I bought some meat yesterday. Please wait a little, and I will make you your favorite braised pork for a meal. It's also to celebrate your first day at school. She prepared a delicious looking luxury dish, a braised pork dish, which tasted similar to his previous world Sichuan style braised pork. He started eating it happily. She said, I changed that meat's chill. Also, I changed it to that gel to create the effect scene. He got confused, as he did not understand what she was saying. Miss Mirror was watching all this with the help of her mirror. She looks a little mad. She said, I should not see people eat. I also want to leave this place to the outside world. While training with the projection image in a desert, Miss Mirror tried to motivate him. She said, you've eaten so many braised porks. You should work hard. He asked her, knowing how did you know that I ate a braised pork? She replied, so much time passes, Ah. He continued to challenge the image again and again for a fight. He worked so hard all day, and at the end, he got super tired. Miss Mirror told him about his fight status. She said, your current better status is 24 victories and 57 deaths, and one draw because the fighting time was too long. He said, darn it, I died so many times. He is just a stronger normal human with a weapon. Why can't I win more against him? She teased him, saying, I saw your progress was smooth, so I increased his strength to the reverse beginning rank martial artist. He is only slightly stronger. He didn't believe that, it's just slightly. They started more games. He told her not to do this without his permission, as it hurts every time when he loses. And she said, who asked you to be so weak? Do you think you are grinding for weapons and equipment? Do you think you don't need to train your strength? He replied, training and cultivation take a long time to level up. I thought of grinding some pills, then start cultivating. She told him that he did get a pill while grinding. She said, looks like you were too focused on the fight and missed seeing my notification. She showed him a little bottle and said, inside this bottle is rank 1 medicine Kai blood pill. There are 10 in total inside, and each is worth $1,000. With this, you should be able to cultivate and level up to reverse beginner martial artist. The Kai blood pill is mixed with many ingredients. It is the most commonly used beginner rank pill for cultivation. She recommended him to find a place that doesn't have people. Cultivate the turtle snake forging along with this pill. The reason why there should be no people is that if you get interrupted during the process, the effects will be lowered. Zio is standing at his room's door. She was wondering that he didn't eat dinner last night or even breakfast this morning. He has been skipping meals every day. She heard that cultivators should not be disturbed while they are cultivating, or it can interrupt with the process. But she is worried about him when suddenly he opened the door and came out but he didn't see her standing there. He looks exhausted and tired, he thought that this method won't work. I'm dedicating all the time to cultivation every day and skipping every other thing. There should be a way to assign myself a prevent addict system like I can only challenge myself five times a day. He thought the mirror lady seems to be able to see the outside world, so I might have to close my eyes while showering. He then shouted in frustration, Bastard, please give me some privacy. Zio, who was standing behind the door, got shocked by this, as she thought he was talking to her. She apologized. Feng realized that she is standing there. With tears in her eyes, she said, I didn't mean to disturb you when you are cultivating. I was just worried, so I came here. He panicked and told her, No, I wasn't yelking about you. I was just mumbling to myself. She smiled and said, I'm just joking with you. It's time for school, you haven't eaten breakfast. I have packed it for you, remember to eat it. She then passed him a lunch box. Feng took the lunch box happily and said, thank you. He thought, it seems she loves the previous owner of this body. After some time, he went to a deserted area that no one manages anymore. It looks like an outer city park. He thought, this is the perfect spot for cultivating where no one will disturb me. I have to go to classes in the day, so the only time I can come here for training is in the evening. I wouldn't waste my time in school if it wasn't for the sake of entering the inner city. I should try to get a long leave from school next time, and I have to be secretive about my new strength, as I don't want anyone to learn my secret just yet. He took out the bottle of energy pills that he got earlier as a reward for defeating the projection image. He still can't believe that this small pill is worth $3,000. He sat down and started cultivating, 
The turtle snake foraging technique is the technique of foundation building. To cultivate this technique, the person has to imitate the rhythm of the tortoises and snakes so that he is hibernated like a tortoise or snake. Then he has to absorb Yunkai to temper his node structure to make it more suitable for the new skill. After training for a long nine days, he was finally able to generate Kai energy on his own. He thought he had taken the first step towards progress now that he became a beginner rank reserve martial artist. He now has only one Kai blood pill left, which means he has already consumed $27,000 worth of pills. He then thought, I should grind a little more before going home for dinner. Hopefully, it will drop some useful items to make up for my losses. He resumed his training again, fighting the projection image of Lin Kang. Miss Mirror, watching all this, started teasing him, saying, What you are doing won't help much in growth. He thought, Looks like the Mirror Lady tempered again with Lin Kang's projection image strength, as I don't feel like he is just a beginner rank reserve martial artist. He seems stronger than that, but never mind, I will show her that I can win against him even when he is stronger. With my current speed and strength, it's not like I am at a disadvantage. Dealing a final blow with his hand, he claimed his victory. After defeating him, a rare item dropped. It's a rank 1 martial skill, sword slash. She congratulated him and asked, do you want to extract it now? Without wasting any more time, he extracted it right away. He suddenly started seeing a series of messages that felt like a total dream. His brain shook, and he saw Lin Kuang cultivating the sword slash over the course of many years. He saw how hard he worked over the years to cultivate this technique. At home, he tried to use the sword slash with the help of chopsticks in his hand. But the chopsticks broke into pieces. He thought, it's such a pity that he doesn't have a real sword to unleash the full power of this ability. But he also, with his current strength, if they both are on the same rank, that means he is stronger than Lin Kang. He thought that Lin Kang just started learning this technique. He didn't have to cultivate it himself. I can say that I have greatly improved because of fighting his projection. And I have also reached the proficient stage of sword slash. Excitedly, he remembered that at school, there are many swords available. So he can get one from school tomorrow and try this technique with a sword. The next day, he went to the equipment store at the school and saw many different kinds of swords there. He was shocked to see that all of them cost so much. He thought, this is basically robbery. Even after I sell the pill, I can only get one, which is the cheapest here. Frustrated, he left, thinking that he can obtain these items from grinding later. He doesn't need to spend so much money on them. Next, he went to the beginner rank equipment room. There were many different kinds of tools in that room. He saw a bunch of swords in a corner and grabbed one sword in his hand to check it. Those swords were of high quality, but because they had been used so many times by other students, they were in bad shape. He took one sword and said, I only have to test my sword slash powers, so this sword will work just fine. He swung that sword at a mannequin there and slashed it into pieces using his technique. But as a result, the sword broke. He threw the sword in frustration and left. Later, a teacher came to the equipment room and saw the broken mannequin and the sword. He understood at first glance that it was a rank 1 sword slash technique. He then saw a small bottle on the table with a handwritten note. It said, a payment for spoiling the sword. The teacher saw that there was a blood kai pill in the bottle. He examined the broken sword and thought, only those who have already reached the proficient stage of sword slash can have this much destructive power. Does this mean that Lin Kyung is back at the academy? Leaving school, he was thinking about the blood kai pill that he had to leave as compensation for destroying the sword. He made a plan in his mind to project all the teachers first and grind for more rewards. The items dropped in fights are always limited. Next, he went to the market to meet Zio, who had found a cashier job there to help with finances so Feng can attend school. She asked him why he was so late today, and he said something happened at the school. Suddenly, a giant whirlpool formed in the air, breaking the glass of nearby buildings. Small glass pieces started falling everywhere, and everyone started running to save themselves. A glass piece was about to fall on Zio, but Feng grabbed it in the air and threw it away before it could hit Zio. He asked her if she was okay, and she said, I'm fine. She thought the Feng she had in her memories was weak, but now he is different and stronger than before. She is looking at him in admiration when a ferocious beast hawk appeared in the air. It started flying in their direction at a very high speed, as if it was coming to attack them. Feng thought, I've heard about these beasts many times, but this is my first time seeing one. If the ferocious beast invades the base, all the people here will die. He grabbed Zio's hand, and they both started running. Suddenly, a fire arrow came from an unknown direction and hit the beast. The beast cried in pain and fell down. It was a rank 3 ferocious beast, a black golden eagle. 
a rank 1 beast is equivalent to a low rank reserve martial artist, while a rank 3 is equivalent to a high rank reserve martial artist. He wondered, all it took was just one arrow to kill it. The martial artist who did it must be very powerful. His status board popped up and showed, a ferocious beast is discovered nearby. Do you wish to project it? Mixed with excitement and shock, he accepted it at once. The unlimited projection process started, which lasted a few minutes. He was amazed that he could even project such a high-level ferocious beast and wondered what the drops would be after he defeated it. At night, he was sitting in his room, ready to fight the ferocious beast he had collected earlier in the day. The projection mirror showed him the stats of the Black Golden Eagle. It was a high rank level 3 ferocious beast that had many valuable items. He asked the mirror lady to set his combat ability low, but she started the challenge. The next thing he knew, he was standing in the middle of a desert, and the black golden eagle was flying above his head. He discovered that he could also project weapons in the mirror space, so he projected a sword for himself to help him in the fight. The eagle approached him to attack and Feng decided to use it as his practicing target. A fierce battle started between them. Ten minutes later, the mirror lady appeared and told him, you have won the battle. The first kill drop rate is 100%, so you receive black golden eagle flesh as a reward. He said, I was worried that after I finished eating the blood kai pills, I wouldn't have any cultivation resources left. After some time, he returned to his room. After defeating the black golden eagle, he challenged Lin Kang's projection five more times but still got nothing. He held the black golden eagle flesh in his hand that he had won earlier. He placed all of the dropped items in front of him and then started examining them. He took a bottle and removed its cap, revealing dark red liquid inside that looked like blood. He was impressed that the projection takes players' considerations into account, which is why blood and meat are separated already. He decided to test the ferocious beast's blood first and drank it. Ferocious beasts grow stronger after the heaven and earth Yuan Kai energy increases. He felt a rush of energy in his body and felt as if his body would explode if he didn't cultivate and absorb the energy. He thought, I used the turtle snake forging technique 10 times, and now I use the black golden eagle's blood. Comparing them both, a small amount of beast blood is equivalent to 5 blood kai pills. With the resources that I have collected, I can reach the high rank reverse martial artist level very quickly. Even Lin Kang doesn't use black golden eagle flesh to increase combat ability. A ferocious beast corpse that is equivalent to a high rank reverse martial artist costs over millions. Only those from wealthier families can afford them. He went to a deserted place for cultivation. After working hard for an entire month, he's almost an intermediate reserve martial artist. He then decided to go back home and get some rest. When he reached home, he saw someone waiting at the front door for him. It's Ozio Young. They were friends and had lived together at the Benmore Orphanage before he moved out. They both were happy to see each other after a long time. Feng invited him to come inside and talk. But he refused, saying that ever since he joined the Flowing Cloud organization, the leader of the orphanage doesn't like him much because he thinks I took a wrong path in life. He said, I just came here today to meet you. I heard you joined the Martial Arts Academy, so when you have some foundation, I can teach you some skills, and then he left. Feng thought he's a good guy, but I'm sure I am stronger than him at my current level. The mirror lady appeared in his subconscious and asked him if he wants to project Yuzu, to which he declined saying that he is too weak, so there's no use in projecting him. He then asked her to continue projecting the Black Golden Eagle and Lin Kiang. She asked him, aren't you bored of it? And he replied, I'm just eating while fighting to not waste any time, as I'm starting to get used to multitasking. At the dinner table, everyone is eating, but he looked dazed as if he's thinking about something. Zio thought he always eats everything so quickly, but today he looks like he's deep in thought. That's when the dean noticed him and told him to focus on eating first. He apologized. In his mirror space, he obtained a low-rank gold attribute talent from Lin Kiang after grinding and working hard for a whole month. He asked the mirror lady if this attribute martial art is stronger than a normal martial art. She said, of course, yes. Among every 100 martial artists, there is only one that has an attribute. She told him about 10 types of attributes, gold, earth, water, fire, sand, wing, lightning, ice, light, and dark. Each type has a different ability. He decided to try his fire attribute, but he can't feel much of a difference in his strength. She said attributes have to wait until the martial artist cultivates attribute skill to show. For example, the Black Eagle body had a wind attribute. 
When you are that attribute, you will have a head start compared to all other normal martial artists, but you have to work really hard to get that. After a few days of rigorous training, Feng finally became an intermediate martial artist. A lower rank martial artist can use energy, but an intermediate rank martial artist has a stronger body. Normal weapons don't hurt him anymore, and even his skin has become better and more elastic. He thought, those who went through plastic surgery will envy me if they see my skin now. Then he decided to head home, or he will get scolded by the dean if he is late again. Suddenly he saw a man running, and a few others are chasing him with weapons in their hands. At first, he got worried, but then he thought, I don't know which side is good, so it's better to ignore this, as these things happen so often in the surroundings. But to his surprise, he discovered that the man running was his old friend Yuzu. He devised a plan in his head to save his friend and hid behind a tree in the same direction they were running towards. He started counting the distance, and when they were just 10 meters away, he came out and started running towards them. Those people had weapons in their hands and charged towards him to attack him. One of them hit Feng with his sword, but the weapon didn't have any effect on him. He grabbed his hand and hit him in the chest, which made him fall down. He then grabbed his weapon and used the sword slash ability to defeat them all effortlessly. Yuzu was watching all this, wondering who it was, but to his shock, he saw that it was Feng Yun. He asked him, what are you doing here, and how did you defeat them so easily? Feng replied, just think that you are dreaming and forget what just happened now. I will not ask you why they were chasing you, so just keep them away from the orphanage. Feng requested him not to let anyone know about his strength and left. The next day, he got all dressed up in his school uniform. On the way, he saw some military cars and wondered if they were going to his school. At school, all the students gathered in the beginner rank class martial room. Some students were talking about why the military came to the school today. One student named Chen said that apparently, the military side will give our beginner rank class a test. Those with good performance in the test will be promoted to the high rank class, and if someone didn't perform well enough, they will be kicked out of the school. This made the other students anxious as they worried about their future at school. An expert military official came on the stage, and all the students got nervous just by looking at him. In his mirror space, Feng asked the lady if he is too strong. She told him yes, he is a real metal blood military soldier. We should take our chance and project him as it will help you a lot. The projected person's name is Zhu Kun Long, and he is 35 years old, an intermediate martial artist. He has a long list of possible drops, which made Feng excited, and he decided to challenge him right away. The fight started, and very soon, Feng realized that he is on another level, and too strong for him. He wondered if the mirror lady is behind this again. If he was really just an intermediate martial artist, how can he be so strong? The soldier kept using his high-rank abilities and beat Feng to a pulp. He wasn't able to even land a single punch on him, while the soldier gave him a really hard time. The mirror lady said, Do you think a soldier who has been in many real fights will become weak after dropping ranks? Watching him get beaten so badly, she asked, Should I lower him to normal human standards so you can beat him easily? The soldier introduced himself to the students as the examiner Zhu Kun Long. He then proceeded to tell the exam details. 100 monsters are picked for this exam, and all students are free to decide if they want to form a team or fight alone. All they have to do is beat one monster to pass, and then they will be graded on their performance. The top 100 in this exam will be directly put into a high rank class. The top 3 students will be given a blood kai pill. Some students got excited upon hearing the generous rewards list. The military man is looking at the students when suddenly his glance met a strange sight. Feng standing in the middle of the crowd, trembling with his eyes closed. He thought, he must be a coward to start trembling just hearing the exam details. Inside his mirror space, he was busy fighting the projection image of that big guy. He said, dealing with a normal human standard would be easy to do, but I won't feel any sense of achievement that way. I have to defeat him in his current state. He activated his rank 2 ability and attacked him with the sword, but he dodged it. Next, he hit Feng with his god energy palm strike ability. Chen was boasting about his strength to his classmates and said, Whoever teams up with me, I will make sure you will pass, as the seats are limited. They started making fun of Feng Yun, comparing him to Chen Bai, and called him weak and fragile. Chen said, I will warn him to give up on the test. If he fails, it will be embarrassing for him. He approached Feng, who had his eyes closed still. He asked him if he is still scared. Inside his mirror space, he was finally able to defeat the big guy and got combat experience as a reward. The mirror lady asked him if he would like to extract the dropped item right away, and he said yes. Feng opened his eyes, and there was yellow light covering his body, which made Chen terrified. He got really scared by the look in his eyes and called him a monster. A few military trucks arrived at the school. 
Inside those trucks were the monsters that the students were going to fight for the test. Everyone could hear the meowing and hissing sounds coming out of those trucks, which made them scared. Judging by the sound, Feng thought it must be a rank 1 ferocious monster whose weak point is the back of their necks. His head was hurting because of all that noise, and he had big eye bags under his eyes as he was lacking sleep and had been training and cultivating rigorously for the past few days. All the students entered the battle beast area. By the look on their faces, they all looked really scared and depressed. The military official would be monitoring the beast area from behind a glass screen. He mocked the students, calling them all weak and having no combat experience. But the other guy said they just entered the school a month ago, and they are already fighting the ferocious monsters. It's only natural for them to be scared. Feng was standing in the crowd with his panda eyes, looking left and right, and preparing himself to get ready for the fight. The principal explained that students could ask the examiner for help during the exam if they were struggling, but doing so would lead to disqualification. Feng had been assigned room 24, and as he entered, he was determined to prove himself in the test, which held significant importance for his future at the school. In his designated room, he encountered a large door with steel bars, creating an atmosphere of anticipation. The supervising teacher questioned why he was alone, to which Feng admitted that his peers had refused to partner with him due to his perceived weakness. He selected a lightweight armor from the available options, preparing himself with a sword for the upcoming challenge. As the steel bar door opened, a steel wild boar's growl filled the air, indicating that a rank 1 ferocious beast awaited him. This creature possessed formidable attacking and defensive capabilities, with its throat being the sole vulnerable point. The teacher provided a final warning about the ferocity of this specific monster, giving Feng the option to withdraw from the test. Unperturbed, Feng contemplated strategies for defeating the beast, expressing his readiness to seek help if necessary. Unexpectedly, the ferocious beast underwent a transformation, evolving into a rank 2 snake-tailed steel wild boar. With a well-executed sword slash, Feng managed to defeat the beast swiftly, leaving the teacher in a state of astonishment and confusion regarding Feng's abilities. Trying to downplay his achievement, Feng jokingly attributed his success to the power unlocked when fear takes hold. As Feng returned the armor and sword, it was Chen's team's turn to face the challenge. Seizing the opportunity to rest, Feng lay down on a nearby bench, embracing the warmth of sunlight as he closed his eyes for a brief nap. Inside the mirror space, he decided to engage in a few challenges against Zhu Kunlong and the Black Golden Eagle before the afternoon results were announced. His recent victory over the rank 2 mutated beast had boosted his confidence significantly. The exam continued, and despite their valiant efforts, many students sustained injuries during their battles with the ferocious beasts. Finally, the results were unveiled, and the military officer's face displayed a mix of confusion and admiration upon seeing Feng's name at the top of the list. The officer's intrigue led him to contemplate Feng's potential, even pondering the idea of recruiting him for military purposes. However, the principal asserted that Feng was a student of the academy, and not available for external engagements. Feng heard that the exam results announced and he got up and went towards the hall. He earned many valuable rewards including Zhu Kun's inch tour steps and Black Golden Eagle's feather in his mirror space while he was taking a nap. As he stepped into the hall, some voices caught his attention. Students were shouting in frustration, accusing someone of cheating and demanding answers from the principal. Confused by the commotion, he saw the list displayed on the wall, and his eyes widened in disbelief. There, at the very top, was his own name. Three students decided to go the principal office. Addressing the principal, the students exclaimed their concerns. The highest rank this exam could possibly grant is an S rank, yet Feng's score shows an SSS rank. It seems he must have exploited his connections to achieve this. This situation is far from fair to the rest of us. One teacher got angry and shouted whatever the exam result is you can't accuse the principal for cheating but the principal said their concerns are reasonable. If this is what they think then let me show them something to clear their doubts. Employing his magic, he displayed a footage of Feng's battle against the ferocious beast. The students gasped in astonishment, asking, what kind of ferocious beast is that? It looks massive. The principal calmly responded, It's a rank 1 beast that mutated into a higher rank right in the midst of the battle. Remarkably, Feng defeated it in less than 5 minutes. Overwhelmed with surprise, the students quickly apologized and left the office. Feng went to a place called Starshine Base Outer City Black Market. The reason he went to the market was because he wanted to sell a few things to earn money. He entered a store where a girl greeted him. She welcomed him and asked it how can he help you. 
modulating his voice, he inquired, I've heard that this establishment is renowned within the black market. I've come to sell some ferocious beast materials. He deftly produced the black golden eagle feather from his pocket and presented it to the girl. Carefully examining the feathers, the girl appraised, compared to regular feathers, these gold attribute feathers are more suitable for crafting arrows. They're excellent material. After a moment's consideration, she proposed, I'll offer $10,000 for each feather. Considering there are 40 feathers, all in pristine condition, the final sum amounts to $400,000. Feng's face lit up with satisfaction as he readily accepted the generous offer. She asked for his identity card and after confirming the payments he gave it back to Hai. Feng checked his bank balance and his face lit up with happiness taunts he so much money in his bank account. He thought it feels so great to be rich. He thought of donating $200,000 to the orphanage anonymously to help raise the standard of living for his friends. The next day he came to school wearing a mask so no one can identify him. He is still not sure how to explain his strength to his teachers and other students. Lost in his own thoughts, he was walking to his classroom when a teacher recognized him and decided to bring him to the principal's office. In the principal's office, the principal asked Feng, What level have you reached now? Realizing he couldn't hide it any longer, he admitted, I'm now an intermediate reverse martial artist. The teacher was surprised and asked, how did you manage to achieve that? The principal assured Feng, we are a school that cares for our students. We won't inquire about personal matters or how you gained your powers. He then offered Feng a cup of tea, but Feng appeared apprehensive, as if suspecting poison in the tea. The principal spoke with affection, our school may be simple, but the outside world is much more chaotic. When you're outside the school, try to keep a low profile, as our teachers can't offer you protection beyond these walls. With a warm smile, the principal continued, here are your rewards for securing the first position in the exam, handing him a pack of blood kai pills. Now, you can proceed to the higher rank class, and after that, enjoy a well-deserved week-long holiday. Feng had been training in the jungle for three months, and finally, he attained the esteemed level of an advanced rank reserve martial artist. The surge in his strength surprised him, and he marveled at the newfound power coursing through his body. A radiant yellow aura enveloped him as the energy flowed within. He mused, could this be the legendary heaven and earth god attribute you in energy? Its impact on my body's strength is substantial. One could even say the advantage of being an attribute martial artist is finally manifesting. He contemplated how attribute martial artists absorb you in energy aligned with their own attributes, fortifying their bodies. This effect, he reasoned, surpassed even the efficacy of blood kai pills or the enhancing properties of ferocious beast flesh. Pondering further, he concluded, I ought to integrate more attribute talents into this practice, as relying solely on a single attribute Yuan feels inadequate. A wave of joy washed over him at the prospect of becoming the world's soul prodigy after gathering all ten attributes. After several months, Feng found himself stationed by the outer walls of Starshine Base. Reflecting on his progress, he noted, In these past three months, I have acquired quite a collection of techniques, God Energy Palm Strike and Limit Crushing Punch, both at rank 2 in Martial Techniques, Admirality, a rank 2 Forging Technique, and Sharp Gold Strike, a rank 1 technique with a golden attribute. Among these, only Sharp Gold Strike remains as the attribute technique for cultivation, while the others have mostly fused and reached proficient levels. His arsenal also expanded with the inclusion of an alloy sword and armor, enhancing his capabilities. Contemplating the future, he realized, the time has come for me to venture beyond the base's confines and engage with the wild beasts. This could provide an opportunity to encounter even mightier creatures, allowing me to employ projection techniques to further hone my skills and advance through the levels. Beyond the Starshine base lies the treacherous expanse of the Dark Snow Forest, teeming with ferocious beasts and monsters. Despite its dangers, the forest is a veritable treasure trove, holding resources that could make anyone wealthy. It's a haven for hunters who often tread its paths. Most people arriving here shell out a hefty sum for maps detailing the distribution of these formidable creatures. However, Feng Yun has no need for such maps due to his wealth of combat experience from Zhu Kun. His memory is a tapestry of countless explorations in this very place. Currently, Feng is locked in combat with a rank 1 ferocious beast, the venomous blue snake, whose bite could spell immediate death for even an advanced reserve martial artist. Nevertheless, such foes are beneath his consideration for projection. As he navigates through the area, his prowess is evident in the trail of carcasses left behind. Suddenly, an assailant launches a barrage of golden arrows toward him. Swiftly, Feng employs his proficiency in admirality to erect a shield, thwarting the arrow onslaught. 
The attacker is visibly taken aback by the adept display of the technique. Seizing the moment, Feng counters with a surprise attack from behind, prevailing in the confrontation. Reflecting on his surroundings, he realizes the dark snow forest harbors not just fearsome beasts, but also hidden dangers, these bandits who pose threats with sneak attacks. After looting the fallen bandits' possessions, Feng is disappointed to find only three bottles of blood kai pills and shoddy armor. He departs the scene, unaware that two observers, concealed behind a tree, are astonished by the display of a 14-year-old's exceptional physique and battle acumen. One of them recognizes the fallen bandit, remarking, I know him, he was a skilled archer responsible for the deaths of many hunters. Yet now, he lacks the strength to even defend himself. They both marvel at the boy's proficiency in not just one, but two rank two techniques at the proficient stage, speculating that he must have begun training at an incredibly young age. Debating the feasibility of such a feat, they conclude that mastering such techniques at age 4 or 5 is implausible due to the incomplete formation of bones in children. Their assessment leads them to a decision to avoid tangling with this youth given his formidable and seemingly inexplicable strength. After spending half a day in the dark snow forest, Feng returned to sell the items he had acquired from the forest in the black market. He thought, my bag was too small, that's why I couldn't bring back more items. I only managed to collect blood and flesh types, which are more valuable than other items. He appeared frustrated by his limitations. The lady at the store greeted him warmly, expressing happiness at his return. Looking at his bag, Feng estimated that the items would sell for only 300,000. He reasoned that it wasn't worth more than a black golden eagle. Despite this, he cautioned himself against greed, acknowledging that getting 300,000 in just half a day wasn't bad at all. Still preoccupied with thoughts of his quest in the forest, Feng pondered the absence of beasts with attribute talent. He resolved to return to the forest someday to reap more rewards. Upon reaching home, he was greeted by the delectable aroma of cooking meat wafting from the kitchen. Xiao dashed from the kitchen, seizing Feng's hand and leading him inside. Curious, he asked her what was happening. She revealed that an anonymous donation of $200,000 had been made to the orphanage, and as a result, the dean was treating them to extra food. Entering a room where all the children were gathered at the dining table, Feng witnessed a spread of diverse dishes, a scene that resembled a celebration. Overjoyed by the sight of everyone's happy faces, Feng made a firm decision to buy a large house in the inner city for the director and the kids. He harbored intentions of ensuring their perpetual safety. The next day, he attended school to report to the high-ranking class. He felt somewhat relieved that he no longer needed to exert himself to conceal his strength while at school. During a lecture, a teacher addressed the students, cautioning them that failing to become a martial artist by the age of 30 would result in expulsion from the academy. He advised against overconfidence, noting that the 15 years they had might pass in the blink of an eye. Feng Yun raised his hand and requested leave, prompting other students to murmur about him being the one who had achieved an SSS rank in the exam. They found it audacious for him to seek leave on his very first day. The principal instructed the teacher to give special attention to Feng Yun and ensure his comfort during his time at school. Yet, the principal hadn't expected Feng to employ this strategy on the first day. When asked how many days of leave he wanted, Feng initially considered half a year but decided on one or two months to be more reasonable. The teacher, visibly annoyed, inquired about the reason for the extended leave. When Feng refused to answer, his refusal only fueled the teacher's frustration. The teacher considered two months excessive and demanded a reason, stressing that he couldn't approve such a long leave without proper justification. Feng proposed a solution, a match with the teacher. If Feng won, the teacher would have to approve his leave, otherwise, the teacher could refuse it. The teacher was taken aback by Feng's boldness in challenging him. Watching all this through the mirror, the mirror lady laughed and remarked that Feng knew the teacher was stronger, but he still provoked him due to his superior martial techniques and combat experience. Feng explained that he felt he had no other option, as he believed there was nothing more for him to learn at school. He believed that he could learn better in his mirror space than in the classroom. Taking their positions to start the fight, the teacher pondered that if he didn't suppress Feng now, the boy wouldn't be able to grow stronger. He felt compelled to go all out, even if it meant causing some injuries. The fight began. Feng fashioned a finger sword using his sword slash ability and lunged at the teacher to attack. The teacher was caught off guard by Feng's remarkable speed but quickly regained his composure, preparing to counter. Channeling energy into his hand, he attempted a counterattack. Just as his punch was about to connect, Feng skillfully evaded. The teacher marveled at Feng's use of the proficient stage inch tour steps technique. 
Despite his astonishment, the teacher decided to launch another attack. However, he had already expended a significant amount of energy while Feng appeared unfazed. Seizing the advantage, Feng employed his limit-crushing punch technique against the teacher. The teacher experienced a surge of terror, but before the technique could land, Feng halted the attack, definitively establishing his victory. Feng expressed gratitude to his teacher for the sparring session. The teacher quivered in fear as the battle reached its conclusion. With the duel over, Feng calmly stated, Now, please keep your promise and permit me to leave the school. The teacher's mind raced, recognizing that this young boy had bested him fair and square. He mused, this lad defeated me without any tricks. He's truly powerful, almost too powerful for a 15-year-old. With a courteous farewell, Feng took his leave, acknowledging the teacher one last time. The teacher felt an urge to stop him, but his commitment to honor the agreement held him back. Meanwhile, the other students observed, impressed by Feng's prowess. It was a reminder that strong individuals could sometimes come across as confident or even a bit arrogant. Once he left the school, he made up his mind to return to the dark snow forest. His goal was to hunt down some solitary rank 3 ferocious beasts. He figured that he could not only earn more money but also improve his skills through the grind. Wanting to maximize every moment, he decided to practice a few projections while on the bus ride. After facing off against the projections of Zhu Kun and the Black Golden Eagle a few times, the Mirror Lady unexpectedly informed him, It seems luck is on your side today. You've just acquired a wind attribute at a low rank. This news brought him joy, realizing that he had obtained a rare item simply through casual grinding. He saw two colored lights and thought, the green light must be natural wind attribute Yuan energy. With gold attribute Yuan energy, I can become strong even without cultivation. He considered, I should obtain at least 5 to 6 attribute talents. In fact, I should aim for all 10 attribute talents, including the higher ranked ones. Then, I can directly become strong. The mirror lady thought, he's acting foolishly. Should I remind him that some enemies with attribute talents are so strong that they would kill him instantly even before he could project it? The teacher went to the principal seeking advice on whether to grant Feng leave or not, and he recounted the details of their fight. The principal seemed quite relaxed, advising the teacher not to worry excessively and suggesting they sit down for a calming cup of tea. He reassured the teacher, stating, In the school's history, many teachers have been defeated by their own students. You should be glad it happened to you. The teacher found the situation embarrassing and confessed, This is very embarrassing. The principal continued, explaining, Feng Yun's skin displayed a golden hue, indicating proficiency in the rank 2 forging body technique admirality. It's not at a beginner's stage. The teacher attempted to voice a protest, asking, how is that even possible? He must be keeping some secrets from us. The principal countered, having such a talented student like Feng Yun in your class, you should feel proud. Once Feng Yun becomes famous, so will you. The teacher pondered, but I have never taught him before. The principal replied, if outsiders learn that you've been able to guide a student to this extent, they will not only be interested in Feng Yun but also in you. Nobody will care how many days you've taught him. Having a student like Feng Yun in your class, you should feel proud and happy. Since you can't teach him anything, let him cultivate at home. However, we must not let him know that the school can't offer him much. The principal handed a box to the teacher and instructed him to send it to Feng's address. The teacher felt a sense of apprehension just looking at the box. As he began to say something, the principal cut him off, advising him not to speak further. He shared, My heart already aches at the thought of parting with this. Bring it to him quickly. I might regret giving it away so hastily. The teacher reassured the principal that he would ensure the item reached Feng Yun's hands and then left. Meanwhile, the principal gazed out the window, lost in thought. He contemplated Feng Yun, recognizing that after 50 years, there was finally hope for the school to nurture such a prodigious genius. He reflected, now I can depart without regrets. The principal's thoughts shifted to the upcoming four-school competition in two months. He fervently wished for Feng Yun to shine brightly and prove himself. He silently urged, flex your talents in front of those three shameless old figures and help me silence their criticisms. Feng Yun is engrossed in cultivation within the outer reaches of the dark snow forest. There, he encounters a solitary rank 3 ferocious flame army ant. Perceiving it as a stroke of luck, he becomes excited and proceeds to attack it. Believing the ant to be weak, he is enticed by the allure of valuable armor and flame poison, a substantial bounty. Despite the mirror lady's attempt to warn him against attacking, he disregards her advice and forges ahead with his assault. He reassures, don't worry, I'll be careful and avoid its flame poison. 
However, she responds, that's not what I was worried about. Look around you now. Glancing about, he observes numerous ants poised for an assault, all displaying anger over the loss of their comrade. They launch an attack on him en masse, doing his utmost to fend off their assault while retaliating with his sword. Feng Yun begins to regret his impulsive actions. He laments, why did no one inform me that they travel in armies and can change colors? I had my suspicions, there couldn't possibly be something this good. He started running as a full army of flame ants chased him, ready to kill him. Then, he suddenly spotted a giant dragon-like lizard, a ferocious beast. With a single strike, he killed the beast and urgently pleaded, sorry, help me block them for a while. He managed to sneak into his house through a window, aiming to evade being seen by the dean. Upon entering his room, he thought, I was chased by those red army ants for half a day. If it weren't for those ferocious beast corpses stalling them, I could have died today. It hadn't been a particularly good day. The materials he bought were only sold for 20,000, resulting in a significant loss. To purchase a house within the inner city, he needed hundreds of millions. Suddenly, someone grabbed him by the collar. It was his teacher, who shouted his name. Unexpectedly, he was then struck by the dean, who mistook him for Feng Yun and inquired, Did you do something wrong at school? Realizing her error, she apologized and inquired if Feng Yun had caused any trouble. The teacher swiftly responded, No, that's not true. Feng Yun performed really well at school. He's the most excellent student I've ever taught in my life. The school decided to allow Feng Yun to focus on cultivating at home for two months to accelerate his growth. As a gesture to aid his rapid improvement, they provided him with something extraordinary. Opening the box in front of him, his eyes brimmed with excitement. Three treasure yuan pills. Each pill was worth at least a few million and was a grade 3 pill not available for purchase in the outer city. Just as the teacher was about to leave, the dean expressed gratitude for looking after Feng Yun and playfully remarked, This kid is very naughty, please teach him well. The teacher humbly responded, No, it's my honor to teach him, before taking his leave. In his room, Feng looked at the pills and thought, These pills must have been given by the principal. That old man is quite generous. Now, I owe him a favor, but I have to be cautious and I need to check if these pills are authentic. The mirror lady, observing everything through the mirror, thought, Wow, it's a real trouble for him. These are real treasure Yuan pills, and they're filled with Yuan energy. Get ready to cultivate for a very long time before you'll be able to consume them. He placed a do not disturb sign on his room's door for cultivation. Seating himself on his bed, he took a pill and ingested it. Initially, he felt energy flowing through his body, but suddenly he began to experience sheer pain. His veins seemed ready to explode, and his eyes appeared as if they were burning with fire. He felt as if all of his body cells were cracking open, and he felt as if he was turning into a monster. Watching this, the mirror lady grew worried and advised him to use the tortoise snake advanced forging technique to absorb the pill's Yuan energy, or else his body might explode due to the pill's high-grade quality. In frustration, he got up. He had never heard of real items causing harm to people in his past life. He absorbed the pill's Yuan energy using the tortoise forgive technique, as the mirror lady had advised. He then began the cultivating process, moving his body like a snake in motion. He started the grinding process, engaging in various exercises to forge his body and absorb all the energy for cultivation. As the days passed, he continued his training, finally achieving the desired results. Looking at his body, he wondered if his forged body was now as strong as steel. His speed and defense had significantly improved. Next up was forging his blood, and then he would become a martial artist. He never thought a pill would have such a tremendous effect. He considered that most people might get stuck at this stage, typically spending two to three years for even a mere enhancement of Kai and blood quality, needing it to be maintained. To progress faster, one would require a higher speed or possess a high-class treasure. However, if attribute martial artists utilize heaven and earth Yuan energy to extract pure Kai and blood, I need to find more high-ranking attribute talents. Suddenly, he felt like he was forgetting something important. It was food he had forgotten to eat. He started consuming food as if he hadn't seen any in days. Zio asked him if his increased eating was due to cultivation. Thankfully, we now have enough money to buy a lot of food. After eating, he ventured into the dark snow forest, thinking about how he would grow even stronger and earn more money, thereby improving the lives of everyone in welfare. They wouldn't have to struggle just to survive anymore. He had been searching for ferocious beasts with attribute talents in the dark snowy forest for almost a full week, but still couldn't find any. He came across a warning sign that read, Inner Dark Snow Forest Ahead. Rank 1 rescue teams are unable to reach this area. Any rescue signals will be ignored. 
He pondered whether this meant that ordinary people venturing beyond this sign would have to face the consequences on their own, without anyone to rescue them in case of an emergency. Realizing that there might be better opportunities ahead, he decided to enter the inner part of the dark forests. He chose not to venture too deeply. He settled beside a lake, thinking that with this much distance, it shouldn't pose a problem for him. He shouldn't provoke ferocious beasts of rank 4 or higher, or he would be instantly killed. As he struck the water's surface, a giant, menacing sea beast emerged. Brandishing his sword, Feng aimed for its neck and managed to defeat the beast, a rank 3 ferocious creature known as the blue-scaled fish, as projected by the mirror lady. Suddenly, someone approached from behind, exclaiming that luck was on his side for encountering a blue-scaled fish. His meal would be lavish. The individual was an intermediate martial artist wearing heavy armor. The mirror lady swiftly projected this person, revealing his name as Zhang Yun Mao, a 30-year-old with an extensive list of dropped swords, armor, many bottles of Kai pills, and numerous rank 3 martial techniques. The man cautioned Feng, saying, Kid, don't wander around in the dark snow forest, it's very dangerous. He then claimed the dead fish and informed Feng not to follow, as he wouldn't share the meat. Unperturbed by the prospect of things being taken from him, Feng thought, Your items are all projected into my mirror, so why would I worry about a share of the fish meat? Within his mirror space, he examined Zhang Yun's stats and concluded that this intermediate martial artist possessed so many items that he didn't need to take risks by entering the dark snow forest for a while. He decided to head home first and then grind on this blue-scaled fish. He challenged both the projections of Zhang Yun and the blue-scaled fish. After some time, he finally succeeded in obtaining the water attribute talent called the Count Star Sword Technique. It's from Zhu Yun and looks very promising. Feng becomes genuinely happy to have acquired such an amazing attribute talent. Deciding to give it a try, he felt that this technique is even more potent than the sword slash technique. Suddenly, he remembered something and questioned, if I have the mirror space, then why did I use a real sword for the battle while trying to learn the sword technique? He realized he had wasted $3,000 for nothing. Subsequently, he decided to test the effects of the intermediate water attribute talent. A blue light enveloped his body, resembling water. He thought, it's different from the gold sharp edge and the fierceness of wind. Water's Yuan Kai is like gentle hands touching my body and healing my wounds. He discovered that the water attribute Yuan Kai contains healing properties, eliminating his worries about future injuries since his body could now heal itself due to this attribute. With three attribute talents now, he found himself continuously forged by these three attributes Yuan Kai. At this rate, even if he did nothing, he could become a martial artist within three months. Yet, he recognized it's still too slow. He must seize the chance to cultivate even more. He walked outside and spotted a group of people who appeared to be delinquents near the welfare house. One of them addressed Feng, saying, Hey, brat, what are you looking at? However, he was taken aback by the intensity in Feng's eyes. They seemed to burn with fiery, red-hot intensity. He noted that Feng's eyes gave the impression that he had taken lives before, eyes even more frightening than any ferocious beast he had ever encountered. The group became so frightened that they knelt on the ground, pleading, please don't come here. One of them admitted, we can't fight him. If we try, we'll be killed. Observing their pitiable state, Feng remarked on their weak hearts and their pretense of being gangsters. Approaching them, he asserted, I will ask questions, and you will answer. He inquired about their origins and their purpose for being there. With a fearsome expression, one among them said, We are from the Black Axe group. We came here to locate a kid named Feng Yuzu. We were unaware of your presence. Please forgive us for our actions. Feng questioned them about their reason for seeking him, prompting the boss to explain that they had dismantled Feng Yuzu's Lin Yun group. Feng Yuzu was the sole survivor, leading the boss to suspect he had seized all of the Lin Yun group's assets. As the boss spoke, Feng swiftly struck him on the neck. Feng declared, I'm not concerned with your affairs. But if you involve Welfare Home in this, then I will have no choice but to pay a visit to your lair. While they were talking, Feng Yuzu arrived. He said to Feng, Even though you can deal with these few subordinates, Black Axe Group's boss is very strong. You should take the Welfare House people and go into hiding. Feng replied, That's not possible because they have already arrived here. A group of intimidating men arrived and said to Feng Yuzu, You sure run fast. If we didn't know your background, you wouldn't have been able to escape from us. I personally brought so many people to kill you. You should be honored. He continued, I heard that your birthplace is a welfare home. I will make sure that this place ceases to exist after today. The dean told both of them not to fight and to come inside the house. Yuzu got scared and started pleading to not hurt his family, as it was solely his own fault. 
Suddenly, he saw an unexpected sight. Feng Yun killed all of them with arrows. Yu Zhu thought that Du Xiao was an intermediate martial artist and had mastered various martial techniques. Du Xiao was an expert whom I would never be able to surpass, but just look at him now. He's as fragile as paper, easily pierced through by Feng Yun. The Du Xiao in my memory was so feeble, yet this Feng Yun is astonishing. He then asked Yu Zhu to take him to Black Axe Group's headquarters. He asked him why you want to go there to which Feng Yun replied to slaughter them all. The dean arrived there. Feng said, Director, please don't stop me. This welfare house's safety is already threatened, so I must kill them now. Yu Zhu tried to warn him, saying, Black Axe Group has advanced reserve martial artists. Feng said who told you I was just an intermediate martial artist. Feng showed him his true powers as an advanced martial artist which greatly shocked Feng Yu Zhu as he was not expecting him to be a Hugh Leaves advanced martial artist. In his memory he was just a weak little boy who has no foundation. Zio gave him a bag and told him not to push himself too much. Both of them embarked on their journey, and the dean thought the nanny mouse donation must be from Feng Yun, who earned it by killing the ferocious beasts. At the headquarters, the men are sitting around the table, organizing their leader. They're talking about making Black Axe Group the richest and strongest in Starshine Base after snatching all of Lin Yun Group's assets. While they were in the midst of eating when suddenly a bag came flying out of nowhere, crashing onto the table with considerable force. One man shouted, it's the head of our co-leader. Their shock was palpable at the news of his demise. This event stoked intense anger in the boss. Suddenly, the door opened with a bang and Feng Yun entered the room. He looked burning with fury and anger. The leader approached him to attack, and in anger said, you dare to come to our headquarters. The boss was ready to attack Feng Yun. He concentrated all his strength into his fist to hit Feng Yun hard. Feng Yu, who was watching, was surprised by the boss's power. He thought, a skilled martial artist with a special technique is very strong. Feng Yun, on the other hand, had recently become a martial artist but didn't have the right stuff to make his skills better. Even if he trained hard, he couldn't become strong enough to beat the boss. I'm worried the boss will hurt him badly in this fight. Just as Feng Yun showed his skills, his body glowed yellow all over. When Feng Yu saw this, he thought, am I dreaming? How can he use such an advanced move? As the boss got closer to attack Feng Yun, he thought, I got information about the city's tough guys from the black market, including Liu Mutian, the leader of the Black Axe group. I know you're strong, but you're nothing compared to me. Their fists hit each other, and the boss got thrown away because of the strong punch. Feng Yun took the chance and hit the boss in the face, making him fall down and cry out in pain. The Black Axe group members who were watching were shocked that it only took one move to defeat their boss. Feng Yuzu was also surprised. He couldn't believe that Feng Yu beat Liu Mutan so easily. The boss started begging for his life, but Feng Yun decided to finish him off to prevent any future problems. Then he asked Feng Yuzu to take care of the rest since he had already beaten the boss. Feng Yuzu stepped forward and asked, but suddenly, all the members bowed down in front of Feng Yun. They were terrified of his incredibly strong power and promised to follow his orders. He chose to spare their lives and left the place. Outside the door, he discovered a message on his communicator, so he checked it. It was from the Academy Student Management Office, stating that the four major high school competitions would commence on August 1st, and he needed to return to school promptly. Nearer Lady remarked, So, the day has finally arrived. He replied, yes, the four big high school entrance exams are the city's Starshine Academy's way of selecting talented individuals. If you aim to acquire inner city residents and purchasing rights, these competitions provide the quickest route. Otherwise, one must become a martial artist. The principal gave me a grade 3 pill to help me excel during the entrance exam. Recently, Highland Martial Art Academy has been my last place to repay a favor to the principal. Mirror Lady pointed out, the key point is that once you enter the inner city, you can engage with stronger individuals. Collaborating and sparring with them will accelerate your growth. Feng Yu came from behind, and Yun asked him if he had taken care of those men. He informed him that the Black Axe group was now under his control and asked if Feng Yun was okay with that. Feng replied, I'm indifferent to your actions, but remember this, true power comes from within and one shouldn't overly rely on the power of others. Feng Yu replied, I understand. Today, I witnessed what it means to be strong. One person can defeat an entire group. If you're willing, can you take on a whole group as well? Yun said, go back to the welfare house and look after them. Their safety is your responsibility when I'm not around. Ensure that no one from the welfare house gets hurt at any cost. Yu replied, you don't have to worry about that. I'm willing to risk my life to protect everyone. 
Yun returned to his cultivation, focusing on refining his skills even further. He fought and, at the same time, conversed with Mirror Lady. He said, if I go to the inner city, there will be times when I can't take care of the welfare house. So I must find time to guide you in his cultivation so he can become strong enough to protect everyone. Time isn't on my side, I have to cultivate quickly. I heard that students from the four schools are all advanced reserve martial artists. If I want to win, I have to become as strong as a martial artist. While thinking about all this, he finally managed to defeat the projection image of the guy he had met in the dark snow forest but was greatly disappointed to see that there were no drops. He continued to try, but every time, he was disappointed to see no drops. He grew increasingly frustrated and couldn't understand what was happening. Observing all this, Mirror Lady thought, Feng Yun has been continuously challenging Zhang Yun for two months. It seems he has realized that with just one martial technique and three attribute talents, he can't get close to the power of a martial artist in two months. He needs to obtain a higher ranked martial technique, like a forging body technique, to achieve that. After many more attempts, he finally managed to reach rank 3 in the forging body technique, specifically the god tyrant technique, and immediately extracted it. Suddenly, he felt unbearable pain throughout his body. He said, it hurts. The pain is coursing through every part of my body. It feels like I've been bitten by countless ants. Mirror Lady explained, you've suddenly reached the proficient stage of rank 3 in the forging technique. It's normal that your body can't handle it. Relax, after fainting, you won't feel the pain anymore. With a smirk on his face and determination in his eyes, Yun replied, there's no way I'll faint in front of a girl. He persevered, and after a night of hard work, he finally managed to gain control over it. He didn't feel any pain anymore. Once the god tyrant technique reached the proficient stage, one could generate protection using Kai. Yun went to meet Feng Yu at the Hope Organizational Headquarters, previously known as the Black Axe Headquarters. The two guards standing at the door saw him and were flustered. He thought, it's been a while since I came back to the Black Axe Organization. Feng Yu Zhu has really transformed it into the Hope Organization. Both of them greeted him as brother, and he asked them to fetch their boss as he had some business to discuss with him. Yu came outside and was delighted to see him there. Yun said, I need your help with something, to which Yu replied, sure, just tell me, brother. I'll do everything I can to assist you. Yun said, ask your men to shoot me with alloy arrows. He wanted to test his newly acquired skill, the god tyrant technique's defense, to gauge its power level. This request left everyone bewildered and puzzled. They said, Brother Yun, please spare us. If we did anything wrong, please just tell us. He thought maybe they believed he was looking for an excuse to harm them. Feng Yu tried to dissuade him, saying, Even if your admiralty is proficient, you can't block so many alloy arrows at once. Yun reassured him, saying, Don't worry, I just want to try out my new skill. They all took their positions, and Yun stood in front of them to face the arrows. At Yu's command to shoot the arrows, they all released their shots. Yun activated the god tyrant technique, and his body was enveloped in red light. The arrows couldn't touch him. They either bounced off due to the technique or shattered into pieces upon impact. He felt joyous and thought, this god tyrant power is indeed amazing. He expressed his gratitude, saying thank you, and turned around to leave. Feng Yu thought, what skill is that? It's already a high rank, and I haven't even heard of it before. One of the men asked you about Yun's age. He replied, 15 years old. All of them were shocked upon hearing his age, as they realized they had wasted their lives. They were much older than Yun but still lacked the strength to even compare themselves to him. Finally, the day of the four school entrance exams arrived. Many students were present at the school. Yun went straight to the principal's office, where many other students were already waiting. The principal was happy to see that he had finally arrived. Other students wondered who he was and why he was so late, which made him seem arrogant to them. Some thought his name sounded familiar. Chen and his group, whom Yun had defeated in the beast exam, were also present and were determined not to let him defeat them this time. One of them was even determined to crush him this time. The mirror lady watched this through her mirror and said, All the students here are reserve martial artists, including Chen and his other two friends. Feng Yun, don't be careless during this entrance exam. The principal said, Since all of you are here now, we should go. They all started walking towards the bus to board it. Sitting in the bus and looking outside, Yun thought, After coming to this world, it's been five months, and I finally entered the inner city residence. This feels like leaving the beginner village compared to the progress in novels and games. I am way too slow. They entered the city, which was beautiful with lots of high-rise buildings, cars, and beautiful architecture. Yun thought, The inner city's walls are far higher than the outer wall, and even the quality seems different. They reached a huge alloy gate that surprised Yun, 
making him think, all of these buildings are made of alloy material, at least it can block a rank 2 ferocious beast charge. The gap between the inner city and the outer city is way too high. 90% of the people on the streets are cultivators, and the safety rating is also really high. They finally arrived at Starshine University, a huge building with vast playgrounds and a stunning campus. The principal mentioned that getting into Starshine University wasn't easy and led them to the exam area, where the entrance exam would be held. Suddenly, they heard the beeping sounds of other buses arriving. Yun turned around to take a look, and many buses arrived with lots of students disembarking. Seeing that Yun and his school had arrived first, someone from another school commented, I see Highland school came early. Good or bad results aren't related to arriving early or late. Another girl chimed in. If you already think you'll get a bad result, don't spread negativity to the students. The principal overheard these comments and became angry. Then, they spotted a ferocious beast eagle in the air with someone seated on it. Yun was surprised to witness this sight and thought, Finally, I see someone who can make a ferocious beast their mount. Just how strong must this person be to achieve something like this? The man dismounted from the ferocious beast and began walking toward them. His name was Feng Lai, an advanced-ranked martial artist, and he was also the examiner for this year's entrance exam. Some people present started praising him, saying, Teacher Lai, so you're this year's examiner. Thank you for your hard work. Teacher Lai is very righteous, strict, and possesses great insight. He's the best teacher. Yun asked the principal why he wasn't going to interact with him. The principal replied, Feng Yun, you must remember this, in this era, that type of interaction is useless. People's relationships aren't built on praise and sweet words. The mirror lady projected Lai Feng's cultivation details, revealing he was a 42-year-old advanced martial artist. All his techniques were at least rank 3, and he possessed valuable items such as weapons, armor, a bottle of grade 3 green pills, and extensive combat experience. The only downside was that he wasn't an attribute martial artist. Lai Feng asked the lady if she had projected the principal before, to which the mirror lady replied, The principal's situation is quite special. The current you can't defeat his projection. He then inquired if the principal had any strong martial artist techniques, and she said, You will find out after you challenge Lai Feng's projection. Lai Feng began addressing the students, explaining that this time the exam was different. They would no longer use the four school fight mode. This left the teachers confused about what was happening. Lai Feng continued, At the front of the forest lies Starshine Academy. The exam is to pass through this forest to reach the end. However, in the forest, there are 40 of Starshine Academy's weakest members, as their positions will be replaced by you. They will use any means to stop you. Chen thought, making us fight against Starshine Academy's students puts us at a disadvantage. Yun realized, there are only three ways to enter Starshine Academy. First, become a martial artist before the age of 30. Second, receive education in the inner city from a young age. And third, pass the four school entrance exam. Those who entered this year can most likely become martial artists. So, even if they're the weakest students in Starshine Academy, they're likely all novice martial artists. Moreover, they will go all out to protect their positions. Not everyone here will pass the entrance exam. There might even be some who don't make it. Even if I were to be attacked by two novice ranked martial artists, at the same time, I would still lose. Yun asked the mirror lady to project Lai Feng quickly and change him into a normal human form. The first time, I can definitely get a drop. Now, I just need to see if my luck is good enough to acquire a better martial technique. He said confidently. She asked if he was sure, and he replied, Yes, please start right now. Lai Feng's image appeared in the projection mirror, and Feng Yun prepared to fight, hoping for a valuable drop. However, Lai Feng's projection delivered a powerful kick to his face, instantly killing him. It was a clean one-hit kill. He revived and said in disbelief, I can't believe this. Even with all that martial technique and combat experience, he's still just a normal human. The mirror lady explained, that's because a normal human with numerous martial techniques doesn't exist in reality. The projection uses a normal human's body to execute martial techniques. Before his body is destroyed by this power, he can still kill you. So, remain calm, find a place to hide, formulate a plan to defeat Lai Feng's projection, obtain a new martial technique, and then start the entrance exam. He realized, I have to grind while staying wary of potential ambushes in the outside world simultaneously. This is a danger I've never faced before. In his mirror space, Lai Feng was giving him a tough time. He employed the rank 3 martial technique, Lone Leak 13 Sword. Yun knew that Lai Feng was too strong for him, so he sought ways to defeat him, thinking, it's not impossible to beat him, but I need a good plan. 
Lai Feng then used the rank 3 martial technique, Strong Gold Palm Strike. Yun strategized on avoiding Lai Feng's attacks before being overwhelmed by his martial technique's power and succumbing. Next, Lai Feng employed another rank 3 martial technique, Swap Location Clone. Yun contemplated, this guy's martial techniques are way too strong. The exam has only 24 hours left. Will I even make it in time? Meanwhile, deeper in the forest, students from Starshine Academy, who were hiding, conversed among themselves. One of them remarked, we don't even need 24 hours. They're so naive to think they can enter Starshine Academy. This entrance exam isn't about allowing new students to join but finding an excuse to abolish the outer city's school. The presence of outer city people is a waste of resources. Chen watched all of this while hiding behind a tree. He was terrified at their discussion and covered his mouth to avoid making any noise. In the mirror space, Lai Feng continued to employ fierce techniques on Yun, this time using the rank 2 martial technique, Ghost Flame 18 Kick. Just then, he heard a noise from the real world. A Starshine Academy student was about to strike him with a sword, finding him dazed in the middle of the jungle. Within the mirror space, Yun finally managed to defeat Lai Feng, asserting, You can't kill me, so it's my win. Outside the mirror space, as the student was about to strike him with the sword, Yun opened his eyes. A strong aura enveloped him, and he struck the student with his new skill. He then looked at the student and said, Since you tried to kill me, I won't go easy on you. I will test my new martial technique on you. The student was shocked, wondering, how did he defeat me in just one move? Yun replied, because it's a proficient stage rank 3 martial technique called Clone Shadow Slash. He defeated the guy and turned around to leave. Now, he appeared much more confident and prepared for the entrance exam. Back at the university, the principal engaged in a conversation with officials from other schools. He straightforwardly stated, if you want to abolish the outer city's four schools, just say it directly. There's no need to sacrifice so many students. One of them retorted, don't utter such nonsense. You know how crucial the school's reputation is for the base. Another joined in. It's merely that your students are growing weaker year by year, consuming a significant amount of resources. Be this further incensed the principal, and he exclaimed, I'll leave the base if none of my students survive. In the forest, Chen and his team found themselves in trouble as a university student began harassing them. He demanded that Chen scream for help so others could hear and come to their aid. But Chen resolutely stated, I won't be bait. The student fired back, if you refuse to be bait, then I suppose I can only kill you and see if those behind you are willing to be the bait or not. So, die. Suddenly, he detected a murderous intent behind him, which startled him. He wondered if someone was approaching at high speed. Could it be the rank 2 inch tour steps? These individuals had someone who could become a martial artist. So, why did he still participate in this entrance exam? Yun observed from behind a tree and thought, Now, with my proficient stage rank 3 forging technique, god tyrant technique, rank 3 martial technique clone shadow slash, and points target sword technique, all techniques that only intermediate rank martial artists can learn, I might have a chance to win if I face only one opponent. He then executed the inch tour steps and charged at his opponent. The other guy remarked, I also know the inch tour steps. He employed his rank 2 martial technique, shattering wind fist, and advanced towards Yun, aiming to deliver a powerful blow. In response, Yun utilized his rank 1 martial technique, sword slash, striking him back and leaving a small scar on one side of the guy's cheek. The other guy scoffed, so it's just a trash coward who spent all his time learning an escape technique, never even mastering a rank 1 technique. He then called his friend, Da Jun, and suggested, let's work together to kill him. He employed a rank 2 martial technique, Shadowless Kick, on Yun. Yun thought, just because I act weak, they used a weaker Shadowless Kick to deal with me. He skillfully evaded the attack and realized, there should be one more person nearby. Shadow Clone Slash is good for sudden assaults, I need to bait the other one out. The guy called his friend and said, this kid is agile, so tire him out. Yun expertly dodged the attack when he suddenly noticed something unusual. There was a third person who had also joined the fight from the shadows. He narrowly avoided the incoming strikes. The other two were equally surprised and one of them exclaimed, Are you crazy? You almost killed us along with him. A guy emerged from the trees and proclaimed, You guys are no different than him, you're all weak and trash, and trash needs to be eliminated. The mirror lady projected him to display his battle stats. His name was Sun Zai, and he was 19 years old, a strong and talented intermediate martial artist with many powerful techniques. Yun sighed. They sent an intermediate martial artist to participate in the entrance exam. 
How can I even defeat him? The mirror lady explained. The problem is that this guy's flutter footwork technique is much stronger than your inch tour steps. You can't escape from him. Upon hearing this, Yun decided, well, since I can't escape, then I won't run away. He unleashed his rank 3 martial technique, clone shadow slash, and before they could even react, he swiftly killed the both other assailant in one hit. Sun Zai remarked, so, all this time, you were hiding your true powers. It's getting more interesting now. He launched his fist at Yun, whose thoughts raced as he realized, I can't dodge this attack at all. Desperately, Yun attempted to block the attack with his hand using tyrant aura protection but failed, getting struck and sent flying crashing into a tree. Sun Zai couldn't help but comment, you're using tyrant aura protection, but it seems you haven't reached the standard of a martial artist yet. You're quite interesting. With determination, Sun Zai prepared to strike Yun once more with his special technique. He raised one arm into the air and channeled all his energy into his hand. He employed the rank 3 martial technique, shattering earth claw, striking Yun. Yun attempted to block it with his tyrant aura protection, but it proved less effective than he'd hoped. He thought, I'll lose and die very soon if this continues. Sun Zai wasted no time and charged at Yun again. Yun narrowly dodged the attack, and Sun Zai's strike hit a tree, splitting it in two. Sun Zai then used his sword to slice the tree bark into many small logs, hurling them at Yun with great force. Yun managed to deflect all of them using his punch technique. Sun Zai boasted about his strength and insulted Yun, calling him a coward and weak. He approached Yun, remarking, Your tyrant aura protection is weakening with each attack. Yun felt the strain but was determined to hold on. This time, Sun Zai unleashed a rank 3 martial technique, the Golden Palm Strike. Yun formulated a plan in his head. As Sun Zai approached, confident that this attack would finish Yun, he was shocked when Yun blocked his hand. Yun gathered all his remaining tyrant energy into his arm, using it to grab Sun's fist. This move caught Sun Zai entirely off guard, he hadn't expected such a retaliation. Yun taunted him, saying, I was wrong, you're not that strong. Sun Zai, puzzled by this sudden turn of events, couldn't move his body. In his proficient stage clone Shadow Slash, Yun could control the attack path as he pleased. After a grueling battle, Yun finally managed to defeat Sun Zai, emerging victorious from this tough encounter. He then heard someone call his name. It was Chen and his group who had watched the battle. Chen exclaimed, Amazing! You defeated that bastard alone. He seems to be an intermediate rank martial artist. Yun replied, there was no choice. This isn't a test anymore, it's a life or death situation where the others are trying to kill you. He then made up his mind to eliminate anyone who dared to stand in his way. At Starshine Academy, the officials sat and waited for the exam to conclude. One of them asked, why hasn't it ended yet? The other explained, because all those who were sent are the weakest among all the students, and even if there is any accident, Sun Zai is present there just in case. Suddenly, they heard a scream for help. It was from one of those who had been beaten by Yun. The teachers thought it must be someone from an outer city school who managed to escape the forest, a lucky kid. However, they were shocked to see that it was one of their own students. They asked, who beat you in this state? Did you get attacked by many after being surrounded by them? The trembling student replied, it was only one person. Thinking it might be Highland Academy's principal, they got angry and questioned, why is he breaking the rules? Why isn't teacher Lai Feng stopping him? The student, still trembling in fear, clarified, No, it's not the principal, it's a devil. He killed everyone by himself. This revelation shocked the teachers even more, and one of them asked, What do you mean, devil? What happened in the forest? As he was about to explain, someone attacked him with a technique right in front of the teacher, causing him to faint and fall to the ground. To their astonishment, they saw a group of students emerging from the forest. It was Feng Yun and his classmates. He calmly stated, It seems like the four school entrance exam is over now. The teacher became furious and said, Do you know what you just did? You dare to kill Starshine Academy's students in front of us. Yun responded calmly, I don't think there is any rule in the entrance exam that states we can't kill people. Also, they tried to kill us first, we had to defend ourselves. One teacher, seething with anger, declared, You are challenging Starshine Academy's dignity, you must be punished. That's when the principal of Highland Academy and teacher Lai Feng arrived. Lai Feng dismounted from his ferocious beast eagle and landed next to the injured student. He checked the student's breathing and remarked, Send this student back to the academy for treatment, he might be able to survive. One teacher exclaimed, Teacher Lai, you came just in time. This kid dared to harm one of our academy's members right in front of us. Lai Feng looked back at Yun and asked him if he had done this. The principal intervened, stating, This should be impartial. I don't think you will punish him just because a student is serious about the exam. 
Lai Feng responded, All the four schools' entrance exams have injuries, and the academy does not need cowards because trash who are scared of death will get expelled sooner or later. All members who didn't die in this entrance exam will be accepted. This matter will end here. One of the teachers tried to protest against this decision. But Lai Feng reiterated, The entrance exam ends here. All those from the four schools who reached here have passed. They will be enrolled in Starshine Academy. He declared it as his final decision and left. Every student accepted to the academy received their own house with a courtyard. Yun also got his, a state-of-the-art house with alloy doors. He was overjoyed to see his luxurious new home, thinking that one house here should be more expensive than the welfare house. Suddenly, he heard a noise coming from inside, indicating he had received new mail. He went inside to check and found a neat-looking room with a computer, which surprised him as he wasn't expecting it. With excitement in his eyes, he said, This thing uses an array drive, so it would be called an array computer. Then he corrected himself, saying, No, it's a meta computer. All the data inside contained important information about the school's introduction. The information he found about the school indicated that it's different from traditional schools. Starshine Academy doesn't split classes, all students need to cultivate on their own, and all lessons require money. Higher rank martial techniques and skills cost much more, and the currency used in this place is called school points. School points can be obtained by completing missions, participating in the arena, breaking records, and more. Yun thought, I have endless projection, so I don't need to purchase any martial techniques or skills. The only thing that attracts my attention is the Academy's center, which is called the Saint Tower. It has a gathering spiritual energy array, so the cultivation speed in there is much faster than outside. The tower has nine floors, and the higher you go, the higher the density of spiritual energy. Of course, it also requires more school points. I defeated 40 students in the entrance exam, so I have obtained 400 school points. I can only stay on the first floor for four hours. The second floor requires 500 school points for an hour. The third floor requires 1,000 school points for an hour. And the ninth floor needs 30,000 school points for an hour. He looked discouraged because of the high numbers and said, If only I could build my own gathering spiritual energy array. In this world, there are four great professions, natural born earth and fire element alchemists, martial artists, natural born flame and gold element crafters, and the array masters who possess rare natural born spirit soul talent. He thought, If only I could project an array master of the academy, there is also a chance of me obtaining spirit soul talent. But then he remembered he had some more important things to do. He got up and left the house. Outside in the courtyard, he started his training. He thought, during the exam, I discovered that the endless fights made me use my spiritual energy continuously. Thus, I kept absorbing spiritual energy with my attribute talents. So the current me is about to become a martial artist soon. At the school, many students are buzzing about Feng Yun and the entrance exam where he single-handedly defeated 40 academy members. Although they were all considered weak, he managed to overcome them on his own. Additionally, the students from the outer city school have limited combat abilities, with only one person, Feng Yun, being exceptionally strong. He even defeated the formidable Sun Zai. One student refused to acknowledge Sun Zai's strength, branding him as trash and claiming that our academy houses numerous novice rank martial artists who are stronger than him. Another person remarked, It's unforgivable that the outer city's trash has occupied 40 of our slots due to one person. A group of three students resolved to find Feng Yun, challenge him, and teach him a lesson in the hope that he would willingly drop out, along with his group, freeing up 40 slots for inner city students. However, Feng Yun hadn't left his house in half a month, dedicating himself to continuous training and cultivation. One day, while cultivating as usual, he caused quite a commotion. Fellow students wondered who was cultivating with such a powerful aura that they could feel it from a distance. Could it be an advanced rank martial artist in the making? After six months of relentless effort, Yun achieved the status of a martial artist at the tender age of 15. Inside his mirror space, he scrutinized his battle statistics and exclaimed with enthusiasm, With my cultivation speed at this age, I can not only surpass my fellow academy peers, but also many others. I can clearly sense the spiritual energy, and now I can cultivate admirality, a skill acquired from a Lion King, which enhances offensive power. The Mirror Lady cautioned, Admirality is only a rank 1 skill, so I don't recommend focusing on it. Instead, you should diversify by improving other attributes and skills. You possess talents in gold, wind, and water, so it's advisable to cultivate all three attributes simultaneously. Determined to further boost his strength, he decided to take a break and seek guidance from experts to make the most of his cultivation time. 
he decided to project some experts, and with this idea in mind, he went to the academy to acquire more attribute talents and attribute skills. However, after just one day, he returned disappointed, venting his anger in front of Mira Lady. He said, I walked around for half a day, and besides a few with the same attribute as me, there aren't any other martial artists. There isn't even a martial artist with a higher ranked attribute skill. They are all nothing but a bunch of trash. Mirror Lady replied, The school is so big, you must have missed places where you can find higher ranked martial artists. He nodded and said, Yes, you are right. A real genius would go to the center area's academy lobby, challenge records, and take on missions. He then decided to visit the Starshine Academy's center area, University Hall, and Saint Tower. He marveled at the buildings, which reminded him of treasures from his past life's fantasy novels. Entering a tower with many other students, he encountered a guy named Yang Ming, whose power number ranking was 70. Yang Ming had just returned to the academy after completing a mission. Yun seized the opportunity and projected him into his mirror space. Yang Ming, 19 years old, possessed a rank 3 gold attribute skill. It appeared that he was an exceptionally strong student with intermediate gold attribute talent. Yun was super excited because finally, he could train with a strong projection. Unconsciously, he drooled while staring at Yang Ming, overwhelmed by his excitement, which made him look somewhat awkward. He realized that while grinding Yang Ming's projection, he should also search for other strong geniuses to project, instead of just sitting in one place and wasting time. As he fought Yang Ming's projection in his mirror space, he continued searching outside the mirror space. After a considerable amount of time, he couldn't find any very strong geniuses. He concluded that they must be on missions or perhaps inside the Saint Tower. In his mirror space, he defeated Yang Ming's projection. He thought that challenging an intermediate martial artist was much easier than the entrance exam. Mirror Lady congratulated him, saying, You managed to grind an intermediate rank gold attribute talent on your first hunt and it's stacked with your low-grade gold attribute talent. So, your gold attribute energy's affinity and energy are much higher than Yang Ming's. Yun got super excited and exclaimed, Now I have the rank 3 gold attribute skill, Gold Shine Technique. She asked him if he wanted to grind skills, then why not take on some missions? He replied, No, I have a better way to learn, and that's fortune. He then went to the place where there was a challenge record of all the people who had taken missions and completed them to take a look. One month later, as usual, he was cultivating at his house. He was fighting a projection when he acquired the rank 3 gold attribute skill, Gold Shine Technique, which cost 1.5 million. There were various levels to the cultivation of Gold Shine Technique. Beginner generates gold attribute energy at the abdomen, forming a gold attribute energy seed. Novice, gold attribute energy seed continuously generates and forms. Gold attribute energy flows through the whole body. Intermediate, gold attribute energy seed is like a small sun running, providing sufficient gold attribute energy. Mirror Lady explained in simple words, an attribute skill is about gathering scattered energy in the middle and then extracting it. Yang Ming only managed to cultivate this technique to the novice stage. Attribute skill is similar to forging skill, it can be directly obtained while grinding. But to cultivate it to the intermediate stage, you must work hard yourself. This prompted Yun to move forward, thinking it was finally time to challenge records and earn points. He went to the academy to test his attack power and strength, entering a specially designed place for this purpose. Inside the room, there was an attack power level test column where one could test their attack power through the energy stones. Yun observed the stones, trying to decipher the meaning behind their color. One energy stone illuminated meant having the attack power of a novice martial artist. Two energy stones meant having the attack power of an intermediate martial artist. And so on. Lost in thought, he was interrupted by a group of students who called his name. He could sense that they had ill intentions. One of them said, After hiding for one and a half months, we finally found you. Did you think that by hiding, we would forget about you? Don't assume that just because you can defeat the weakest 40 people, you deserve to be in Starshine Academy. Today, I will break your limbs and teach you a lesson to make you remember your place. You still have time to leave the academy quietly if you want to live. Yun completely ignored them, not even looking their way. He was still focused on the energy stones. They wrongly presumed that he was gearing up for a confrontation and hurled insults his way. Yet, Yun remained utterly engrossed in monitoring the energy stone, assessing his power. When the stone shifted its hue to a light shade of blue, their expressions transformed, resembling individuals whose souls had momentarily departed. The stone revealed that his power matched that of an advanced martial artist. With a fierce look in his eyes, Yun turned towards them and inquired if they were prepared for the impending battle. 
their faces blanched in fear, their expressions resembling those who had seen a ghost. In a desperate attempt to divert the conversation, they started babbling nonsense, hoping to exit the situation unscathed, as the prospect of fighting him now terrified them. Yun couldn't help but think of this group as a bunch of fools. In his mirror space, Mirror Lady raised him and assured him they would never dare to challenge you again. He used baseband to deliver an attack equivalent to that of an advanced martial artist. However, Yun remained unimpressed by his attack power, expecting it to be higher in order to break the academy's record. He realized that to enhance his combat abilities, he needed intense battles, so he decided to take on some missions. He headed to the tower to check for available missions and found one involving the search for a hundred spirit grass with a reward of just 200 points. The mission's rank was gray. Missions were categorized into various ranks, such as gray, black, red, and so on, based on their difficulty levels. For instance, white rank missions were for novices, while gray was for intermediate martial artists. As the mission difficulty increased, so did the required martial artist's strength. He thought, white rank missions are a complete waste of time, so I should start with gray missions to train myself. In the gray mission area, other students began to discuss him, wondering why he, who appeared so young, had come to the Grey Mission area. Yun found a suitable mission to assist the law enforcement team in capturing a member of the Blood Thorn Union. Seeing the substantial reward of 200 points, he promptly accepted the mission, leaving others even more puzzled about his identity, as they hadn't expected him to take on a Grey Mission. One of them even considered approaching him to warn him about the dangers of the Blood Thorn Union. Mirror Lady cautioned, The Bloodthorn Union is an assassin organization. If you become their target, you'll be in trouble. Yun replied, Those assassins might have items that I can use, and I can stay behind the law enforcement team to avoid being targeted by them later. At the Starshine Base Law Enforcement Headquarters, a group of four law enforcement officers were gathered for a meeting. They had just learned that someone had finally taken on the mission involving the Bloodthorn Union. Leading this team was Zhang Tao, a 38-year-old man and an intermediate martial artist. They were examining the information report on Feng Yun. Zhu Wai, a 28-year-old team member, wondered aloud why a novice martial artist would undertake such a perilous mission. Another member, Sun Xiaomei, a 24-year-old woman, praised Yun for achieving the status of a martial artist at just 15 years old. The final member, Wu Hua Lun, aged 27, expressed the thought that Yun must have devoted all his time to cultivation and may not have much real combat experience. The team leader acknowledged, he's our junior, so we should look out for him during the mission. Just then, Yun entered the room and inquired if they were the ones who had posted the Bloodthorn Union's mission. The team leader stood up, welcomed him warmly with a broad smile on his face and introduced himself as the leader of the law enforcement team. He then introduced the other three members of the team and all of them greeted Yun warmly. In the mirror space, Yun and Mirror Lady were evaluating all the team members and discovered that Xiaomei was a wood attribute martial artist, and she was also an intermediate one. It was a perfect combination as she possessed a rank 3 martial technique. Mirror Lady informed him that wood attribute had extraordinary healing abilities, even surpassing those of the water attribute talent. Yun got excited at the thought of combining the wood attribute with his fire, and potentially becoming an alchemist. However, he became frustrated, wondering why she had to be a girl, as he didn't want to harm a female in battle. Mirror Lady responded, Sooner or later, you may have a female enemy. What will you do then? Yun conceded, In a life and death situation, it's a different story. I won't go easy on them. She added, Well, her projection won't go easy on you either. As they discussed this within the mirror space, Yun found himself constantly staring at Xiaomei, leading to a humorous situation where others asked him if he had never seen a beautiful girl before. The team leader stepped forward and advised him, Since it's your first mission, just supporting us will suffice. Wu Hua felt irritated by this and thought, We didn't ask for a helper, now we still need to take care of him. Zhu Wai reminded him, When you took your first mission, you also made mistakes. Wu Hua defended himself, saying, I didn't act arrogantly and chose a gray mission for my first one. The leader intervened, telling them to stop arguing and explaining that the target was located beneath a restaurant in the inner city. Since there were too many people during the day, they would have to go at night. He informed them that they would depart in two hours, so they needed to be ready. At night, they all prepared, donning their protective armors and taking up their weapons before heading out for the mission. They discovered a hidden entrance and entered the location with discretion. As the team advanced through the area, they positioned Yun at the entrance to ensure that no one attempted to escape, a choice that made him question his life decisions. He had come there for a chance to fight, but now he was relegated to the role of an observer. 
However, he consoled himself with the thought that he could enter later and project the corpses. Inside, the team noticed that there were only four people within the premises, engaged in drinking. They decided to launch an immediate attack. Wu Hua took the lead, utilizing his martial technique, but all four adversaries skillfully evaded his assault. It became evident to the team that they had walked right into a trap. The enemy had been waiting for the law enforcement team to arrive and eliminate them. Outside the location, Yun contemplated the team's approach to infiltrating the place. Suddenly, an assailant launched a surprise knife attack from behind, targeting Wu Hua. He deftly evaded the assault, using his weapon to parry the attack. Meanwhile, two more attackers closed in on Zhu Wei, attempting to overwhelm him. One of them charged forward, emanating a murderous intent, and taunted, you're just asking for death. In response, Zhu Wei retaliated with a powerful fist strike. The leader in Zio may also join the fray, but then two more assailants emerged from the shadows, launching an attack. The leader employed his martial technique, delivering forceful blows with his hammer. To their astonishment, the enemies suddenly vanished into thin air. Puzzled and alarmed, they wondered where all the enemies had disappeared to. Then, the leader had a realization, there was an error in the information they had received. He urgently shouted a warning to Zhu Wai, but before he could react, an attacker struck him from behind with a sword, causing an injury. The leader explained, initially, we were informed that only one of them possessed dark talent, but that was incorrect. It turns out that all of them have dark talent. Wu Hu expressed disbelief, remarking, it's extremely rare for someone to possess dark talent. How can all five of them have it? Zio Mei voiced her doubts, questioning how they managed to assassinate the higher-ups by deceiving them into thinking that only a few of the attackers possessed dark talent. Wu Hua suggested a retreat for now, as they couldn't defeat the assailants without talent techniques. The leader expressed concern that it might already be too late for them, as they were like trapped prey in a cage. He feared that Feng Yun might have already been killed. Outside, Feng Yun was engaged in combat with the assassins. He inquired, how many comrades are inside the place? One of the assassins laughed and replied, there are four more and all of them possess dark talent. Your team may already be dead. Feng Yun swiftly dispatched the man with his sword. Mirror Lady admonished him, saying, I told you not to save them. Now your secret will be revealed, and even the principal won't be able to save you. He retorted, even though we've known each other for only a few hours, I can't just stand by and watch them die. But if someone dares to harm me after I help them, then I won't spare anyone. Watching his actions, Mirror Lady began to doubt if she had chosen the right master. Xiao Mei informed the leader that their devices were no longer functioning, and hers was concealed away. She pointed out that morning was approaching, so headquarters would likely send more reinforcements. The leader responded, Even in the daytime, people with dark talent can easily hide. If a powerful martial artist doesn't come to our aid, we'll all be doomed. Wu Hua, feeling anxious, expressed his concern that no strong martial artist would come to fight a few assassins, and they were in dire straits. Xiao Mei tried to provide encouragement, telling Wu Hua not to speak pessimistic words. She believed that they just had to hold on and might find some openings. Suddenly, an assailant attempted a sneak attack on Xiao Mei, causing worry among the group. However, the attack was halted mid-air as Feng Yun arrived on the scene and struck the assailant from behind, defeating him. Feng Yun then proceeded to engage the remaining assailants and swiftly killed four of them, leaving only one remaining. Observing this from a distance, the leader pondered how could he spot those assassins while they concealed themselves with dark talent. After all, he was just a novice-ranked martial artist. The secret to his ability to track the assassins lay in his mirror space. He could see them in the mirror even when they were hidden from view. Mirror Lady questioned him, asking when he would stop pretending to be weak and finish off the last assassin. He decided to use a rank 1 martial technique and swiftly defeated the final assailant. Then, he acted as if he were exhausted, making it seem like the battle had been a real struggle. The rest of the team rushed toward him, curious about how he had managed such a feat. He offered a somewhat absurd excuse, saying, My sense of smell is sharper, and these scoundrels had a strong odor. Wu Hu looked puzzled by this explanation, and Xiao Mei inquired, But they're assassins, why would they have a scent? The leader intervened, declaring the mission a success, and announced that they needed to return to headquarters. Zhu Wei required a blood transfusion due to his injury and significant blood loss. The next day, as they were having lunch, Zhu Wei joined them. The leader inquired about his well-being. And Zhu Wai responded, I've never been hit in such a critical area before. Luckily, Zio Mei treated my wounds, and that saved me. After receiving a blood transfusion and eating healthily, I'll be able to participate in missions again very soon. The leader commended Feng Yun and credited him with saving them all, expressing gratitude. 
Yun attempted to downplay his strength, stating, If someone had been able to fight effectively against them without using dark talent, you guys would have defeated them all. Zio Mei voiced her concerns about how the attackers seemed to know they were coming, suggesting that someone might have informed them in advance. The leader then turned to Yun and informed him that he had already submitted his test results to the school's mission system. He could return to school after finishing his meal. Yun decided to leave the place immediately, as he no longer wished to involve himself in their affairs. He went directly to his dormitory. Inside, he examined the bowel stats of the assassins he had projected during the mission. He displayed a hint of disappointment upon discovering that they possessed only novice rank dark talent. Mirror Lady advised, Don't be greedy, dark talent is exceptionally rare. If you were to obtain all the novice rank talents from the four assassins and stack them up, it would be nearly equivalent to intermediate rank talent. This excited him, and he exclaimed, Wouldn't that make me incredibly strong? She responded, Unless your opponent also has a mirror's function, such concealed talents, while they can harm peak martial artists, can also lead to their own demise in the next moment. With newfound determination, he prepared himself for battle. Half a month later, he had finally succeeded in cultivating the dark talent. He sensed that it was different from the sharpness of gold, the softness of water, or the quickness of wind. This energy bestowed upon him a sense of tranquility, even though he had yet to master the dark attribute cultivation technique. It allowed him to experience a faint connection with the surrounding environment. He contemplated, when I claimed to locate them by their scent, I doubt anyone believed it. While immersed in these thoughts, his body became enveloped in an energy aura. Deciding to head to the Saint Yuan Tower, he found that his status board displayed 24 O points, sufficient for entry. The gate to the tower automatically opened for him. Inside, he encountered a massive machine at the center of the tower generating energy distributed throughout its various sections. Upon entering a cultivation room, he identified a suitable spot and seated himself to begin his practice. He noted that, compared to the outside, the heaven and earth energy within the tower was significantly denser. In the adjacent room, another individual was cultivating, but they felt a notable drop in energy levels due to Yun's intensive cultivation. After just an hour, Yun could already sense the significant impact on his skills. His combat abilities had greatly improved, and he felt amazing. Determined to become even stronger at a faster pace, he decided to ascend to the tower's third floor. He got up and made his way to the third floor of the Saint Yuan Tower. He was aware that he could cultivate for only two hours, and dedicating one hour on the third floor required 1,000 points. Upon reaching the gate of the third floor, he used his card to scan the door, but suddenly, a voice from behind interrupted him. A young boy addressed him, saying, Kid, don't you know the rules? Rooms on the higher floors of the Saint Yuan Tower need to be reserved. The higher you go, the fewer available rooms there are. Do you know how long one must wait in line if you don't reserve? Curious, Yun inquired, How do I reserve a room? The boy responded, You can reserve it through me. Without hesitation, Yun delivered a powerful punch to the boy's chest and asked, how many points are required to reserve a room one time? Clearly shaken by the punch, the boy stammered, 1,000 points are needed. Yun then took his card, thanking him for the 1,000 points, saying, now I can cultivate for three hours. The boy appeared shocked and terrified, pleading with him to spare him. Two more individuals arrived there, twin brothers who had witnessed the interaction between Yun and the boy. They declared, we've heard rumors that people have been collecting protection fees in the Saint Yuan Tower for a while. And today, we've finally caught you. Yun ignored their demands and proceeded to enter the room. Although they tried to stop him, he paid them no attention. One of them began kicking the door, urging him to come out, while the other brother commented, Why is my brother so dumb? Inside his mirror space, Mirror Lady projected both of them. They were both 22 years old and advanced martial artists. Yun recalled that he had seen these two individuals' names on Starshine Academy's power ranking. They held the 18th and 19th positions, and their title was Twin Star Sword. Mira Lady explained, Intermediate sword talent can't directly aid your cultivation, but it can enhance your combat abilities. Yun mused, I almost forgot that this world has special talents. If I can learn sword will, normal attacks will also be different. He decided to cultivate while simultaneously sparring in the mirror space to make the most of his time. The projection of the twin brothers was quite formidable. Yun observed, these two brothers are so familiar with each other that they are fighting me together and I can't take them on one by one. He drew two swords, one in each hand, and resolved to engage in a dual sword fight to confront them both simultaneously. The battle intensified, and the fight continued for several hours. After a full three hours of intense training and cultivation, Yun finally opened his eyes, 
sensing a newfound energy coursing through his body. In the adjacent room, the swords of the onlookers trembled as if they were about to be launched into the air, but none of them had any idea what was transpiring. Outside the cultivation room, the twin brothers speculated about whether someone had learned the sword will technique while cultivating in the St. Ewan Tower. They were astonished, as they had never seen or heard of anything like this before. Inside the room, Yun reflected, Even though I only possess intermediate sword talent and a rank 2 martial technique, the rock hand, when I grasp the sword now, it feels entirely different. It's as if the sword has become an extension of my body. He seated himself to analyze and compare the skills he had acquired, finding that techniques like the point star sword technique and slash now felt much more potent. His status board indicated that he had exhausted all his points, signaling the end of his cultivation session. He thought, three hours have passed so quickly, I could only scratch the surface of the benefits these rooms offer in such a short time. Next, he went to the student mission board to find opportunities to earn more school points. That's when Chen and his group arrived. They expressed their gratitude to Yun because they had passed their exams thanks to him. They acknowledged that without his presence, they might have failed and been expelled from the academy. Yun felt flustered and embarrassed as he was praised in front of everyone. One of the girls asked if he wouldn't mind if they joined him on a mission. They explained that they were earning points at a slow rate and needed to speed up their progress. Although Yun initially thought that bringing others on a mission might slow him down, he considered it a good idea and agreed. He instructed them to follow him, and when they asked where they were going, he cryptically replied, We're going to earn a substantial reward. They headed to the attack power test room, where they noticed the previous record held by a person named Jang King who had achieved an impressive attack power of 20,023 at the age of 20. Chen remarked that Jiang King must have been an exceptionally talented genius to set such a high record. Yun agreed, saying, Of course, breaking this record comes with great difficulty, especially considering I'm only 15 years old. He understood that achieving this record would be tougher than most due to the extraordinary challenge it posed. Outside the attack power test room, students noticed something unusual. One of them wondered if the record looked different and asked his friend, Do you remember this record? His friend replied, Isn't that the one that hasn't been broken in the last 10 years? Suddenly, they realized that the previous record had been shattered by a 15-year-old boy, but they had no knowledge of his identity. The new record holder's name was Bai Tian Chen, and he had reached an astonishing 20,033 attack power at the age of 15. One student asked the other if they knew who this person was, but his friend could only nod. Inside the room, there was a secret plan unfolding. Chen and the other two students stared in shock at the screen displaying the attack power results. Yun asked Chen to check his card to see if he had received 100,000 points. Chen did so and was overjoyed to find a substantial balance in his account, making him feel rich. Next, Yun turned to Yang Tian and requested his identity card. Yang Tian handed it over, and Yun inserted the card into the machine, projecting his power onto the checker. He struggled to control his attack, resulting in an attack power higher than he had intended. Outside the room, students were bewildered as the record changed once again, with the new record holder's name now Yang Tian. However, none of them knew who Yang Tian was. Unaware of the commotion he was causing outside, Yun proceeded to take the girl's card next. She thanked him and handed over her card. This time, Yun successfully achieved the desired result with precise control over his attack power. With a satisfied look on his face, he commented, This time, the power was well controlled. Outside the room, panic ensued as the record holder's name changed for the third time. This time, it was a girl named Mao Yun Zhu. Students gathered outside the room, wondering about the strong geniuses inside and their capabilities. Teachers heard of the commotion and arrived at the scene. Teacher Lai Feng inquired about the individuals who broke the record, and all the students pointed towards the door, indicating that they were inside the room. Suddenly, the door swung open, and all three of them emerged. Everyone looked at them with awe and curiosity. Teacher Lai Feng called their names to confirm their identities and asked if they were the ones who had broken the record. Hesitating, they finally admitted to it. While this conversation was taking place, Yun managed to discreetly exit the room unnoticed. He used his dark talent, stealth, and was amazed at its effectiveness. He thought to himself that each of those three had given him 50,000 points, leaving them with 50,000 to ensure their silence. He had earned a total of 150,000 points, yet he could remain low-key, making it all worth it. They met again on the fifth floor of the St. Ewan Tower, and all three of them looked genuinely happy to see Yun again. Chen expressed his excitement about reaching the fifth floor and was amazed that this floor cost a thousand points for only one hour. The boy acknowledged that without Brother Yun, 
They might not have earned as many points even if they risked their lives and worked hard for an entire year. The girl questioned Yun, asking if it was really okay for him to give them so many points for free. With a smile, Yun replied that it could help them become stronger and that would also benefit him. He added that if they became stronger, it would be easier for them to undertake missions. Chen chimed in, saying, Brother Yun, don't worry. Cultivate for five hours, and we're confident you'll soon become a martial artist. The girl agreed, emphasizing that becoming a martial artist would make missions easier. They all happily bumped their fists together, encouraging each other to grow stronger. After continuously cultivating for nine hours, Yun finally made a breakthrough to become an intermediate martial artist. He learned a rank 2 dark type skill called the Dark Shadow Technique. He noted that the absorption of dark Yuan energy had become much faster and expressed his determination to find techniques for water and wind attributes that would accelerate his absorption of those elements. Yun believed that as his speed of forming Yuan energy increased, he would become stronger and eventually break through his limits to harmonize with the world's natural environment. When that time came, he aspired to soar through the skies on a sword. He checked his remaining points and found that he only had 60,300 points left. Yun decided to save these points for when he acquired new attribute skills. Just as he was thinking about this, Chen called his name, reminding Yun of his friends. He thought, I almost forgot about these guys. I've only cultivated for five hours, they came out so quickly. Yun asked, where is Yang Tian and Mao Yun? Chen explained that they had lessons to attend, so they left earlier. Yun realized he had forgotten to attend any lessons at the academy and was feeling a bit arrogant because he had been so focused on earning points. Chen scolded him, saying that lessons were essential for martial techniques and cultivation. An idea struck Yun, realizing he could attend classes and then project the teacher to grind attribute skills. He wondered how he had forgotten such a great opportunity. Chen agreed to help Yun pick his lessons, and they went to the dormitory to use the computer. Chen recommended teacher Ma Ming Jai's class, which explained rank 3 and below footwork martial techniques and cost only 100 points per lesson. He also mentioned another class with a teacher who explained rank 3 and below attack martial techniques superbly and had a great sense of humor. Yun told Chen to be quiet and continued picking his lessons. After some time, Yun had selected 10 teachers, but Chen warned him that cultivating so many techniques simultaneously wasn't a good idea. Yun had also scheduled all 10 lessons at the same time, making it impossible to attend them all. Ignoring Chen's advice, Yun decided to project the teachers during the class to grind attribute skills without wasting time on the lessons. Outside the school building, Yun told Chen to wait for him and that he would be back soon. He entered the classroom, where many students were already seated. Mao Zun, surprised to see Yun there, was excited about attending the same class with him. However, Yun soon stood up and left the class, angering the teacher. Inside his mirror space, Yun saw that the teacher was a 37-year-old man named Wang Guitian with weak martial techniques. Disappointed, Yun remarked, I'm too lazy to even grind this. He headed to room 407 next. After 15 minutes of visiting many classes, he thought, I projected 9 teachers, and not even one of them is an attribute artist. The quality of teachers in this school is disappointing. Only one class was left, which was in room 519. He decided that if he couldn't find what he wanted in this class, he would return to grind Sun Zio's wood attribute talent and Otoki technique. Upon entering room 519, he was greeted by a female teacher named Zai Ruoran. Her beauty left all the students mesmerized, and she was pleased to see them charmed by her instantly. However, she wasn't just a pretty face, she had hidden potential. Yun stood up to leave the class, disappointing the teacher. In his mirror space, Yun saw her potential, as she had intermediate water attribute talent and a rank 3 water attribute martial technique. Thrilled to discover her powers and the chance to get a good drop, he decided to grind. Mira Lady explained, Wood and water both have recovery abilities. If you obtain both of these attributes in the future, even if you are injured or your essence energy is overly exhausted, you can recover quickly, really quickly. Leaving the building, he thought about doing some missions while grinding, as this was the right way to use projection. Chen was waiting for him outside the building and waved as Yun approached. Excitedly, Chen told him that he had just seen Lin Kian, who had passed the martial artist exam and entered Starshine Academy earlier than they did. Yun remembered Lin Kiang as the first person he had projected in his mirror space. Chen cautioned Yun, saying that Lin Kiang might come and ask for his help but advised against agreeing, no matter what. Yun asked for the reason, and Chen revealed that Lin Kiang knew that inner city students wanted to harm Yun. Just then, Lin Kiang arrived and asked Yun for help. 
He mentioned a mission on the mission board to eliminate all Storm team members, a black rank mission with a grey rank difficulty, offering 50,000 points. Lin hoped that Yun, being so strong, wouldn't refuse to help him with this mission. Yun agreed, saying, of course, I will help you. In his mirror space, he fought the projection of the female teacher. After some time, he managed to defeat Zai Ruo's projection and obtained a rank 3 martial technique called Petal Pong. Mirror Lady teased him, saying, You always seem to struggle when you fight against women. In the end, it took you five fights to beat her. She then informed him that the next projection would be Sun Zai Omei's. Yun asked if she could wear a headgear, which irritated Mirror Lady. She responded, Do you think they would have a headgear with them? Do you think that all the girls you will face in the future will have their headgear on? Attempting to escalate the tension, Yun said, It's time for me to go to Lin's house. I need to focus and see what they are trying to scheme against me. Yun and Chen arrived at Lin's house, where Chen tried to warn him one last time about the dangers of dealing with the Storm Platoon. However, Yun dismissed his concerns, stating that if Chen was scared, he didn't need to follow him and could go back. Lin Kang welcomed them at the gate and praised them for being on time. Chen noticed the extravagant house and wondered if Lin's family was just a middle-class family in the inner city. Lin explained that his uncle and some guests were discussing how to deal with the Storm Platoon, and they had arrived just in time. Yun inquired about the reason for targeting the Storm Platoon. Lin revealed that one of his cousin's merchant groups was killed by the Storm Platoon while on their way to the Zaiyang base. The group was brutally murdered, and the Storm Platoon left their mark as a provocation. Lin emphasized that if they did nothing, the Lin family's future business prospects would be in jeopardy. They reached the door of a room and knocked. Inside, a group of people was having a meeting. Lin Kang introduced Yun and Chen as the students who had taken the mission. He introduced his uncle, the patriarch of the Lin family, Lin Nantian, and the other guests. One man expressed his displeasure at students from the academy showing up at their meeting. Lin's uncle explained that he had posted the mission as a black level mission, hoping that teachers or students on the leaderboard would handle it. When questioned about why Lin Kang had taken the mission as a middle rank martial artist, Lin defended Yun, stating that he had surprised everyone at the entrance examination and had helped the law enforcement squad eliminate assassins from the Bloodthorn Alliance. The man challenged Yun to a test of strength in the martial arena. Yun agreed, and they both entered the arena. Yun initially played defensively, and the man taunted him. However, when Yun revealed his true power, the man realized he was badly injured. Impressed, he asked about the slash attack Yun had used. Chen praised Yun's strength, and Lin Kang was also surprised. After some time, they all sat around the dining table with a variety of delicious dishes. Lin's uncle apologized for their earlier behavior and invited Yun to enjoy the common dinner. Yun was astonished to see so many expensive dishes, which they considered common. He hoped that the reward for the mission would be money so he could bring his welfare house to the inner city and provide such dishes every day. While eating, Yun continued to grind in his mirror space to avoid wasting any time. During the meal, the man asked Lin's uncle why the Storm Platoon had targeted the Lin family this time and left clear marks. The man mentioned that they were hunters from the Zai Yong base. Lin's uncle emphasized the need to strike back, whether it was a trap or someone using them, as doing nothing would harm the family's future business prospects. While eating, Yun reflected on the hypocrisy of humans and the conflict between Xing Yao and Zai Yong territories. He thought about the vast resources spent to clear a route between the two bases, not only for business but but also for resource conflicts. Looking at Lin Kang, Yun realized that Lin was using a complex scheme to deal with him. He acknowledged the risk but wanted to gain strength from it, emphasizing his desire to become stronger than everyone else. Inside his mirror space, he defeated the projection of Zai Ruo Ran and acquired a rank 3 martial technique called Blue Butterfly Steps. He knew that the scheme was still distant from him, but he was determined to become powerful enough to protect himself. After dinner, they all decided to head to the trading route where the Lai family's group of merchants was killed. Yun felt somewhat relieved, knowing that last night he had acquired another middle rank sword attack through grinding, which might help him in the upcoming fight. He also hoped that no one would notice he was using dark talent to hide his aura. Chen, on the other hand, had different thoughts. He was concerned that this area was known for having level 6 beasts roaming around, and as a beginner rank, he felt he might have made a big mistake by joining this dangerous mission. He thought, I'm just a big idiot to join this dangerous mission. Suddenly, they heard a noise coming from a distance, which startled Chen, causing him to grab Yun's arm. Yun reassured him, saying that the sound was coming from many kilometers away, and that he couldn't fight properly with Chen holding onto him like that. 
While the two of them bickered, Uncle informed them that they were now heading deeper into the forest, where the storm platoon was rumored to be nearby. He cautioned that there might be traps along the way, so they had to be careful. Yun thanked him for the information. One man suggested causing some commotion to lure out the enemy, but Uncle disagreed, saying they wouldn't fall for such a tactic. The reason they were there was to engage the enemy directly and show those who had been hiding how strong the Lin family was. Therefore, there was no need to bait them out. Master Kai took the lead to clear the way for everyone. As he moved ahead, he discovered a mouse trap and used his sword to break it into tiny pieces. He said, Do you think a broken mouse trap like this can stop me? Uncle encouraged everyone to go and help Master Kai as he was doing all the work alone. Everyone agreed and got ready for battle, taking their positions. Yun gathered his energy and struck a tree, breaking it into tiny logs. Various traps were coming from different sides, and they all tried to dodge them. Suddenly, Chen noticed the absence of Lin Kang and said to Yun that he seemed to have gone missing. Yun told him to stop worrying about him and focus on the fight. Dodging the traps, Uncle urged everyone to keep going, saying that the exit was just ahead of them. Leading the group from the front, Master Kai shouted at the hidden enemies, calling them out and challenging them to fight him. Suddenly, they found a building deep in the forest, which confused everyone. Yun thought, that's weird. Why is there a stronghold built in such a location? Can a normal hunting platoon really achieve something like that? Uncle advised them not to let their guard down, mentioning that in the past, many smaller forces had tried to send out troops to get rid of the storm platoon. Many had reached this point, but none were able to successfully take over their stronghold. Master Kai remained focused on the fight and said that those smaller forces were nothing more than mobs, and today was the day when the storm platoon would be eradicated. Suddenly, a centipede beast emerged from the earth, startling them all. Master Kai attempted to dodge the attack but eventually got caught in its grip. Uncle realized they didn't have enough time to save everyone when suddenly Yun took the lead and attacked the centipede beast. Uncle was shocked to see that he was using a tier 3 martial technique called Blue Butterfly Steps. Yun swiftly killed the beast without much effort, leaving everyone astonished by his use of such a high-level technique. Uncle couldn't help but wonder that was indeed the Blue Butterfly Steps, but it was done through the element of the wind. Isn't the Blue Butterfly Steps supposed to be a move that only water attribute users can perform? And that strike just now is definitely a sword attack of the Dao talent, a middle-ranked one at least. Then why was there an aura of the metal attribute from him? Everyone was unsure and puzzled about Yun's true martial artist attribute. Master Kai managed to untangle himself from the beast's grip. He didn't even know who had saved him, as whatever happened was too fast for him to see clearly. Everyone pointed at Yun, indicating that he was the one who had saved Master Kai. In gratitude, Master Kai bowed down in front of Yun and said, Younger brother Feng Yun, I owe you my life. If there is anything you need my help with, feel free to ask. However, I won't be involved in any evil deeds. Subsequently, their choice led them to enter the fort building. As they stood before its entrance, a barrage of arrows rained down upon them from within the fort. Using their defensive martial techniques, they skillfully deflected the arrows, causing some of them to even shatter into small pieces. Master Kai remarked, Seems like they're underestimating us martial artists by employing metal arrows. Do these individuals believe themselves to be a city? Yun, however, had a different perspective. He had a feeling that the situation was more intricate than its looking on the outside. They looked upwards and were met with a horrifying sight that filled them all with dread. Lin Kang was suspended by a rope from the building, his desperate pleas for rescue echoing in their ears. Uncle was taken aback, his mind racing as he questioned when Lin Kang had been captured. It hadn't been long since he had been with them. Yun, on the other hand, was preoccupied with different thoughts. He couldn't help but ponder why their attackers were not using Lin Kang as a bargaining chip, as was customary in hostage situations. Instead, they were under attack, and something about the situation felt deeply wrong. Sensing imminent danger, he urgently instructed everyone to retreat. Employing his formidable rank 3 martial technique, the Blue Butterfly Fly Steps, he skillfully evaded the incoming arrows. A mysterious gas began to fill the air around them. Yun, using his martial skills, the petal palm, managed to ascend above the ground, avoiding inhaling the toxic fumes. Uncle's voice rang out in alarm as he shouted, It's poisonous gas. Inside the arrows, a sinister secret was concealed. They held toxic gases within their hollow tips. The assailants cunningly utilized Lin Kang as a diversion counting on the fact that their victims wouldn't detect the deadly gas until it was too late. Regrettably, they had already inhaled a substantial quantity, leaving them incapacitated for battle. 
Then, a shocking turn of events unfolded. The rope suspending Lin Kang suddenly snapped, and he landed on the ground with a mocking laugh. Betrayal gleamed in his eyes as he was holding his sword. Uncle, bewildered by this unexpected betrayal, demanded to know how he could betray his own family. Lin chuckled mockingly and said, This family belongs to you my beloved uncle. My father and I hold no sway in the crucial decisions, as you have all the power. But that's about to change very soon. The Lin family will soon belong to my father and me. I'll finally regain my pride. Can you even imagine or the pain of being expelled from the city by your own family? Even after striving tirelessly to become a martial artist and returning to the inner city, my cousins continued to look down on me. How can those good-for-nothing worthless pieces of trash look down on me when I am the genius who achieved middle rank martial artist status at the tender age of 19? In a split second, Yun charged at him, swiftly overpowering him and pinning him to the ground by his throat. Astonished, Lin Kang stammered, How can you still fight after inhaling the toxic gas? Yun's response was short yet resolute, Because I am strong. After emerging victorious, Yun reflected, Thank goodness I managed to defeat Sun Xiao's projection a while ago, and acquired the wood attribute in addition to my water attribute. It was the healing properties of these attributes that allowed me to counteract the poison's effects. Observing Yun's fearless descent into the toxic gas without a hint of concern, it became apparent that he had brought antidotes along. Upon a quick search of his pockets, he found a vial brimming with antidote pills and promptly consumed one. His intention was to distribute the pills to the others, but when he turned around, he was met with the sight of his comrades lying unconscious due to the poisonous gas. Recognizing that he stood alone on the battlefield, Yun decided to confront the storm platoon all by himself. Suddenly, a group of individuals emerged from the nearby building. One among them, seeing Yun, remarked, I was hoping for a real challenge, but it's disappointing to find only a single youngster left. Yun responded with a laugh, saying, I didn't expect to be the last one standing either. The man ordered his comrades to kill Yun immediately, but Yun remained unfazed. He ran in the opposite direction, heading towards the jungle. After some time had elapsed, the man muttered to himself, This is why I dislike using schemes, it's never as enjoyable. Out of nowhere, a powerful punch struck his face, rendering him unconscious. It was Yun who remarked, I'm not a fan of schemes either. Your subordinates were just a bunch of fools, falling victim to traps they set themselves. Meanwhile, another man within the building, observing the situation, informed the captain that their dispatch team had been defeated. He requested permission for their group to go out and teach Yun a lesson. Inside the fort, the captain and his team were enjoying a meal. The captain mentioned the names Jun Feng. King Feng and Jai Feng, instructing these three to proceed cautiously despite Yun being a middle rank martial artist, as he had been involved in a conflict between the law enforcement agency and the Bloodthorn Alliance assassins. They all nodded in agreement, ready to follow the captain's orders. Our inside the building, Yun opted for a daring move and decided to barge into the fort all by himself. Determinedly, he uprooted a tree, snatching it from the earth along with its roots, and rushed toward the fort's gate with unwavering intent to shatter it. Summoning every ounce of his strength, he gripped the ground and hurled the tree at the door with all his might. However, just as the tree was about to collide with the gate, a martial technique attack broke it into small pieces. An individual materialized seemingly out of thin air and charged at Yun, remarking, Is a mere youngster like you attempting to raid us? Swiftly, Yun sidestepped the assault and delivered a precise strike to the man's abdomen. Another participant entered the fray, employing a rank 3 martial technique known as Plowing Storm. While Yun pondered how to handle this new challenge, yet another one joined the fight, intensifying the difficulty level with a rank 3 martial technique named Howling Wind Slash. Yun found himself bombarded by martial technique attacks from all directions, but he held his ground, evading every strike with remarkable agility. At times, it was effortless for him, while at others, he narrowly escaped potentially fatal blows. Observing Yun's agility and adept evasion, the trio praised his skills. The man noted that Yun possessed considerable combat experience. Yun, however, realized that despite their middle rank martial artist status, these three individuals had faced life and death battles and taken numerous lives. Their individual prowess might even rival that of high rank martial artists, and together, they could pose a significant threat to him. Inside his mirror space he couldn't help but panic, particularly since one of his opponents is a lady this time, a detail that weighed heavily on his mind as he got ready to fight. Faced with the inevitability of a showdown with the lady, Yun concluded that he had no alternative but to engage her fully, an inescapable scenario, as one of the adversaries hurled three knives in his direction. 
The remaining pair closed in rapidly from the rear. Recognizing this maneuver as one of their specialties, Yun decided to employ their own tactic against them, redirecting their assault back towards their comrades. However, his perception suddenly shifted when he noticed an unusual aspect of those knives. Attached to them were concealed strings, serving solely as a distraction to allow the lady to launch her assault unhindered. Seizing the chance, she swiftly executed her frenzy slash technique, delivering countless slashes at Yun in the blink of an eye. Consequently, Yun's grip faltered, and his sword tumbled from his hand. It became apparent to Yun that her primary objective had been to force him to relinquish his weapon. Contemplating his next move, Yun seized the other man's pole as the latter attempted to strike him. The man expressed astonishment, saying, Not bad, kid, you managed to grab my pole. He swung it in the air, but Yun found himself unable to release his hold. Somehow, his hand had become stuck to the pole. The man capitalized on this predicament, smashing the pole into the ground with Yun still attached. Yun realized that some technique was at play, rendering him unable to free his hand. The man remarked, You can't even reach your sword to cut off your own hand, even if you wanted to. Meanwhile, the third combatant, who had been biding his time, saw an opening and unleashed his rank 4 martial technique, the Garot Hurricane. A torrent of knives swirled around Yun. Grasping the pole with determination, Yun understood he had limited time to devise an escape plan, or he would soon meet his demise. Mockingly, the lady observing the confrontation declared, It seems there's no need for me to intervene anymore. As the turbulent clouds of the hurricane began to disperse, revealing the surroundings, a startling scene awaited her that left her in disbelief. She couldn't believe her eyes as she witnessed Yun standing confidently, completely unharmed, while the other two combatants struggled, critically wounded due to the pole. The stark contrast between Yun's confident posture and the evident distress of his opponents left her in terror. Puzzled by the turn of events, she wondered if he had just been striking Zhu Feng's pole. Could he have absorbed lessons from my frenzy slash so swiftly during the heat of battle? In a matter of moments, he unleashed hundreds of punches upon Jai Feng's pole, a feat that, under normal circumstances, would have dissipated the Kai enveloping his body and shattered his finger bones. Her gaze fixed upon him, terror coursing through her entire being, causing her to quiver with fear. She stammered, this guy is an absolute monster. Advancing with determination, he bent down and retrieved his sword from the ground. Her voice trembled with fear as she implored him to stay away, desperately pleading, please, keep your distance. In his mind, he contemplated the increasing complexity of this mission. To secure the full punctuation, he would need to eliminate all five members of the Storm Platoon. He began tallying on his fingers, acknowledging that he had already dispatched three middle-rank martial artists. His voice revealed his unease as he mentioned, there are still two high-rank martial artists left. I truly wish to conclude this swiftly. The girl, still in a state of shock, couldn't comprehend why he hadn't taken her life. Her survival left her baffled, leading her to entertain various thoughts. Could he consider her a member of a lower tier squad, perhaps an elite member? Was he intentionally sparing her? The confusion was palpable as she gazed at Yun, who was now making his way deeper into the fort. Inside his mental space, Yun found himself berated by the mirror lady. She chastised him, asking, how could you spare your enemy like that? She could pose a future threat if you don't eliminate her. As a man, you must be decisive. Yet, Yun hesitated to engage in combat with her, explaining, I can't bring myself to harm a woman who has lost her will to fight. But at the same time, I am resolved not to let her live if she attempts a surprise attack. Glancing backward, he noticed that she had made her escape. A sigh of relief escaped him, as he realized he wouldn't have to face her in combat. Upon entering the building, he encountered a man sitting on the stairs. The man addressed him directly, saying, Hey, Feng Yun, I believe we've significantly underestimated you. Taken aback that this person knew his name, Yun inquired, Did Lin Kiang share my information with you? The person calmly acknowledged, Yes, but before he could explain further, Yun swiftly initiated his assault. He employed a rank 3 martial technique, the Asterian Sword technique, wasting no time in delivering his first strike. The man dodged Yun's attack, growing increasingly frustrated that he hadn't even let him finish his sentence. Yun showed his disinterest in further conversation. He followed up with his second strike employing the rank 3 technique known as Butterfly Steps. The next move in the line was the rank 3 martial technique, the King Kong Palm, but the man managed to evade it and launched his own sneak attack from behind. Yun unleashed a martial move called Cloning Slash, which the man admired. He acknowledged Yun's knowledge of various techniques but dismissed their significance. The man's sword underwent a mysterious transformation, leading to a fierce clash as they charged at each other with all their might. 
Once their intense battle concluded, both of them found themselves sprawled on the ground. While the man had been defeated, Yun was utterly drained. He thought about the man's remarkable strength, even considering his wood and water abilities. Realizing he couldn't maintain such a high level of combat for much longer, Yun speculated that the man was likely the group's leader. As he tried to get up, pain coursed through every muscle in his body, leaving him to ponder the possibility of abandoning the mission and making an escape. Inside the building, the boss sat at the dining table, pondering why his subordinates hadn't returned yet. He couldn't help but wonder if even Xu and Fang had met defeat. His hand moved toward his weapon as he contemplated taking matters into his own hands, feeling let down by his subordinates' failures. Suddenly, an unsettling, chilling presence enveloped him from behind, sending shivers down his spine. It was Yun, and he declared, your time has come. With his sword, Yun swiftly assassinated the boss, employing his darkness attribute to conceal his presence. Yun mused that if he had known about the boss upstairs earlier, he wouldn't have expended so much energy on the confrontation downstairs. Moments later, he felt another presence in the room. It was the lady from earlier. He thought his hood listened to the mirror lady and kill this girl when I has the chance. Now I will have to fight her again with no energy left in my body. Contrary to his expectations, the lady replied that she wished to repay him for sparing her life earlier, stating she had no intention of fighting him. Yun pretending to bluff, asked her how she is intended to repay him. She offered to reveal the location where the Storm Platoon stored their treasures and money, requesting that he, he doesn't tell anyone else that she is still alive. Yun responded, I don't even know your name, but the Lin family has information on the Storm Platoon. They'll come to check the corpses, and if they don't find yours, they'll realize you're alive. The lady assured him that they only knew them by their nicknames, and apart from Lin Kang, those familiar with their faces were already deceased. Guiding Yun to a hidden base, she used the deceased captain's handprint to unlock a massive safe. Inside the safe they found a golden card containing the entire fortune of the Storm Platoon. She explained that Yun could transfer the funds to his account through third-rate bases or higher, ensuring no one could trace it. Inside the safe, there was yet another box. She carefully opened this enigmatic box, asserting that it held the true treasure of the Storm Platoon. Yun's excitement peaked when he discovered that the box contained energy crystals, an exclusive commodity typically available only in second-rate bases or higher. Getting his hands on such a rare item made him really excited. Following that, he exited the building and administered antidotes to those who had fainted due to the earlier poisonous gas. Lin Kan, bound and helpless, received a kick from Chen who angrily exclaimed, We nearly died because of you. Yun guided them inside the building, and they collectively ventured to inspect the corpses. Filled with surprise and shock, Uncle inquired of Yun whether he had accomplished all this alone. Yun, pretending to be clueless, responded, How could I possibly have done all that? An elderly gentleman passed by and defeated these men, while they searched for their looted money in vain. Uncle remarked that all the illicit wealth amassed by the storm platoon had vanished, potentially taken by the mysterious old man who left not a single penny behind. Yun expressed his concern that the Lin family might not recover their losses. Acknowledging the losses, Uncle stated that regardless of the identity of the person who eradicated the Storm Platoon, it had restored the honor of the Lin family, which was more than sufficient. However, Uncle suddenly recalled Lin Kang and leaped out of the window, landing on the ground. Declaring betrayal as deserving death, he approached Lin Kang, lifted him by the neck, and, using his hands as a weapon, punctured his heart from behind, creating a fatal wound in his body. Later that day, on their way back to the dormitory, Yun and Chen engaged in conversation. Chen questioned whether the Lin family would genuinely grant them the special reward they had mentioned earlier, despite receiving the 10,000 academic points for completing the mission. Yun opined that it was likely they would receive the reward since it wasn't the Lin family that had eliminated the Storm Platoon and the reward might serve as hush money. Back in his room, Yun examined the energy crystal, a remarkably rare mineral infused with energy, categorized into three types. A low-rank energy crystal which has a purity of 20-40%, a middle-rank energy crystal which has a purity of 40-60%, a high-rank energy crystal which has a purity of above 60%. The one Feng Yun possessed was a high-rank energy crystal with a purity of at least 70%. Yun marveled at its value, considering that experts from Xing Yo base would likely compete for such a treasure. It became clear why the Storm Platoon had coveted and kept it for themselves. After a while, he decided to pay a visit to the Xing Yao Mall in search of valuable items. Contemplating the Storm Platoon's hefty bank account with 100 million units, along with the Lin family's promised reward and his accumulated earnings, his financial network now exceeded 170 million. 
In addition, he had received an extra 100,000 academic points. He wondered whether this substantial sum would be sufficient to purchase a new residence. Entering one of the stores, a welcoming lady greeted him. Observing his uniform, she silently pondered, Ah, a student from Xing Yao Academy. Could he possibly be one of the young scions from a prominent family? It's a shame he's so young and rather short. Aloud, she introduced herself as Xiao Yu, a salesperson at the store, adding, I'm delighted to assist you. Yun, aware of the attention drawn by his school uniform, had worn it intentionally to signify his affiliation with the academy and prevent any surprises when he used his personal funds. He inquired with the lady about the cost of a mansion. She responded that a standard mansion would typically range from 500 to 600 million. If one desired additional features like an arena or other facilities, it could easily reach 1 billion. However, there were currently no mansions available for sale. In her thoughts, she considered it implausible for even someone from a prestigious family to afford such a purchase. Even a patriarch wouldn't be able to secure one for his mistress. Upon hearing the exorbitant price, Yun couldn't hide his panic, realizing he couldn't afford it. He recognized that the price wouldn't drop, especially since these mansions were within the base. Nevertheless, to save face, he pretended to be interested and instructed the lady to keep an eye out for any mansions with a full package that might come up for sale. The lady assured him of her vigilance and requested his contact information, all while pondering the opportunity that had presented itself. Leaving the store with disappointment at his inability to afford a mansion at the moment, Yun decided to transfer 100k to the dean temporarily. Lost in thought while walking along the road, he contemplated his two months in the inner city and the possibility of encountering an expert while wandering. Inside the mirror space, the mirror lady advised him not to dwell on it too much, cautioning that although there were many martial artists out there, most of them were mediocre. She mentioned the existence of a martial artist guild within a third-rate base and suggested he try his luck there. Yun expressed his desire to move to a higher-rated base where he could access pill refinement guilds, array guilds, and interact with martial artists of various attributes. The mirror lady scolded him, emphasizing the need for patience and discretion especially considering there were far stronger adversaries out there. Back at the forest fort, two unfamiliar men arrived to retrieve something. One of them commented that they seemed to have arrived too late, unable to discover who had eliminated the storm platoon. The other man reassured him, saying they had anticipated such an outcome. He punched the ground, revealing a hidden box containing a device they had planted to identify the attackers. The man extracted a card from the box and inserted it into his projection watch. They observed Feng Yun engaging in battle with the Storm Platoon members. One of them suggested the possibility of recruiting him into their guild, acknowledging his strength and talent in a third-rate base. However, the other man advised caution, recommending they continue observing him for a while longer before making any decisions. Following his plan, Yun proceeded to the Xing Yao Base Martial Artist Guild. As he gazed upon the grand building in wonder, he likened the experience to embarking on an adventure in another world. His thoughts drifted to the possibility of finding someone who could provide him with financial assistance. He entered the building, as instructed, scanning the surroundings for potential projection candidates. Inside, some individuals who recognized him from the academy noticed his presence. One of them commented, why would he come all the way here when the academy offers abundant resources? Clearly irked, another remarked, is he attempting to show off to us dropouts? Yun diligently examined the projection stats of various people in the guild. Among them was a martial artist named Ding San, a middle-rank martial artist. Yun found himself disinterested in Ding San's name, implying that he wasn't inclined to seek guidance from him regarding equipment improvement. However, his train of thought was interrupted by a commotion. A formidable figure entered the guild, causing murmurs among the onlookers. It was Lai Quan, known by the nickname Quickblade. Rumor had it that he had once slain a rank 6 white wolf with a single slash, showcasing impeccable swordsmanship. Yun couldn't help but be intrigued and projected to examine his stats. Lai Quan, a 38-year-old high-rank martial artist, possessed a wealth of valuable drops. Observing Lai Quan's projection, the mirror lady informed Yun that he possessed talents in both fire and sword Dao, explaining his ability to defeat a rank 6 beast with a single slash. She clarified that a rank 6 beast was equivalent to a high-rank martial artist, and that in an average confrontation, most martial artists would stand no chance against it. Only those with dual talents could defeat such a creature, including Feng Yun, who met the requirement of possessing two talents. Lai Quan, sensing that an expert had just assessed him, 
pondered whether the individual in question was a high-rank martial artist. Upon observing more, he recognized him as a martial artist at the peak rank. After hours of intense combat, Yun finally managed to defeat Lai Quan's projection and received a low-tier sword named Star Pole as a drop. This acquisition filled Yun with excitement as he was in dire need of an improved sword. He enthusiastically exclaimed, This saves me a lot of time. The mirror lady chimed in, mentioning that the sword's market value was likely at least 1 million units, given its composition from energy minerals and star crystals. Excited, Yun decided to continue fighting projections and cultivating at the same time. Ten days later, he received a message from the academy, granting him 10,000 academic points. However, his expression turned somber as he remarked, I've only managed to attain a low rank fire attribute, and my cultivation level hasn't yet reached the high rank. The mirror lady, trying to uplift his spirits, said, Don't wear that sad expression. You've also obtained the rank 3 martial art technique, sword art. When combined with your two middle rank sword attacks from your Dao talent, it will become a formidable move. Taking the mirror lady's advice to heart, Yun decided to embark on a mission and headed to the academy. While perusing the mission board, a particular task caught his eye. The mission entailed slaying a rank 6 saber-toothed tiger that had been causing havoc in the Izu forest. Classified as a black rank difficulty mission, it promised a reward of 60,000 academic points, contingent on returning the creature's teeth as proof of completion. Excited by the opportunity, Yun immediately accepted the mission, thinking it must hold significant value, given that it was recommended for peak rank martial artists. Deep within the Yuzu forest, Yun found himself locked in combat with the rank sixer. A sense of relief washed over him as he realized he was now deep within the forest, away from prying eyes. Freed from the constraints of observation, he could finally let loose. In a surprisingly short span of time, Yun managed to defeat the formidable s However, as he began gathering the materials from his prey, he realized that he should have brought a larger bag to carry everything. In the mirror space, Yun turned to the lady and asked, Does this world have something like an interdimensional ring? The mirror lady responded enthusiastically, Of course. Just as array masters have already conducted research on interdimensional arrays, there are martial artists with the extremely rare interdimensional attributes. Sadly, you won't find such a ring in a third-rate base. Determined to find one, Yun decided to venture deeper into the forest. Suddenly, he sensed a powerful energy resonance coming from a specific direction. His curiosity peaked, he moved stealthily in that direction, taking cover among the trees. He thought, if there's a battle happening, I should definitely check it out. I might even get a share of the spoils. As he approached the scene, he witnessed a chaotic battlefield where numerous martial artists were locked in combat. Most of the surrounding trees had been felled, except for one still standing tree with a unique fruit. The mirror lady informed him that this fruit was known as the agglomeration fruit, capable of enhancing one's physical abilities significantly. Just one of these fruits could complete his divine tyrant body technique. Determined to claim this valuable fruit, Yun braced himself for the challenge. The mirror lady cautioned him, there are over a hundred martial artists fighting for that fruit. Even if you were a peak rank martial artist, it wouldn't be easy to obtain. However, Yun remained confident, reminding her of his advantage due to his darkness attribute. To conceal his identity, he put on a mask just in case his ability wears off so no one can see his face. He stealthily entered the battlefield, evading attacks to keep his presence hidden. Finally, Yun reached the coveted tree and clutched the agglomeration fruit in his hand. However, when he turned around, he was met with a daunting sight, a sea of furious eyes locked onto him, their owners ready to attack and claim his life. The mirror lady, gripped by worry, urged him to run, but Yun had a plan B in mind. Without hesitation, he hurled the precious fruit with all his might toward one of the assailants. Quickly, Yun asked the mirror lady to project the person who now held the fruit. But before she could do so, another person intervened, kicking the fruit bearer and sending the agglomeration fruit airborne. In a blink, yet another contender snatched it with the help of a rope. Frustrated by the constant change of possession, Yun instructed the mirror lady to project the person who ultimately obtained the fruit. However, she cautioned him that they might not make it in time, as the last possessor would likely destroy the fruit immediately. Growing increasingly impatient, Yun abandoned the projection plan and took matters into his own hands. He ventured into the heart of the battlefield, where, in a swift and calculated move, he seized the fruit from the grasp of others. Utilizing his rank 3 martial technique, Sword Art's piercing strikes, he decimated more than half of his opponents in a single, powerful attack. 
From a distance, a group of men watched in shock as Yun fought off many others. One of them was quite scared and said to his helper, We better not go closer. Let's find the president's group. They're probably hunting that saber-toothed tiger by now. The helper nodded, agreeing it was best to stay away because watching Yun had left him trembling. Meanwhile, Yun and the Mirror Lady discussed eating the agglomeration fruit. The Mirror Lady suggested, find a safe place to eat it. Someone might try to take it from you. Yun asked how long it would stay good, and when he heard it could last a long time, he decided to eat it later, even though the Mirror Lady warned it could be worth a lot of money. Yun was determined, relying on his 20 years of gaming experience. On his way back, Yun encountered a red string snake, a rank 5 beast. With his practiced skills, he quickly cut off its head with his sword. It wasn't a tough fight for him, as he'd faced similar creatures before. Lost in thought, Yun temporarily forgot about the saber-toothed tiger. In another part of the forest, a different group found the tiger. One of them noted, This beast looks stronger than we heard. Maybe we should wait for the young master and his group to join us. It'll be easier with more people. When the young master arrived his dad said you came just on time now let's gang up on the tiger together. They decided to face the saber tooth together. A concerned man asked, young master why do you seem pleased? His mind raced back to Yun's display of power and fear once again gripped him. His terror intensified when he noticed someone approaching. By the person's height and attire, he knew it was Yun. Yun landed near the tiger prompting the father to inquire if his son knew this person. His son, watching Yun standing still in front of the tiger, replied, I don't know, but why isn't he moving? This saber-tooth's power is on par with a peak-rank martial artist. Could he have been paralyzed by fear? The father considered going to Yun's aid if he was someone they knew, but the son urged caution, saying, Please, let's not disturb him. Facing the tiger, Yun remarked, saber tooth tiger, it's your lucky day. On my way here, I acquired Lai Quan's sword attack, quick blade, as part of my Dao talent. Combining it with my attacks, my Dao talent is now at a high rank. You should feel honored that I'm going to test it on you. The tiger attacked Yun, causing concern among onlookers. However, to their amazement, Yun defeated it with a single strike. The scared son suggested they run, as Yun had killed a rank 6 beast with just his sword intent. But the father saw an opportunity to connect with such a strong person. In the mirror space, Yun complained to the mirror lady, it was so weak, it died before I could get to the exciting part. The mirror lady chided him, saying it was his fault for unleashing so much power by combining all three of his middle rank sword attacks. She reminded him that such a method couldn't be his trump card. Thinking about the saber-toothed tiger's remains, Yun decided to take its teeth for academic points. Given the value of its fur, flesh, and bones, he couldn't bear to waste them. Suddenly, someone called out to him from behind. It was the group that had watched him kill the tiger in a single blow. Yun asked how he could assist them. The man introduced himself as Gan Hua, the president of the Divine Sword Company. Yun introduced himself in return and inquired if the company dealt with equipment. Excitedly, Gan Hua offered assistance, saying they could sell Yun equipment at the original price. Yun replied that he didn't need much equipment at the moment but could provide materials for crafting. He offered to sell the saber-toothed tiger materials he had just acquired. After selling the materials, Yun took his leave, promising to contact Gan Hua if he had more to sell. Upon arriving in the inner city, he contemplated dealing with the agglomeration fruit. He sent a message to Chen and his group to meet him. They all came running out of their rooms to meet him. Yun stood there, waiting for them, and they asked why he was looking for them. Yun replied, I went to the Yizhu forest, so I brought three gifts for you. He took out a box and handed it over to Chen. Excited, Chen reached for it. But just as he was about to open it, Yun told him to wait and apologized for his mistake. He explained that this gift was meant for Yang Tian and handed the box to him. Yun told Yang Tian to open it when he got back home and not to lose it. Yang Tian happily accepted the gift, expressing his gratitude. However, Yun once again changed his mind and said it was a mistake. He declared that the gift was actually intended for Mao. He gave the gift to Mao, who also thanked him. Then, at the last moment, Yun changed his mind once more, saying, I don't feel like this is the right gift for any of you. Maybe I should just give each one of you 10k academic points. Yeah, that should be good. You can go now. Puzzled by this sudden turn of events, they all looked at Yun with confusion. Inside the mirror space, the mirror lady couldn't help but comment. First, you give them the agglomeration fruit, and then you have me project them so you can start grinding for the fruit. Is this your great copy-paste plan? Yun's eyes visibly lit up as he replied, I can create four copies of the fruit with just one. 
Unfortunately, you can only project a person once. If I have hundreds of projections, then I'll be able to obtain all kinds of treasures and consume them as I please. He went to his room and sat down on his bed, now in possession of four agglomeration fruits. He decided to eat two of them and save the other two for later. Yun thought, I will use one to make a duplicate and keep the other in case I ever need financial aid. He took a bite of the fruit, noting that it tasted somewhat sour and not overly sweet. Suddenly, he felt something strange happening inside his body, accompanied by excruciating pain. After enduring the pain for some time, he finally managed to overcome it. Yun described the sensation, saying, It felt like my bones were broken into bits, as if someone was constantly hammering them, breaking and reconnecting them repeatedly. The agony was terrifying, and it felt like this cycle went on for so long. Everything seemed to happen in an instant, and I was so immersed in the process that I didn't even realize it was already night. Still shaken by the agglomeration fruit experience, Yun hesitated, saying, I don't have the courage to consume the second one now. Nevertheless, he stood up to examine his newfound power. Gazing at himself in the mirror, he marveled at his transformed physique, as though he had undergone years of dedicated training. A newfound self-confidence emanated from his expression. The mirror lady chimed in, it seems that your divine tyrant body technique has reached its complete stage. Now you can exert the strength of 30 tons. Yun, quite pleased with his newfound strength and physique, couldn't resist boasting. If I weren't living a low-profile life, I'd probably break some records and make a fortune. The mirror lady, seemingly exasperated, told him to put on some clothes. The following day, after a restful night's sleep and feeling rejuvenated, Yun decided to head to the Divine Origin Tower for cultivation aiming to become a high-rank martial artist. On his way, he encountered Mao, who called out to him. Puzzled by her blushing demeanor after just a few steps, he approached her. She eagerly said, Brother Feng Yun, the annual power ranking event is coming up. Do you plan to participate? Yun, displaying his usual indifference to fame, inquired about the benefits. Mao explained that high-ranking participants would become superstars, with many people watching the event. She continued, by reaching the top of the power rankings, you'll be able to live in the best hostel within the academy and receive a daily allowance of 10,000 academic points. Yun's eyes widened at the mention of the generous allowance. With a confident laugh, he replied, Don't worry, I won't disappoint you. The top power ranking is mine. However, Mal cautioned that it wouldn't be easy, as returning students who had been practicing, completing missions, and cultivating would compete for the top spot. She began listing some notable candidates. There's senior Zhan Zin, who cultivates the indestructible King Kong technique in the Luan Yun cave. From the Chen family, both Chen Chang Ming and Chen Chang Shang are known as the Double Star Sword. Then there's senior Luke Xuan, dubbed the Prince of the Wing. He is currently ranked third on the power ranking. Finally, Zhu Shenghai who is ranked number one in the rankings. He is known as the Mad Swordsman and has already mastered the true essence of sword intent and can split a waterfall in half with just his sword. Yun proceeded to the Divine Origin Tower for his cultivation session. Inside the room, he cradled the energy crystal in his hand and initiated the process. Over time, his body absorbed all the energy from the crystal, finally promoting him to the rank of a high-rank martial artist. Sensing his newfound power, he contemplated, now that I've become a high-rank martial artist, I can feel that my sword attack, thanks to the Tao talent, has improved by at least tenfold. Let's try imbuing my surroundings with my sword intent. However, his attempt to control his enhanced power faltered, leading to the unintentional destruction of the cultivation room. Realizing the potential consequences, he hastily fled before anyone could discover the damage. A staff member arrived to find the ruined room, fuming at the sight. He vented his anger, demanding, Who did this? Do you have any idea how expensive it is to construct an energy gathering array? Yet, no one could be held responsible, as Yun had already made his escape. After three days of intense training, one morning, he practiced outside his dorm room. Eager to test his new technique, he unleashed the Blazing Meteorite Sword, a skill he had acquired from Lai Quan, combining it with both his fire and Tao talents. He thought, With this combination, I'm much more confident in reaching the top spot. The mirror lady, however, urged him to give it his all, noting that he held back during his previous strike. Yun replied cautiously, I'm afraid that if I use my full strength, I might accidentally slice through the academy and even some houses. Escaping wouldn't be as easy as it was when I fled from the Divine Origin Tower. Finally the day of the power ranking event arrived. 
At a big field many arenas were set up for many fights. Martial artists from all the places are coming to participate in the event. Yun was also among them. Looking at all those people he said yo the mirror lady to project all of the male experts. In a taunting vice the mirror lady said so you want me to project all the male experts and oi those female with attribute talent. What kind of gender bias is this? Yun replied I'm just a gentleman who don't like to fight women. Chen Yong and Mao also arrived there and they called his name. They came running to Yun. Chen hold Yun hand and asked him hastily which battle arena are you in. Yun told him it's number 5 arena. The Psy KF relief appeared on all of their faces as they didn't want to be up against Feng Yun because of his crazy strength. Yun said all three of us are also in different arenas as well but with our current strength although we know it's unlikely for us to make it out we will still do our best to last as long as possible. They all bumped their fists together and encouraged each other said let's do this. The event was divided into several stages, with a total of 50 arenas prepared for the competition. In each arena, approximately 100 students faced off against each other, meaning that all 5,000 students of Xingyao Academy had gathered to participate. Only the top two students from each arena would earn the opportunity to advance to the power rankings, where they would vie for their final placement. Those who were knocked out quickly might even face expulsion from the academy to make room for new students next year. The event commenced with an announcement from one of the teachers over the loudspeaker, declaring that the power ranking event had officially begun. The rules were straightforward, as emphasized by the teacher's stern tone, there would be no one held accountable for injuries or even fatalities. Each participant was to fend for themselves, with the sole objective being the defeat of their opponent. This was a brutal competition, a true reflection of the survival of the fittest, and it stood as the unwritten motto of every student at the academy. In this arena, your wealth, talent, or background held no significance. Only your raw power would determine your position in the power rankings. A considerable crowd had gathered to watch Feng Yun's battles, including members of the Lin family. Uncle lamented, a few of our Lin family juniors didn't fare well. The only one who could have done better was Lin Kang but he betrayed us. Master Kai stood beside him, excitedly commenting on how this fight would be a piece of cake for Feng Yun. Among the spectators was the lady from the Storm Platoon whom Yun had spared earlier. She contemplated whether to inform Yun about what was transpiring within her organization, recognizing that this time, Yun was bound to attract significant attention. Yun, standing in the arena, asked, Have I won? Suddenly, he noticed the last person still in the arena, the same man who had witnessed Yun's actions in the jungle. Trembling with fear, the man begged Yun not to harm him, surrendering. Yun struggled to recall where he had seen this person before and then realized, Oh, you're the person from the Divine Sword Company I met while hunting the saber-toothed tiger. Overwhelmed with gratitude and fear, the man bowed before Yun, expressing his honor at being remembered. Watching his trembling son's unexpected success, the man's father muttered in frustration, I'm dumbfounded. How did that idiot child of mine manage to become one of the two winners to advance to the next round? The first round concluded, and the top 100 students who would advance to the next stage of the Xingyao Academy's annual power ranking event were determined. Among them was Chen, who had successfully secured a spot. Standing together, Chen, Yang, and Mao engaged in a conversation about the results. Yang expressed his belief, saying, I had expected Brother Yun to advance to the next round, but I genuinely didn't anticipate Bai Tian Chen making it through as well. Chen, however, humbly replied, I just got lucky. My arena didn't have any of the top 50 students from last year's ranking. It's also thanks to Brother Yun for taking me along on missions, giving me the chance to cultivate in the Divine Origin Tower for an extended period. Mao chimed in with a suggestion, saying, maybe next time, we should all go on missions together. Meanwhile, Feng Yun found himself immersed in his own contemplation. He pondered the dynamics of the second round, knowing that most of the current rankings were based on last year's results. Newcomers like him wouldn't receive a ranking, and those with lower rankings had the freedom to challenge those above them, with each person allowed to issue three challenges. As he considered his options, he mused, if I challenge Zhu Shen, who holds the top spot, I could potentially rise to the number one rank immediately. However, that would lead to a brutal battle, and I might even face defeat. I need to come up with a plan. Suddenly, he was jolted from his thoughts by someone challenging him. It was one of the Double Star Sword Brothers whom he had encountered in the Divine Origin Tower before. The crowd began to murmur, with one person questioning, Who is this Feng Yun? How dare he challenge Chen Shuang, who is ranked 17? But another person corrected them, saying, Actually, it's Chen Shuang who challenged Feng Yun. 
A different spectator chimed in, reminding them, Feng Yun is the same person who defeated 40 seniors during the entrance exams and completed two black rank missions shortly after joining the academy. In the arena, Chen Shuang declared, Feng Yun, even if it means using one of my challenge opportunities, I will make sure you pay for extorting protection fees at the Divine Origin Tower. Confused, Yun asked, what are you talking about? Chen Shuang took his fighting stance and requested Yun to draw his sword and commence the duel. In his mind, Yun considered that he didn't need to reveal his full strength in the first round. Having faced both of the Double Star Sword Brothers numerous times in his mirror space, he was well aware of their tactics and abilities. Yun feigned indifference and replied, no, thanks. This response infuriated Chen Shuang, and he angrily retorted, are you implying that you don't need to draw your sword against me? How dare you behave so arrogantly in front of me? Presumptuous, determined to demonstrate the true gap in their martial skills, Chen Shuang initiated his attack. He employed a rank 3 martial technique called Dazzling Sword. Yun, however, remained unmoved, standing his ground. Just as the attack was about to strike him, he caught it with his bare hand, showcasing the incredible endurance of his body. The arena fell into complete silence as the audience struggled to comprehend how someone like Yun, an unknown, could withstand Chen Shuang's attack. Now it was Yun's turn to strike. He sprinted toward Chen Shuang, channeling his power into his fist, and delivered a devastating punch that sent Chen Shuang flying out of the arena, crashing onto the ground. The outcome was clear, Yun had emerged victorious. This turn of events shocked Chen Shuang's elder brother, Chen Mao and Yang, approached Yun, praising his powerful final blow. Yang revealed, you're now ranked 19th in the tournament. Meanwhile, Chen Shuang was taken to the medical room for urgent treatment due to the severe injuries inflicted by Yun's punch. His elder brother visited him and reassured him, promising to avenge him by challenging Feng Yun and defeating him fairly in the arena. Chen Shuang blamed himself for not taking his training seriously, but his elder brother consoled him, saying, it's not your fault. That guy was clearly a body training martial artist who baited you into the duel by bringing a sword. His victory was nothing more than sheer luck. However, Chen Shuang still harbored concerns, admitting, you should still be careful, there's something strange about Feng Yun that we don't understand. Next, the elder brother stepped forward to challenge Feng Yun to a duel. The crowd watched in confusion, wondering what was unfolding before their eyes. One person speculated, now the elder brother is going to avenge his younger brother. Another chimed in, even though the double star sword brothers usually train together, the elder brother is still stronger than the younger one. Feng Yun is in a tough spot facing him in the arena. Inside the arena, the elder brother addressed Yun, noting, while the rules permit it, this is the first time a higher rank student has challenged someone of lower rank. You should consider yourself honored and surrender quickly. Yun, resolute and undeterred, replied, My goal is to reach the top position. Unfazed by Yun's determination, the elder brother retorted, Reaching top won't be as easy as you think. I'll use the same technique my brother employed against you. With unwavering determination to defeat Yun, the elder brother unleashed his rank 3 martial technique, the dazzling sword, aiming it directly at him. Many top rank students had gathered to witness this intense battle. Observing the incoming attack, Yun thought to himself, he's become more powerful than the last time I projected him, but it's still not enough to make me draw my sword. Yun remained motionless, and in the blink of an eye, the attack was reflected, creating a massive slash in the arena ground. The older brother began coughing up blood, leaving the crowd in shock once again. Nobody could quite comprehend what had transpired so quickly. Someone in the audience wondered aloud, he clearly missed his attack, so why is the other guy vomiting blood? Another spectator responded, it's his sword intent, it caused convulsions within his opponent's body. Amid the rising commotion, teachers arrived at the scene to witness the fight for themselves. One teacher said to teacher Lai Feng, so, that's the new student you were talking about. For a 15-year-old to imbue his sword intent into his surroundings and unleash such a powerful slash is truly remarkable. Teacher Lin Feng, looking at Yun with curiosity, added, he's the same person who broke the energy gathering array with his bare hands. As the event continued, Yun watched the matches unfold in the arena. The current match featured Wang Shi and Zheng Shan, drawing an enthusiastic crowd. Wang Shi possessed an extraordinary kicking technique, while Zhang Shan excelled in speed and long-range attacks, making her adept at kiting opponents. Yun, intrigued by Wang Shi's skills, contemplated the idea of projecting her in the mirror space. He asked the mirror lady about kicking intent. She began to explain that, similar to sword intent, there was also kicking intent, with Zhang Shan currently possessing only its rudimentary form, the first level, far from its true potential. 
Ian humorously remarked that even mosquitoes have legs, and if he could enhance his leg strength, it might become a decisive factor in fights. It was something worth striving for. Back in the arena, the match between Wang Xi and Zheng Shan concluded, with Zheng Shan emerging as the victor. Witnessing the brutality of the fight, Yun couldn't help but comment on its cruelty. The mirror lady reminded him that they were in a world where the weak fell prey to the strong. In this event, going all out against opponents was praised rather than punished, emphasizing the need to adapt to the world's harsh realities. Reflecting on this, Yun realized that he needed not only physical strength, but also mental fortitude to thrive in this world. Next up in the arena was the fifth-ranked girl, Senior Hu King, facing a challenger. Examining her projection, Yun discovered that she possessed green pattern spiritual pills, useful for enhancing body techniques and solidifying one's foundation. Yun thought they could benefit Xiao Lin, who had just reached the age where she could use them. However, Yun noted that they had projected those ranked fourth and below but hadn't yet projected the top three, expressing his desire to do so. Within the top three rankings, the third-ranked student was Lu Xuan, known as the Prince of the Wind. Second place belonged to Zhan Xing, also called the Overlord, and at the very top was Zhu Sheng, renowned as the Mad Swordsman. Each of these top three students possessed extraordinary abilities, particularly the first-ranked Zhu Sheng, who would prove to be an immensely challenging opponent. Yun contemplated the difficulty of challenging the top three as it would draw excessive attention. He decided to begin with those who had knowledge about Zhu Sheng's abilities. Yun's first challenge was to Zheng Shan. As the fight began, Chen, Yang, and Mao watched from the spectator's area, offering their encouragement to Brother Feng. Zheng Shan swiftly assumed a stance for his unique kicking intent. Yun, having previously projected Zheng Shan's image ten times, sensed that this projection seemed more intense, as if it held nothing back. Zheng Shan charged at Yun with incredible speed, executing a rank 3 martial technique known as the Tornado Kick. The collision between their techniques created a whirlwind of dust, obscuring the view. The spectators eagerly awaited the outcome. When the dust began to settle, the crowd witnessed an unexpected sight. Both Yun and Zheng Shan stood in a mirror image, their legs locked in a mid-air clash. This left the audience in amazement, as they questioned how a swordsman like Feng Yun could employ the same technique as Zheng Shan, a kicker. Zheng Shan, his leg trembling, promptly surrendered. Spectators speculated about the cause, wondering if he had sustained an injury or perhaps had his bones shattered. After his victory, Yun left the arena with a plan to challenge the ninth-ranked student next, but he realized he could only issue three challenges. As he contemplated his next move, the third-ranked student unexpectedly jumped into the arena and challenged him for a match. Yun accepted, as both of them aimed for the top spot. Watching this, a teacher commented that Yun's challenges from students ranked higher than him were intriguing. However, teacher Lai Feng expressed concern. Noting that with Yun's current power level, defeating Jan the Overlord would be nearly impossible. Last year, Yun had spent most of his energy contending with Lu Xuan, which prevented him from securing the top position. Another teacher remarked that it appeared Yun had finally perfected his special technique, a rank 3 body refining technique. Achieving this peak level in just one year was highly commendable. Inside the mirror space, Yun's projection of Jan Zing allowed him to closely examine his opponent's statistics. Yun, aware that a straightforward physical showdown would make his opponent a formidable adversary, contemplated his strategy. The mirror lady asked if he planned to use his sword, to which Yun responded with a smirk. How could I possibly pass up the opportunity to test the current capabilities of this body of mine? The mirror lady called him an idiot and advised him to save the sword for later, suggesting he engage in a hand-to-hand -hand fight instead. Ignoring her warnings, Yun remained determined to test his swordsmanship skills. The match commenced with both combatants exchanging punches. Neither was willing to concede, displaying equal strength. It became increasingly challenging to predict the outcome of the fierce battle. Chen, Yong, and Mao cheered enthusiastically from the sidelines, shouting their encouragement to support Yun. Jan Xing unleashed his formidable rank 3 martial technique, known as the Tiger's Roar Fist. In a swift counterattack, Yun employed his own pedal palm technique. The resulting collision of their attacks left everyone in shock due to the incredible display of power. Acknowledging Yun as a worthy adversary, Zhang decided not to use any weapons to level the playing field. Once again, their attacks clashed, but Yun couldn't help but realize that his fighting technique was only at rank 2, putting him at a disadvantage, even though both fighters had put aside their weapons. Zhang, on the other hand, was genuinely impressed by Yun's Dao talent, which presented a unique challenge to his impressive physical abilities. Determined to conclude the fight quickly and save his strength for a potential showdown with Zhu Shen for the top spot, 
Jang intensified his efforts, faced with the realization that relying solely on a rank 2 martial technique would leave him at a disadvantage. Yun pondered his situation. He knew that he didn't have the time to grind for a rank 3 technique before this critical fight. As Jang unleashed his powerful rank 3 martial technique, the King Kong Fist, Yun found himself blocking the attack once again with his trusty pedal palm technique. While defending against the onslaught, Yun couldn't help but recognize the need for a different approach. He realized that becoming too predictable in his moves could spell disaster in this intense battle. To break the pattern, Yun made a bold decision. He would stop relying on traditional martial techniques against his formidable opponent. With agility and determination, Yun leaped into the air, contemplating the very nature of martial techniques. He grasped that martial techniques essentially harnessed one's energy, infusing it into their attacks. In this broad sense, any attack infused with energy could be considered a martial technique. Inside the mirror space, the mirror lady added a valuable perspective. She pointed out that while Yun's insight held merit, traditional martial techniques had undergone extensive development by brilliant minds over the years. These refined techniques allowed practitioners to unleash maximum power with minimal energy expenditure, a key factor in their effectiveness. Yun, in his thoughts, responded that there were various ways to utilize energy. He recalled the instance when a member of the Storm Platoon had infused his pole with sticky properties despite lacking attribute talents. Once more, Yun ascended into the sky preparing to rejoin the fray with lightning speed, evoking the image of an airplane in full flight. He channeled every ounce of his energy into a single palm, his resolve firm to confront Zheng using a fresh strategy. In his mind, he explored the uncharted territory of energy manipulation, contemplating the intriguing notions of two distinct attributes repelling each other or identical attributes drawing together. Yun pondered the potential for generating a dynamic push and pull effect by altering the attributes of his energy. Charging at Zheng once more, Yun executed the same technique, leaving Zheng bewildered about his intentions. Yun approached him and struck his hand with tremendous force, causing it. Yun remembered last year's fight with Zhu Sheng, where Zhu Sheng criticized him. Zhu Sheng said Yun had potential but a big flaw. He never backed down, even when it would be smarter to do so. Yun was like a bull charging ahead, and that could get him in trouble. Now, as Yun approached him in the present, Zhu Sheng thought that stubbornness hadn't changed. Yun didn't back down, he faced challenges head on. It might seem foolish, but it was Yun's way of fighting, and he stuck to it. With determination, Yun used his other hand to strike this time, putting all his remaining strength into it. Their fists collided, and it surprised everyone. Yun actually defeated Jan Xing, the overlord. People couldn't believe it. How could a newcomer beat such a strong fighter? People started wondering how strong Yun really was, especially since he was only 15 years old. Zhu Shen, taken aback by this outcome, decided it was his turn to fight Yun. In the arena, Jan complimented Yun, recognizing that Yun had earned the honor of facing the top-ranked fighter. The time had come for Yun to face the number one-ranked fighter, Zhu Sheng. Zhu Sheng challenged Yun to a fight, which Yun eagerly accepted. It was quite a surprise because it was the first time the top-ranked fighter challenged someone ranked lower than them. Even the teachers were curious and gathered to watch this showdown with everyone's eyes fixed on the stage. As Zhu Sheng entered the arena, he greeted Feng Yun and congratulated him on being part of this peak battle. This excited the crowd, but Yun didn't understand what Zhu Sheng meant by peak battle. The audience grew frustrated and began throwing empty bottles, annoyed that Yun didn't grasp the term. Zhu Sheng then explained that there were two situations when a match could be called a peak battle. The first was when all the challengers for the top spot had been defeated, and the fighter earned the right to challenge the number one rank. The second scenario was the one they were in currently. With a hint of arrogance, Zhu Sheng challenged Yun to draw his sword and accept the challenge issued by the winner of the previous event. A student approached Yun and handed him his sword. Yun thanked him and then excitedly declared, let's have this peak battle. The mirror lady, observing Yun's projection, acknowledged his incredible strength. The battle began with a tremendous burst of energy. Swords clashed in the arena, but strangely, not a single sword moved an inch. Both fighters stood completely still in their respective positions. A teacher explained that they were fighting with their sword and blade intent. It was clear that any ordinary high-rank martial artist caught between them would suffer severe injuries. The intensity of the battle was so great that even spectators in the audience started getting injured due to the power of their blade intents. Some managed to shield themselves, but others sustained visible injuries. An announcement urgently requested the spectators to move back from the steps and observe the match from a safer distance. The danger was too high for anyone to approach the arena closely. 
panic swept through the crowd as people rushed to the back of the steps. Some were frustrated that their money seemed wasted, and one person noted that something like this hadn't happened in decades. However, a few spectators were thrilled to witness such an intense battle, even if they got slightly injured. Yun remarked, it's about time we wrap up this battle, and Zhu shared the sentiment. Zhu stated, indeed, it's time for me to show you my true strength. He then unleashed two rank 3 martial techniques, explosive steps and nine styles of the blood blade, charging toward Yun. Yun countered with his own rank 3 martial technique, sword art pointing stars, and ran at Zhu with his sword pointed at him. When their swords collided, the force was so immense that it shattered the arena floor. Zhu's sword strike had a considerable impact, causing Yun to retreat slightly. With a faintly mocking tone, Zhu couldn't resist commenting, it appears I may have estimated you, after all. Yun quickly discovered a fresh sword cut on his chest, a testament to the potency of Zhu's attack. Among the spectators, teacher Lai Feng couldn't help but acknowledge the apparent disparity between Feng Yun and Zhu Sheng's abilities. However, he urged everyone to consider Yun's age, emphasizing that the 15-year-old might possess untapped potential. Another teacher chimed in, cautioning against rushing to judgments, as the battle was far from over. In response to the mounting pressure, Yun made a calculated decision. It was time to unveil his trump card, the rank 3 martial technique known as the Blazing Meteorite Sword. As he executed this technique, the arena was suddenly engulfed in flames, the fiery manifestation of Yun's power. Observing this, Zhu couldn't help but be impressed. He recognized that Yun possessed not only a deep understanding of sword intent but also wielded fire attributes with skill, reigniting Zhu's own fighting spirit. Seizing the moment, Zhu once again unleashed his formidable nine styles of blood blade technique. Yet, this time, he incorporated the fury of flames into his assault creating a stunning display of martial prowess. Yun was taken aback by this development. Zhu Sheng had no inherent fire attribute, and yet he manipulated flames with astonishing finesse. Yun contemplated whether Zhu had somehow infused his blade with energy, thereby generating flames through the friction between air and energy. The sheer force of this potent attack forced Yun backward, instilling doubts about his chances of prevailing against Zhu Sheng's relentless onslaught. In this critical moment, the Mirror Lady offered a pragmatic suggestion to concede the match and prepare for the next year's tournament, allowing Yun to grow even stronger. However, Yun's determination remained unwavering, as he firmly declared that he wouldn't wait until the next year to reveal his hidden ace in the hole. The fierce battle between Feng Yun and Zhu Sheng raged on, neither of them showing any signs of yielding. The arena floor had been reduced to a broken mess due to the relentless high-impact attacks exchanged between the two combatants. Feng Yun appeared to be at a slight disadvantage, with his condition showing signs of wear and tear. Sensing this, Zhu Sheng decided to test his opponent's determination and asked if he was still willing to continue the fight. Feng Yun responded with unwavering resolve, his determination shining through as he expressed his commitment to stand his ground in the arena for as long as possible. Zhu Sheng couldn't help but feel a twinge of concern, suspecting that Feng Yun might be concealing a surprise attack or strategy. He understood that underestimating his opponent could be a grave mistake. Meanwhile, within the confines of the mirror space, the mirror lady expressed her worry to Feng Yun. She cautioned him against the recklessness of his approach, emphasizing that Zhu Sheng was unlike any adversary he had faced before. Feng Yun implored her to adjust the projection's cultivation to normal human standards, believing that it would give him an advantage in his real-world battle against Zhu Sheng. The mirror lady's voice was filled with concern as she explained that even with the projection's strength set to normal, he would still have to contend with two Zhu Shengs, one in the mirror space, and one in reality. This dual challenge would pose a significant risk. Undeterred, Feng Yun saw it as a potential trump card. By facing his projection, he hoped to uncover his weaknesses and exploit them in the real fight. However, the mirror lady couldn't hide her worries, warning him of the perilous nature of his plan, which could ultimately lead to his demise. On the other side, Zhu Sheng was also strategizing, trying to decipher Feng Yun's hidden trump card. His contemplations led him to a revelation when he glanced at his shirt, which bore the stains of his healed wounds. A suspicion began to form in his mind. Could it be that Feng Yun possessed both water and wood attributes? Zhu Sheng speculated that his opponent might be attempting to drain his energy while relying on the continuous regeneration of his own energy to heal his wounds. If Feng Yun was playing defensively with the aim of wearing him down, Zhu Sheng realized that he could be in danger if the fight continued for too long. Determined to bring the battle to a swift conclusion, Zhu Sheng engaged in a fierce clash of swords with Feng Yun. Despite Feng Yun's intention to grind out his opponent and develop his sword or gold attribute talent while stalling for time and draining Zhu Sheng's energy, 
Zhu Shang had fully grasped his strategy. In response, he unleashed an incredibly powerful attack that shook Feng Yun to his core. Although Feng Yun managed to block the attack with his sword, the sheer ferocity of the assault made him feel as though he were engulfed in a tempest of razor-sharp blades. The battle had reached a critical juncture, and both warriors were pushing their limits to gain the upper hand. The audience, growing increasingly anxious, observed the ongoing battle from a distance, wondering why, apart from a few earlier attacks, there had been no further devastating strikes affecting the area outside the arena. Speculations arose among the onlookers, with some suggesting that both fighters might be concealing their true powers. Another voice chimed in, proposing the idea that they had deliberately narrowed the range between their attacks and defenses to conserve energy. It was a puzzling sight. How could a mere 15-year-old boy possess such astonishing power? Speculation persisted, with some audience members contemplating that if these young fighters were allowed to continue growing and honing their skills, they could become formidable forces in the future. Among the spectators, Chen, Mao, and Yang watched the intense battle unfold. Chen discerned that the fight had reached a seeming stalemate, and Feng Yun wouldn't succumb easily. Yang, however, noted that Brother Yun had primarily been on the defensive, which meant he was expending considerable energy, placing him at a disadvantage. Mao, ever the optimist, held hope that Yun might be biding his time, waiting for the perfect moment to launch a counterattack. Even as Feng Yun continued to play defensively, his mind was racing with plans and strategies. He couldn't help but notice that Zhu Sheng's recent attacks had intensified, yet they lacked the finesse of martial techniques. This led him to ponder whether Zhu Sheng was truly prepared to engage in a battle of attrition, testing who could outlast the other in an endurance contest. However, Yun quickly dismissed this notion, considering that Zhu Sheng had already fought for an extended period and knows that I have both wood and water attributes. It made no sense for him to engage in such a reckless battle of energy depletion. Feng Yun was left with a lingering question. What exactly was Zhu Sheng planning to do? The mystery deepened as the battle continued, with both fighters carefully guarding their true intentions, making the audience and their opponents alike wonder about the hidden strategies at play. Zhu Sheng, undeterred by mind tricks, charged forward once more with his sword, believing that his sheer power would triumph over any stratagems. Observing the intense battle, one of the teachers began to speculate that Zhu Sheng was on the verge of employing his special move. Teacher Lai Feng grew concerned, feeling the need to intervene to prevent a potentially fatal outcome for Feng Yun. However, another teacher restrained him, emphasizing the importance of allowing the students to grasp the critical lesson of knowing when to retreat in a life-threatening situation, regardless of their talent or background. As the fight continued, Feng Yun became acutely aware that the struggle was growing more challenging, and his life was increasingly at risk. He likened the situation to being ensnared in a web, awaiting the approach of death. With a grim and brutal smile, Zhu Sheng once again launched a formidable assault on Feng Yun, aiming to bring the battle to a decisive conclusion. Master Kai, witnessing this, rose from his seat with a shocked expression. He revealed that Zhu Sheng had mastered the 8th style of the Blood Sword 9 style, allowing him to execute numerous rapid attacks in succession. What was even more alarming was that Zhu Sheng had been converting these attacks into a unique energy that spread throughout the arena. This special energy had the capacity to thwart the absorption of energy from the air by opponents with water and wood attributes, and it could be absorbed by the blood sword, culminating in an ultimate attack. Zhu Sheng's entire body became enveloped in an eerie blood aura, intensifying the fear within Feng Yun. He felt immense pressure pressing upon him from all sides. Feng Yun, refusing to yield, faced Zhu Sheng's trump attack, the Blood Sword Nine Styles Eight Style, known as the Blood Dragon's Roar. Spectators held their breath, anticipating the devastating impact on the arena floor. However, Teacher Lai Feng cautioned that the battle was far from its conclusion. To their astonishment, they beheld Feng Yun, still standing upright with his sword in hand. He had successfully blocked the ferocious attack thanks to him previously encountering this attack in the mirror space. The arena was filled with tension as the battle continued to unfold. Recollections flooded Feng Yun's mind as he remembered his previous encounters with Zhu Sheng's projection within the mirror space. Those battles had ended with his repeated deaths under the relentless onslaught of Zhu Sheng's ferocious attacks. The mirror lady had strongly advised him to concede defeat during those struggles, warning him that if Zhu Sheng were to unleash the same attack in the real world, it would undoubtedly result in his demise. However, Feng Yun's resolve remained unwavering, as he was determined to discover a means of countering this formidable assault. Amidst the intense battle still raging within the arena, Feng Yun formulated a daring plan. He retrieved a special fruit from his possessions and consumed it. 
The fruit initiated the same agonizing effects on his body as before, causing him to feel as though his very insides were tearing apart. This time, he braced himself and willingly absorbed the impact of Zhu Sheng's formidable strike, aided by the effects of the fruit. As a consequence, his physique underwent a dramatic transformation, becoming more muscular and robust. Under the immense pressure, Feng Yun's body rapidly assimilated the fruit's properties, yielding even more pronounced results than during his initial consumption. This astonishing turn of events left the spectators in further disbelief, with someone remarking that even the most accomplished martial artists would have been grievously injured by the earlier attack. Questions arose regarding how an ordinary human like Feng Yun could endure such a blow and remain standing. Zhu Sheng himself was utterly bewildered, suspecting foul play and accusing Feng Yun of cheating, unable to fathom how he had survived the devastating attack unscathed. Feng Yun couldn't help but joke, thinking that even though the situation was tough, he wasn't about to admit defeat. He felt a newfound determination surging through him, and with confidence, he declared that it was now his turn to strike. Zhu Shen, on the other hand, remained skeptical, acknowledging Feng Yun's strong defensive abilities but expressing doubt that his own attacks could defeat him. However, Feng Yun didn't give Zhu Sheng a chance to finish his sentence. Instead, he turned his gaze towards the audience, where Master Kai was seated. With a mischievous glint in his eye, Feng Yun boldly requested that Master Kai lend him his sword. This unexpected request irritated Zhu Sheng, who reacted like an impatient child, frustrated that Feng Yun hadn't let him speak before making his demand. Master Kai, without any hesitation, promptly hurled his sword towards Feng Yun, who skillfully caught it and unsheathed the blade. The onlookers were taken aback by this unexpected turn of events. They watched with bated breath as Feng Yun began to channel his blade intent. His intentions were clear. He was preparing to make a powerful move against Zhu Sheng. Feng Yun charged towards Zhu Sheng with lightning speed, dual-wielding swords, and determination burning in his eyes. Deep within the mirror space, he recalled how he had bested Zhu Sheng's projection seven times, and now he was determined to replicate that success in the real world. With precision and skill, he unleashed two martial techniques simultaneously, the formidable Spark Prairie Sword technique, a Rank 4 technique, and the Berserk Sword technique, a Rank 3 skill. The intensity of his attack was terrifying, and Zhu Sheng found himself trapped with no means of escape. He knew that a single hit from Feng Yun could mean the end of the fight. In the midst of this impending crisis, Zhu Sheng made a swift decision. He surrendered. Dropping to his knees, he admitted defeat, acknowledging Feng Yun's superior skills. The sudden turn of events left the crowd in stunned silence, unable to comprehend what had just transpired. With Zhu Sheng's surrender, the next challenger in line was a young man named Luke Xuan, who had been watching the match from the audience. However, witnessing how easily Zhu Sheng had given in, Luke Xuan decided not to challenge Feng Yun, recognizing the formidable opponent before him. Teachers were called upon to announce the competition results, and teacher Lai Feng took the microphone. In a clear voice, he declared Feng Yun as the victor of the power ranking event at Starshine Academy, awarding him the prestigious first place title. Feng Yun stood at the center of the jubilant crowd, a symbol of triumph and achievement. Feng Yun, having claimed the coveted first place in the event, reaped the rewards promised to the victor. He received a generous daily allowance of several thousand points, which he could use within the tower for further cultivation. These points were especially valuable since Feng Yun had previously expended all of his accumulated points during his ascent to a high-rank martial artist. Additionally, he was presented with a stylish and distinctive uniform, signifying his top-ranking status, and was granted access to a luxurious dormitory exclusive to the first-place winner. Inside the mirror space, Feng Yun couldn't help but boast about his newfound riches to the mirror lady. Amused by his enthusiasm, she advised him not to become too conceited. Feng Yun, however, had grander aspirations in mind. He realized that while these rewards were excellent, they were insufficient for his long-term goals, particularly when it came to purchasing a house. With a desire to amass wealth quickly, Feng Yun sought guidance from the Mirror Lady. She suggested that the fastest way to accumulate wealth was through alchemy and weapon forging. Armed with this insight, Feng Yun decided to approach the school's alchemist and blacksmith. However, he knew that, as he wasn't the number one in the power rankings, gaining their assistance might not be straightforward. Determined to meet the alchemist, Feng Yun visited teacher Lai Feng's office. He candidly explained his quest for more potent pills than what the grade 3 alchemist could provide, given his current level of cultivation. Although teacher Lai Feng wasn't entirely sure how much assistance the alchemist could offer, he agreed to help Feng Yun. Rising from his chair, he resolved to accompany him and request the alchemist's aid. 
Together, they went to the residence of the school's alchemist. As Feng Yun and teacher Lai Feng approached the alchemist's residence, Feng Yun couldn't help but notice the presence of ten powerful auras. The lowest among them was a high-rank martial artist, while the others had reached the peak of martial prowess. Their collective purpose was clear, they were guarding the alchemist. Upon entering the alchemist's room, they were met with an unusual sight. The alchemist was attempting to consume a live fish, a behavior that puzzled Feng Yun. Addressing Teacher Lai Feng, he questioned why someone as busy as him had sought him out. Teacher Lai Feng responded with a warm smile, acknowledging the alchemist's status as a 34-year-old grade 3 alchemical genius. The compliment caught the alchemist off guard, causing a slight blush as he humbly asked not to be praised in such a manner. In the mirror space, Feng Yun contemplated whether to warn the alchemist about the poisonous fish. However, the mirror lady assured him that an alchemist like Lao Wang was undoubtedly aware of the fish's toxicity. Examining Lao Wang's stats, they discovered his exceptional skills, including being a peak martial artist and possessing several rank 3 techniques, including a shape-shifting ability. The alchemist turned to teacher Lai Feng, inquiring about Feng Yun. Teacher Lai Feng introduced Feng Yun as the academy's top-ranked student of his generation, emphasizing his proficiency in both sword and blade intent. Lao Wang expressed his interest in researching Feng Yun, a comment that left Feng Yun and the Mirror Lady slightly concerned about what such research might entail. Teacher Lai Feng then acquainted Master Lao Wang with Feng Yun, referring to him as the Academy's only Grade 3 alchemist, Wang Zai King, but the alchemist preferred to be called Lao Wang. Feng Yun, already possessing detailed information about Lao Wang, felt the introduction was unnecessary. Teacher Lai Feng and Master Lao Wang then proceeded to a secluded area for what seemed like a secretive exchange. Feng Yun mused that he was fortunate Lao Wang wasn't his neighbor, which might jeopardize his stay in the luxurious dormitory. In their private conversation, Teacher Lai Feng requested grade 3 pills for Feng Yun. Although Lao Wang didn't have them immediately, he agreed to craft them later. He generously gifted Feng Yun a bottle of Nurture Energy pills and expressed his favorable impression of him. He even offered 20 additional Nurture Energy pills, suggesting Feng Yun could share them with relatives or friends. Feng Yun accepted the offer with gratitude. Leaving the alchemist's residence, Feng Yun felt content. He planned to share the Nurture Energy pills with the orphanage director and the children, knowing they would benefit from the generous gesture. After tirelessly grinding for three days, Feng Yun's alchemist projection finally obtained a valuable item as a drop, a small furnace. Placing it in front of him, he expressed his joy at not having to spend money on a furnace. However, he thought it was too small in size. The mirror lady couldn't help but find his remark a bit naive and reminded him that alchemists wouldn't carry large furnaces around. Ignoring her comment, Yun decided to utilize the 20 years of alchemical experience he had gained from Wang Zai King. First, he used his wind attribute to make the furnace float in the air. Then, he employed his fire attribute to regulate the furnace's temperature. With the furnace prepared, he carefully put an herb inside, using his wood attribute to protect it from the high temperature. He couldn't help but admire Wang Zai King's incredible talent in alchemy, realizing that it would have taken him three times longer to reach the same level without Wang's guidance. However, he acknowledged the difficulty of creating a grade 1 blood energy pill, understanding that a single mistake could ruin the entire process. The mirror lady scolded him, emphasizing that alchemy demanded not only knowledge and experience, but also extensive practice. She urged him to practice more if he aspired to become a skilled alchemist. Nevertheless, Feng Yun decided that he had practiced enough for now. He took out a bag, contemplating that it was time to mass-produce rank 2 pills, such as the Energy Recovery Pill and Gold Sore Pill. His plan was to sell these pills and accumulate a significant amount of money to purchase a new house. The Mirror Lady, growing increasingly frustrated with his disregard for her advice, chided him once more, asking if he hadn't heard what she had said earlier. After hours of diligent work in alchemy, meticulously crafting pills, Feng Yun neatly arranged the bottles he had produced on the table. As he began counting them, a sense of satisfaction washed over him. Each bottle is worth one million, he thought, observing the 200 bottles he had created. If I sell all of these, I can make 200 million. He cheerfully started placing the bottles into his bag, reflecting on how alchemists truly earned well. All they needed to do was create and sell pills, a seemingly simple path to riches. As he walked down the street, he couldn't help but notice the curious gazes fixed upon him. People whispered and speculated about the young man carrying a large bag late in the evening. Some recognized him as the first place winner from the academy, 
and surmised that his activities were beyond the comprehension of mere mortals. There were even comments about his shorter stature, though one wise person hushed the discussion, not wishing to provoke any trouble. Yun remained unfazed by the chatter around him, focusing on reaching the market to sell his pills. After some time, he arrived at the bustling inner city business street. There, he spotted a shop called Black Rose and decided to enter. Upon opening the door, a friendly lady welcomed him. She instantly recognized him from the competition and was astounded that the academy's top-ranked student had entered her store. Filled with excitement, she hurried to inform her boss. Feng Yun stood there, taken aback by the unexpectedly warm welcome. The store's owner, a beautiful lady, quickly arrived after hearing the news. She expressed her deep honor in welcoming the first place holder from the power ranking competition to her humble store. She assured him that they would do their utmost to fulfill any request he had. Inside the mirror space, Yun and the mirror lady examined the store owner's statistics. Her name was Zhang Ao Xemzu, a 25-year-old high-rank martial artist with an attribute talent. They were both surprised and delighted by this unexpected discovery. Feng Yun, relieving the weight from his shoulders, placed the heavy bag on the table. Opening it, he took out a bottle and handed it to the store owner, explaining that he had come to sell the pills. Upon inspecting the bottle and taking a whiff of its contents, the lady detected a strong aroma unique to pills. Her surprise grew, and she inquired if Feng Yun was an alchemist. Peering at the bottle's contents, she asked if that was all he wished to sell. Feng Yun nodded, adding that they were energy recovery pills and gold sore pills. The girl's eyes widened in amazement upon realizing that all the pills were of grade 2 quality thinking that she is hesitant to buy them he said if you are not accepting then it's alright. I can go to a other store and ask them if they will buy as she expressed her gratitude and eagerness to buy them all. Explaining the market price for grade 2 pills, she calculated that the 211 bottles amounted to a staggering 422 million. While she knew that purchasing them all would deplete her funds, she felt honored to assist him. Feng Yun, delighted that the offer exceeded his expectations, promptly accepted. He completed the sale and left the store, promising to return in the future. As he departed, the store owner gazed after him with a sense of awe, understanding that his remarkable abilities were a result of being a grade 3 alchemist. The assistant remarked to the boss that the prices they offered for the pills exceeded their potential profits. The boss, however, was well aware of this and confidently responded, I told you that you were foolish, but you didn't believe me. He's a first place ranking holder and a grade 3 alchemist. Even if it means taking a loss, we can't allow him to sell his pills elsewhere. Feeling content after the successful sale of his pills, Feng Yun continued to stroll down the street, his mind brimming with thoughts. He contemplated that if he could replicate his recent earnings a few more times, he could amass a substantial sum of 1 billion very quickly. Inside the mirror space, the mirror lady commented on his hard work and suggested that he could have become unbeatable through diligent cultivation. She hinted at his immense potential for greatness if he focused more on cultivating. In response, Feng Yun chuckled and explained that his drive to buy a house and assist the orphanage in relocating to the inner city fueled his dedication. He recalled his past life, where he was always busy with work and had almost forgotten the comforting feeling of being at home. Reborn in this world, his sister Zio Lan and the orphanage director had rekindled that sense of home for him. He remembered the warm moments shared at the dining table prompting him to repay their kindness by working even harder. Lost in his reverie, he suddenly found himself standing before a store with an intriguing name, God Sword Weapon Trade Center Private Limited Company. A sense of familiarity washed over him, and he decided to venture inside. Upon entering, two imposing men cast stern gazes his way. They gruffly informed him that the store wasn't open yet, but their expressions shifted upon noticing his academy uniform. Realizing that he was the first place student, they promptly bowed and apologized, urging him to wait for the store's president. Feng Yun attempted to decline their offer and explained that he was merely browsing. However, the two men rushed off to summon the president. Left to explore the store on his own, he perused the various items on display. As he contemplated acquiring a blade, given his proficiency with blade intent, a particular blade caught his eye. He mused that while he still needed time to master Zhu Sheng's blood blade, this new blade appeared even more impressive. While he was engrossed in admiring the blade, a familiar voice sounded from behind. It was the president of the store, who recognized Feng Yun. The president welcomed him warmly and expressed his gratitude for the help with the saber-toothed tiger in the night snow forest. Feng Yun realized that being the first place student certainly had its advantages. The president went on to praise Feng Yun's remarkable victories in the power ranking event. 
In appreciation, he made a generous offer, stating that if any blade in the store had caught Feng Yun's eye, it was his to take for free, a heartfelt gift from the president himself. The president, eager to share more about the company, explained that their establishment was named the God Sword because they specialized in collaborating with skilled blacksmith masters renowned for crafting exceptional swords and blades. The company had garnered considerable recognition in nearby second-rate places. Feng Yun, although tempted by the offer of a free blade, had reservations about owing someone a favor. With politeness, he declined the president's generous offer, stating that he had the means to purchase a blade. The president reassured him, emphasizing that their intent was solely to benefit from his status as the first-place student and nothing more. Feng Yun elaborated, expressing his stringent requirements for a blade to be a perfect match. He suggested that he needed the store's assistance in selecting the right one. The president, eager to assist, inquired about the matching rate and the criteria for the perfect blade. Feng Yun requested that they provide him with their best support and took them up on their offer. Guided to the president's office, Feng Yun was served a cup of tea. After a sip of the tea, he encouraged them to begin. Two individuals presented various blade options for his consideration. Feng Yun expressed his gratitude and took his leave from the office. What he didn't reveal was his intention to project the images of the two men who had shown him the blades into his mirror space. This trick allowed him to potentially obtain those blades without paying. The mirror lady, somewhat exasperated, reminded him not to divulge such tactics to anyone in the future as it might bring them embarrassment. On his way back to his dormitory, he unexpectedly crossed paths with teacher Lai Feng. The teacher called out to him, and they engaged in a brief conversation. A girl accompanied the teacher, and as Feng Yun approached, she addressed him as senior. He politely corrected her, stating that he had only enrolled in the school half a year ago. Teacher Lai Feng proceeded to explain that a student's position within the academy was determined based on their combat abilities. After some casual conversation, the girl excused herself, leaving Feng Yun and Teacher Lai Feng alone for a private discussion. Teacher Lai Feng initiated the conversation by mentioning that Zai Yong Academy had extended an invitation for them to join in celebrating its 50th anniversary. He revealed his intention to bring Feng Yun, Zhu Sheng, Luke Xuan, and Jan Xing to the event. Upon hearing the names of the top four students, Feng Yun couldn't help but wonder if this celebration was more than just a simple gathering. Teacher Lai Feng clarified that Zai Yong Academy viewed them as competitors, and their students would likely challenge them. He asked Feng Yun if he felt confident enough to face these potential challengers. Brimming with self-assurance, Feng Yun responded affirmatively. He saw this as a golden opportunity to confront even stronger opponents and hone his skills further. After their brief conversation, Feng Yun made his way back to his dormitory. Teacher Lai Feng couldn't help but be curious about the bag on Feng Yun's back, wondering about its contents. Meanwhile, Feng Yun contemplated the looming possibility of leaving Starshine Base soon and felt the urgency to resolve the pill-related matter swiftly. The following day, Feng Yun revisited the Black Rose store to sell another bag filled with pills. The shop owner was taken aback by how many pills he had produced in just one night. Concerned about Feng Yun's pale appearance, she even offered him an interest-free loan, assuming he was facing financial difficulties. Feng Yun attributed his weariness to the demands of martial arts training and assured her that he was fine. In his mind, he recognized that although pill-making brought in substantial earnings, he also needed funds to purchase the necessary materials. Determined to gather enough money, Feng Yun proceeded to the sales department he had visited a few days earlier. He entered confidently and informed the girl behind the counter that he intended to buy a house. The girl, remembering their previous encounter, was astonished by how quickly he had risen to become the academy's top student in just a matter of days. She invited him inside to explore different types of houses that met his criteria, including those eligible for discounts. In the bustling outer city, the 50th anniversary celebration of Zai Yong Academy was in full swing. Numerous students had gathered in a grand hall to enjoy a hearty meal. They chatted, laughed, and celebrated together. Among the students was Chao Lin, who was being recognized during this ceremony as she was graduating. She comforted her teary-eyed friend, assuring them that although it was a graduation ceremony, they would still have many opportunities to meet in the future. Amid their conversation, the hall's doors burst open with a resounding bang. A group of imposing individuals, resembling bullies, accompanied by a martial artist from Starshine Academy, made an extravagant entrance. The apparent leader declared, I'm taking over this entire hotel for a celebration. It's my cousin's achievement, becoming a martial artist and gaining entry into Starshine Academy. 
They ordered all the students to vacate the premises, which prompted mixed reactions. Some grew angry, but others quietly left, driven by fear. The situation seemed decidedly one-sided, with even the teachers hesitant to confront the bullies. One teacher advised their students to leave the premises, acknowledging the martial artist's dominance and the potential dangers. The bullies, emboldened by their power, decided to involve the Starshine Academy student, asking for assistance in teaching a lesson to someone named Feng Yuzu. However, their assistance came with a monetary demand. In the midst of their conversation, they noticed Xiao Lin eavesdropping. Sensing that she might know Feng Yuzu, the bullies confronted Xiao Lin, inquiring about her knowledge of him. Despite knowing Feng Yuzu, Xiao Lin decided to lie and vehemently denied any connection. Unconvinced, the bullies ordered their men to capture her to prevent her from alerting Feng Yuzu. They encircled her, making it clear that she wasn't going anywhere. Xiao Lin's friends pleaded with their teacher to intervene and help her, but the teacher declined, emphasizing that they were dealing with martial artists and ordinary people like them should not provoke them. The teacher's fearful words served as a reminder that the world could be harsh, urging the students to face reality and accept their vulnerability. As the tense situation unfolded, the bullies taunted the teacher, reinforcing the idea that students were mere ants in the face of harsh realities. Approaching Xiao Lin, they moved in for the capture when the hall's door swung open once more. Entering the room was Feng Yun, who had just arrived in the outer city and had come to meet Xiao Lin. Instantly recognizing him by his uniform, the bullies were struck with terror. They had encountered the legendary first-place student from Starshine Academy, renowned for his invincibility. Their faces turned ashen, and fear gripped them as if they had encountered a ghost. Feng Yun approached Xiao Lin, inquiring about her well-being. Witnessing this, the bullies trembled with anxiety, realizing they had bullied someone acquainted with the number one student. Despite their fear, Feng Yun paid them no attention. Gently taking Xiao Lin's hand, Feng Yun informed her that he had purchased a house in the inner city and had come to take her and the people from the orphanage to their new home. Before leaving the hall, he glanced back at the bullies and delivered a stern message, stating that Feng Yuzu was his friend and expressing his hopes of joining their group or club. It was more of a warning, signaling them to cease their harassment and refrain from causing harm to Feng Yuzu. Overwhelmed by fear, both the bully and his cousin knelt on the ground, their fear driving them to reconsider their choices. They resolved to seek admission to Zai Yong Base Academy, as they were too frightened to venture into Starshine Academy any longer. Feng Yun escorted everyone from the orphanage, including the directors, to their new residence in the inner city. The house was grand and beautiful, boasting a spacious front yard adorned with numerous trees. The children's eyes sparkled with happiness as they marveled at their new home. Now, they no longer had to worry about ferocious beasts attacking them, as they were safe within the inner city's confines. The directors expressed their gratitude to Feng Yun, instructing the children to thank him. But where was Feng Yun? They found him soundly asleep under the shade of a tree. Xiao Lin gazed at him with affection in her eyes, leaned in, and patted his head, thanking him for his hard work and generosity. During the nighttime, Feng Yun was deeply engrossed in grinding Jan Sheng's projection within the mirror space. He pondered over the challenge of facing this formidable opponent who was in a peak state. Fortunately, the desert-like environment made Jan Sheng's footing unstable, giving Feng Yun an advantage. After persistent effort, he managed to emerge victorious. Mirror Lady congratulated him on successfully grinding Jan Sheng's King Kong Immortal technique, which would significantly enhance his body's durability. As he sat alone in his room, he contemplated this newfound technique. He mused about the combination of the King Kong Immortal technique with his Tyrant Body technique, surmising that his strength might have exceeded 100,000 kilograms. A thought crossed his mind, should he aim to break some records and accumulate more points. However, he acknowledged that he didn't necessarily need the points since he already received 10,000 points daily. While pondering these matters, he heard a knock at his door. Feng Yun invited the visitor inside, and it turned out to be Xiao Lin. She sought his permission to enter his room and then expressed her desire to learn cultivation. She explained that the events from the previous day, when two individuals had threatened her life, had made her realize the importance of strength in their society. She also wanted to be capable of protecting the orphanage and Feng Yuzu without relying on others. She conveyed her dissatisfaction with her current weakness and her determination to become stronger. Feng Yun recalled that Xiao Lin had given up her dream of entering a martial arts academy to earn money and support the orphanage. He assured her that he would help her and asked the mirror lady if there were any suitable pills to enhance Xiao Lin's quality of cultivation. He expressed his hope that the medicine would not cause her any pain given his reluctance to see her experience the hardships he endured during cultivation. 
the mirror lady reminded him of the green pattern spirit pills he had given her to store away. Feng Yun had almost forgotten about them. With a joyful realization, he recalled that they were grade 3 pills designed to help people refine their bodies. He requested the pills from the mirror lady and presented them to Xiao Lin. She was perplexed about where he had acquired the bottle, but she accepted it. Feng Yun opened the bottle and handed her one of the pills, explaining that after consuming it in a night of rest, she could begin her cultivation the following day. With trust in his guidance, Xiao Lin ingested the pill. Feng Yun handed Xiao Lin a notebook and advised her to start her cultivation with it. He explained that she should first learn to harness the essence energy from the air to temper her body, gradually accumulating essence energy within herself. He told her that once she becomes a martial artist, she could enroll in Starshine Academy for further cultivation. Feng Yun assured her that if she encountered any problems, she could seek his guidance when he returned from Zai Yong base. Curious about his departure, Xiao Lin inquired when he was planning to leave, and he informed her that he would depart the following morning. The next day, teacher Lai Feng, accompanied by the four top performing students, embarked on their journey to Zai Yong base. Zhu Sheng found the car quite cramped and uncomfortable, and he couldn't help but shoot disapproving glances at Feng Yun, who appeared perplexed. Zhu Sheng's thoughts raced as he contemplated the size of the car and couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. He suspected that Feng Yun had cheated to claim the top spot in the power rankings. Zhu Sheng believed that Feng Yun had used pills in the arena and even copied his fighting techniques. Determined to uncover the truth and regain his first place title, Zhu Sheng vowed to defeat Feng Yun fairly. Amidst the tense atmosphere, Luke Xuan wished for a swift arrival at Zai Yong base, sensing the discomfort and unease in the air. Suddenly, teacher Lai Feng noticed something and ordered the driver to swiftly maneuver the car into the forest. The abrupt change in direction left the students bewildered, wondering what had prompted this action. Teacher Lai Feng removed the car's roof to reveal the shocking sight outside. Hovering above them was an enormous and ferocious beast, a spirit lord ranked creature. The car appeared minuscule compared to this colossal threat, leaving everyone in a state of shock and awe. Luke Xuan, alarmed by the situation, suggested notifying the base about the spirit lord ranked ferocious beast. But teacher Lai Feng dismissed the idea, stating that the base was likely aware of the situation. He explained that only the ancestral master had the capability to confront such a formidable creature. Inside the mirror space, Feng Yun was thrilled by the unexpected encounter, considering the beast a valuable treasure trove. He eagerly requested the mirror lady to project it. His excitement was palpable as he anticipated grinding the beast's flesh, scales, and bones, all of which he believed to be precious and valuable. Outside the mirror, teacher Lai Feng expressed the belief that the base was already aware of the ferocious beast's presence, and that it was not their concern. The base's only hope lay in the ancestral master's ability to combat the spirit lord ranked ferocious beast. In the mirror space, Feng Yun and the mirror lady stood before the imposing ferocious beast, puzzled by its lack of aggression. Feng Yun questioned why this projection differed from others and why the beast wasn't descending to engage in battle. Both the mirror lady and teacher Lai Feng explained that in the eyes of this ferocious beast, humans were insignificant, just like dust. They see us as unworthy of being deemed opponents. As they continued their journey towards Sai Yong base, an uneasy silence enveloped them. The spirit lord ranked ferocious beast remained on their minds. Upon their arrival at Sai Yong base, they witnessed extensive destruction with nearly half of the base ravaged by the ferocious beast. This sight left them concerned about the safety of Starshine and other nearby bases, as security was visibly heightened throughout Zai Yong base. Deciding to stay the night at Zai Yong hotels, teacher Lai Feng instructed the students to rest while he sought information about the Lord-ranked ferocious beast. Luke Xuan attempted to lighten the mood by mentioning a famous local dish, Empire King Crab. Zhu Sheng chimed in, confirming its reputation, although he noted that it might not be as fresh due to the distance from the sea. Zhang, feeling hungry, was more than willing to enjoy it. Meanwhile, Feng Yun walked in silence, his thoughts consumed by worry for Xiao Lin and the orphanage children. However, he realized that fretting was futile without any means of quick contact in this world. Despite their concerns, they all decided to try the Empire King Crab for dinner and headed to a restaurant called Drug Saint. A sumptuous crab feast was served, and they relished the meal. However, their enjoyment was disrupted when they overheard students from Zai Yong Academy at the adjacent table. These students began insulting Starshine Academy and its students, claiming that they were no match for Zai Yong Academy's talents. They belittled Starshine Academy's first place and questioned whether he was truly more skilled than Zai Yong's top-ranked student. 
Zhu Sheng, who had replaced his big brother as Starshine Academy's first place, became infuriated by their comments and contemplated confronting the Zai Yong Academy students. Luke Xuan, noticing Zhu Sheng's anger, tried to calm him down. Feng Yun, observing this situation with curiosity, couldn't fathom why Zhu Sheng cared so much about what others thought of Starshine's first place, especially when it was no longer him. However, there was a hidden reason behind Zhu Sheng's strong emotions. His big brother's past defeat by Zai Yong Academy's first place had left him deeply affected, and he had trained diligently to avenge that loss. Feng Yun assured Zhu Sheng that he would give his best effort, hoping to ease his worries. Their heated conversation in the restaurant drew attention from the Zai Yong base's students, who soon approached Feng Yun's table to confirm if they were indeed from Starshine Academy. Jiang, fueled by anger, attempted to rise and give them a suitable response but was shocked to find himself unable to stand, as one of the Zai Yong Academy students had firmly grasped his shoulder, preventing him from moving. Within Feng Yun's mind, the mirror lady explained that this martial artist was Tai Xuan, a high-ranking martial artist. She advised Feng Yun to finish his meal first before confronting a high-ranking martial artist from Zai Yong Academy, assuring him that he was stronger. The Zai Yong Academy student taunted Zhang, provoking him to the point where he attempted to punch his antagonist's face. However, before Zhang's punch could connect, the other student swiftly blocked his attack and retaliated with a powerful strike. The impact was so severe that Zhang injured his arm. The Zai Yong Academy student further ridiculed Starshine Academy's top three students, and Zhang, already wounded, faced the prospect of a damaging martial technique called Tiger's Roar Fist. Zhu Shang and Luke Xuan grew deeply concerned for Zhang's well-being. Just as the impending blow was about to land, an unexpected attack materialized out of thin air, striking Tai Xuan and sending him crashing into a table before falling to the ground. The other Zai Yong Academy student demanded to know who had used a weapon against Tai Xuan. Feng Yun casually raised the crab leg he had been eating, revealing that he had employed it as a weapon. In a stern tone, he ordered them to leave, expressing his displeasure at being disturbed during his meal. The Zai Yong Academy students hastily departed, Turning to his fellow Starshine Academy students, Feng Yun playfully warned them to eat quickly, jesting that he might finish the entire crab. Zhu Sheng, inadvertently impressed by Feng Yun's strength, silently commented on his abilities and said this bastard is a true monster. The students from Zai Yong Academy proceeded to their own academy's first place dormitory to inform him of the recent events. The name of this top-ranked student was Ling Wang Zhu, an 18-year-old martial artist at the peak rank. He had striking jet black hair and ocean blue eyes, making him a handsome young man. Upon hearing that Feng Yun had used a crab leg to defeat their academy's strongest body cultivator, a peculiar excitement emerged on Ling Wang Zhu's face. He couldn't help but ponder the impending battle between himself and Feng Yun. Ling Wang Zhu hoped that Feng Yun would prove to be a challenging opponent, adding an element of excitement to their confrontation. However, he remained confident in his own victory, firmly believing that the first place positions in both of their respective base academies would remain unchanged, with him still occupying the top spot. Back at the Zai Yong Hotel, all four students gathered along with teacher Lai Feng and the person in charge of Starshine Academy. The Starshine Academy representative informed them about a spirit lord rank ferocious beast, the winged Kang Wolf, which had recently passed by. Its intentions and current whereabouts were uncertain, but he assured them that their loved ones in the base were safe. They could freely participate in the Zai Yong Academy's celebration without worry. In the mirror space, Mirror Lady projected the image of this man, much to Feng Yun's excitement. He hadn't expected to see him again after missing the opportunity at the power ranking competition. The man's name was Yan Chun Q, a 51-year-old limit martial artist with proficiency in various high rank techniques. Feng Yun contemplated how this man's alchemical skills could be valuable for crafting weapons in the future, potentially earning him more money. Outside the mirror space, Yan Chun advised all four students to rest well that night and prepare for the competition the following day, ensuring they wouldn't bring disgrace to their academy. He singled out Feng Yun, emphasizing that losing to another academy's first place would result in a deduction of one year's worth of points and relocation to a normal dormitory. Feng Yun couldn't help but feel annoyed, suspecting that this was a ploy to avoid rewarding the first place fairly. He found it shameless. During the night, Feng Yun began grinding the projection of Yan Chun. Yan Chun proved to be a formidable opponent, unlike any he had faced before in these projections. Yan Chun's strength was on a whole other level, 
Even when they lowered Yan Chun's combat ability to that of a peak rank martial artist, he remained exceptionally challenging to deal with. Despite giving his best effort, Feng Yun struggled to find any openings to defeat him. Yan Chun's projection demonstrated remarkable skills by manipulating the water behind Feng Yun, rapidly evaporating it. This created a mist that obstructed Feng Yun's vision, and the mist was hot, making it even more challenging. Fortunately, Feng Yun possessed his own dark shadow talent, allowing him to execute a sneak attack on the projection and finally emerge victorious. In a somewhat irritated tone, the Mirror Lady congratulated him but questioned whether he wanted to use or leave behind the Rank 3 Attribute Martial Technique, Shatter Gold Slash. Feng Yun felt puzzled, unable to grasp why the Mirror Lady seemed displeased with him. On the following day, the celebration for Zai Yang Academy's 50th anniversary took place. Feng Yun and his companions arrived at the academy for the festivities. Zhang remarked on the size of the academy, suggesting it might be larger than Starshine Academy. Luke Xuan explained that Zai Yang base was still a second-rate base, but it had been partially destroyed by a Lord Rank Ferocious Beast. They proceeded directly to the martial arena and took their seats. Zhu Sheng mentioned that Zai Yang Academy's first place was Ling Wang Shu, known for his talent in Blade Intent. He turned to Feng Yun and expressed his belief that despite both having combat abilities at the peak rank martial artist level, they were essentially high rank martial artists when it came to skills. In contrast, Ling Wang Shu was a true peak rank martial artist, and using full power might not be enough to defeat him. Suddenly, a voice echoed throughout the arena. It was Xu Hong, the person in charge of Zai Yong Academy. She welcomed everyone to their school's 50th anniversary celebration. Feng Yun couldn't resist making a playful comment about Xu Hong's appearance, calling her a pretty lady. Zhang noted her height and speculated about her race, thinking she might be similar to him. Zhu Sheng expressed his surprise that Xu Hong's combat ability surpassed Yan Chun's, expecting someone older. The Mirror Lady advised Feng Yun not to approach her or project her, suggesting it's fine to omit projecting someone occasionally. Xu Hong surprised everyone by announcing a martial arts competition as part of the anniversary celebration, with Zai Yong Academy and Starshine Academy's first place students as the participants. This sudden invitation took everyone by surprise, as they had expected this fight to be the grand finale of the celebration. With confidence and determination, Feng Yun stood up and headed to the stage where Yan Chun, the person in charge, was already waiting. Yan Chun encouraged Feng Yun, emphasizing the importance of winning and offering a ring space as a reward. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Feng Yun made a resolve to win at any cost, knowing that the outcome would impact the base's resource allocation and the base's survival itself. In the meantime, the Mirror Lady projected Yan Chun in the mirror and Feng Yun examined his stats. Feng Yun asked if he could still obtain 1.5 times sword intent. The Mirror Lady responded that blade intent is not a martial technique, and its limits are not clearly defined, as they are based on subjective standards. Yan Chun proved to be a formidable opponent, much more challenging than Zhu Sheng in the arena. He disappeared suddenly, leaving Feng Yun bewildered. When Yan Chun reappeared, he engaged in nonsensical banter, commenting on the attractiveness of their person in charge. Feng Yun was too stunned to reply coherently, and Zhu Sheng became infuriated, shouting at Feng Yun. Onlookers, including Luke Xuan, tried to calm Zhu Sheng down. Back on the arena, the fight began explosively, with their swords, cal shot and slash shot, clashing intensely. The spectators could feel the power and intensity of the battle even from outside. Students from Zai Yang Academy were impressed by Feng Yun's blade and sword intent. Xu Hong, watching from her seat, couldn't hide her excitement, knowing that this battle with both sword and blade intent would be incredibly interesting. During the battle, Feng Yun focused mainly on defense, diligently evading each of Ling Wang Shu's attacks. While the intense fight raged on, his thoughts were racing. Feng Yun couldn't help but notice that Ling Wang Shu's blade intent was fundamentally different from his and Zhu Sheng's. In fact, Ling Wang Shu's blade intent seemed significantly more powerful. As he continued to dodge attacks, Feng Yun analyzed the situation. He realized that while the concept of sword and blade intent was similar, both fused into the air to attack an opponent. Ling Wang Shu's mastery of blade intent control far surpassed his and Zhu Sheng's abilities. It was as if Ling Wang Shu could generate countless arms to launch sword attacks, leaving no room for his opponent to escape. Watching Ling Wang Shu advance aggressively with his sword pointed directly at him, Feng Yun marveled at the extraordinary level of control Ling Wang Shu had over his blade intent. It was apparent that Ling Wang Shu was a genuine genius who had undergone rigorous training and hard work to reach such proficiency. Despite acknowledging his opponent's strength, 
Feng Yun's face remained filled with unwavering confidence. He believed that, no matter how strong Ling Wang Shu was, he would still emerge victorious. With a blade in one hand and a sword in the other, Feng Yun intercepted Ling Wang Shu's attack by using both of his hands to block. Feng Yun's plan was to rely on his robust body to endure the damage momentarily, and then unleash a full-powered counterattack to secure victory. Feng Yun surged forward, charging at Ling Wang Shu with remarkable speed. However, in a surprising and comedic twist, Ling Wang Shu suddenly raised his hand into the air and called for a halt. It took Feng Yun considerable effort to stop his attack mid-stride. Ling Wang Shu declared that he was no longer interested in fighting and conceded the match to Feng Yun. Perplexed, Feng Yun protested that Ling Wang Shu couldn't surrender in such a manner, as the victor had not yet been determined. Ling Wang Shu explained his unconventional decision, stating that he wanted to defeat Feng Yun while taking risks. He suggested a battle without defensive tactics, both of them attacking without holding back. Ling Wang Shu emphasized that Feng Yun was not his equal and, if needed, he should be willing to stake his life in a fight. However, he pointed out that their current battlefield was not the place for such an intense showdown. Feng Yun understood Ling Wang Shu's intentions. Ling Wang Shu aimed to maintain his peak condition to face a ferocious beast at any moment. Despite his strength as a peak rank martial artist, Feng Yun knew that Ling Wang Shu's abilities would have limited impact against a lord rank ferocious beast. Following the match, Feng Yun approached the teacher who praised him for his remarkable battle. Meanwhile, Ling Wang Shu went to see Xu Hong, cheekily admitting his loss. Xu Hong feigned anger, scolding him and instructing him to return to his training. She warned him that he would not be allowed to leave unless he grew stronger. Watching Ling Wang Shu, a warm smile crossed Xu Hong's face as she thought that this young man had finally matured. Ten years ago, the base was attacked by the winged Kang Wolf, a powerful and fearsome beast. It caused widespread destruction, and many people were injured or lost their lives during the battle. Xu Hong, the lady in charge of the academy, and a young boy named Ling Wang were there too. Ling Wang was just a child back then, and during the attack, his parents bravely sacrificed themselves to protect the base from the winged Kang Wolf. Sadly, they didn't survive the battle. Ling Wang saw their lifeless bodies among the other casualties and became very upset. He shouted that those weren't his parents and accused people of lying to him. He was in deep grief and disbelief as he couldn't accept the reality of losing his parents in the attack. Later that night at the hotel, they all gathered again, including both teachers. Teacher Lai Feng spoke about their history of participating in Zai Yong Academy's anniversary celebrations, often being defeated due to their disadvantaged background. However, this year, they finally demonstrated their strength and achieved victory. True to his promise, teacher tossed a ring to Feng Yun, signifying the reward for his victory. In his thoughts, the teacher knew that this ring was originally intended as a prize from the Zai Yong base's envoy. But now, circumstances had changed, and the ring belonged to Feng Yun. Excitedly, Feng Yun caught the ring, considering the convenience it brought. He realized that the space ring, although limited to a hundred cubic meters, would still be quite useful. Luke Xuan, Zhu Sheng, and Zhang, however, were aware that this ring was provided by the Zai Yong base as a reward for the fight. They jokingly called him shameless for pretending it was his own to gain favors. Teacher Lai Feng then turned to the person in charge of the academy, suggesting that Feng Yun should also be rewarded with a weapon. The academy's chief in charge readily agreed, acknowledging that while Feng Yun's sword was intermediate grade, the blade was only low grade. He promised to provide Feng Yun with an intermediate grade blade once they returned to the base. Feng Yun expressed his gratitude with a bow and thanked him for his generosity while Feng Yun was enjoying his time in Zai Yong base. He had no idea that trouble was brewing back in Starshine Inner City. In a place that was once known as the Bloodthorn Union's secret base, some people were gathered. Several bodies lay lifeless on the floor, while the remaining individuals sat around a table. Two men entered the scene and approached the man who was calmly eating at the table. He was addressed as the leader, and one of his subordinates informed him that their base had been attacked, likely by a law enforcement group. The leader inquired about information from their spy within the law enforcement group. The spy had reported that indeed, a law enforcement team had been dispatched to attack their base. However, before they arrived, it was revealed that a student from Starshine Academy named Feng Yun had already assaulted their base. This student was none other than the Academy's first place holder, Feng Yun, who had recently acquired a new house in the inner city. Hearing this, the boss seethed with anger. He declared that the Bloodthorn Union never let anyone off the hook for crossing them. They decided to pay a visit to Feng Yun's house that night to confront him and make him realize the grave mistake he had made by attacking them. 
seizing the opportunity, Feng Yun began to practice by battling Ling Wang Shu's projection within the mirror space. After several attempts, he finally managed to defeat the projection. The mirror lady congratulated him and revealed that he had gained 1.5 times sword intent. However, Feng Yun wasn't completely satisfied because he knew that the projection hadn't used its ultimate move. When he expressed his desire to see Ling Wang Shu's full power, the mirror lady explained that they had no choice as that move was the projection's trump card. It appeared to be a unique fighting technique or a self-created martial art technique not present in their database. She mentioned that if the projection hadn't used it, she wouldn't have been able to project it at all. Despite his frustration, the mirror lady gave him the reward and reassured him that obtaining 1.5 sword intent was a significant achievement. She speculated that the unshown move might be a double-edged technique, harming both the user and the opponent. She encouraged him to be content with his progress. That night in his hotel room, Feng Yun continued his cultivation. He decided to postpone integrating the new skill until he returned to Starshine Academy to avoid any potential issues. He hoped to return quickly to the Academy to continue his training. Meanwhile, back at Starshine Academy, members of the Star Union group surrounded Feng Yun's house. Their leader ordered them to maintain stealth, spread out, and create a tight perimeter to prevent anyone from escaping. Using dark energy, they concealed their presence and knocked on the door. The Academy's director emerged, puzzled by the lack of visible intruders due to their stealth. The boss attempted to strike the director, but someone swiftly intervened, holding a sword at his throat and forcing him to halt the attack. Simultaneously, the director retreated inside to check on the children. It was the same girl whom Feng Yun had spared in the forest. She informed the boss that she had heard about the Thorn Alliance's assassin team entering the city and deduced their mission to find Feng Yun. Although the boss was bewildered, he asked who she was. With a smirk, she replied that her identity wasn't important, emphasizing that Feng Yun wasn't present in the house. She warned them that even if they killed the innocent people there, they wouldn't accomplish their mission. Reluctantly, the boss believed her words and ordered his men to retreat, and they departed. The girl knew she could only help them this time and hoped that next time, they would have to rely on themselves. The following day, Feng Yun and the others returned to Starshine Base. Teacher Lai Feng addressed them, explaining that he and the person in charge of the academy would head back first. He instructed the students to return to their families and let them know they were safe, and then to come back to cultivate at the academy. Excitedly, Feng Yun rushed to his house and swung the door open, expecting to see everyone. However, he found Xiao Lin deep in cultivation. It was clear that she was already close to reaching the intermediate rank reserve martial artist level. Frustrated, Feng Yun couldn't help but rant to the mirror lady, complaining that it had taken him a whole month to achieve what Xiao Lin had done in just three days. He praised her as the real genius. The mirror lady tried to console him, explaining that Xiao Lin had a more powerful cultivation system to begin with. Feng Yun was reluctant to accept this explanation, still insisting that Xiao Lin must have a better system than the Mirror Lady. The Mirror Lady gently pointed out that if that were true, Xiao Lin wouldn't be so physically weak, and she would have been able to purchase a house long ago. As he was lost in his thoughts, Xiao Lin noticed Feng Yun's distressed expression and inquired if he was okay and if he was hungry. Feng Yun panicked once more, thinking that she even appeared taller than him. The mirror lady shook him by the collar and urged him to regain his composure. Xiao Lin kindly held his hand and mentioned that she had cooked his favorite dish, braised pork. Suddenly, Feng Yun sensed a presence behind him. He turned around to see the girl who had saved them from the assassins the previous night. He was puzzled about her presence there and wondered what her purpose was. After having dinner with his family, Feng Yun went outside to speak with the girl and inquire about her reasons for coming to the inner city. Emerging from behind a tree, she explained that she had come to remind him of something. She proceeded to recount the events from the previous night, mentioning the Bloodthorn Alliance assassins who had been searching for him. Feng Yun expressed his gratitude for her help and protection against the assassins. However, the girl clarified that she hadn't actually protected them but had merely used the name of the law enforcement team to scare the assassins away. She emphasized that this was the inner city, and based on her report, the assassins were changing their strategy. They intended to target him after he left the inner city, so she urged him to be cautious. Despite her concerns, Feng Yun assured her confidently, explaining that he had a way to detect their stealth, so there was no need to worry. The girl remained skeptical, recalling that one of the assassins was a limit martial artist. To her surprise, Feng Yun showed no signs of fear. 
Instead, he wore a confident smirk and resolved to give the limit martial artists a big surprise if they dared to attack him. Feng Yun headed to the Saint Yuan Tower for his cultivation session. He felt delighted that he was the only one on this floor, ensuring that if he accidentally absorbed all the energy, it wouldn't affect anyone else. As he observed the overwhelming energy around him, he realized that it was becoming increasingly difficult to keep a low profile. He knew he couldn't conceal his growing power much longer. However, for now, his main concern was advancing to become a peak martial artist. While Feng Yun was deep in cultivation, other students outside noticed the tower shaking. Some thought it might be an earthquake, while others dismissed it as an illusion. Satisfied with his progress for the day, Feng Yun exited the tower. As he made his way to find the academy chief, he overheard people discussing the tower's strange behavior. It seemed that the entire essence energy of the Saint Yuan Tower had been suddenly drained, causing concern among the teachers who rushed to the ninth floor, where the main energy array was located. Realizing that his actions had once again attracted attention, Feng Yun hurried to the chief's office. He informed the chief that he was there to collect his intermediate grade treasure. The chief handed him a sword, the Golden Scar Sword, explaining that he couldn't craft a new weapon overnight. Feng Yun accepted the sword with gratitude and was eager to examine his new blade. The mirror lady inspected it and mentioned that it had been crafted using rare gold attribute essence energy ore. Although its quality was limited by the middle grade refiner, Feng Yun scrutinized the chief and inquired if the blade was genuinely made from such rare ore. The chief, slightly annoyed, questioned Feng Yun's doubt and even offered to take the sword back if he wasn't satisfied. Feng Yun quickly reassured the chief that he was only joking and expressed his gratitude for the gift. With two of his goals accomplished, Feng Yun's next objective was to deal with the Bloodthorn Alliance assassins. The Storm Platoon Lady sought Master Kai's help to protect Feng Yun's house, which he readily agreed to. They hoped that while guarding Feng Yun's house, he could eliminate the assassins. However, two unfamiliar men appeared, and the lady warned them about the inner city's law enforcement team's watchful eyes. The men responded by asserting that they had no ill intentions in the inner city but warned that the organization wouldn't forgive traitors. The girl explained that she hadn't betrayed anyone but simply wanted to sever her ties with the organization, especially since the storm squad that had recruited her was gone. However, the men didn't seem willing to accept her explanation, insisting that leaving the organization still amounted to betrayal. In the forest at night, Feng Yun couldn't help but wonder why he hadn't been able to contact the Storm Wind Girl since the afternoon. Nevertheless, he took solace in knowing that Master Kai was protecting his house, so there shouldn't be any issues there. Using his endless mirror projection, he attempted to locate the four Bloodthorn assassins, but the Limit Martial Artist Captain remained elusive. The assassins were shadowing him, utilizing their data talents to conceal themselves. However, they were unaware that Feng Yun had detected their presence. He pondered why they were merely following him without launching an attack. Suddenly, Feng Yun observed snowflakes descending from the sky. Gazing at the larger-than-normal snowflakes, he remarked on the beauty of the snow forest. The mirror lady corrected him, explaining that they were actually seeds of snow condensing trees, visually stunning but lacking any real value. Nevertheless, Feng Yun remained captivated by their beauty. He expressed his desire to bring the children from the orphanage here to enjoy this picturesque setting once he possessed the power to protect them from all the dangers lurking in this forest. Hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss our latest videos.